Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to Alien, Hope's Last Day. So tonight, we are going to be running the starter one-shot scenario that comes with the Alien RPG rulebook. I will be your game mother, and I am joined by the cast of Resident Roleplay. How are you guys mother. doing? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're doing well. Excited. It's been yeah. a while. Doing really good. It has been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Got Lauren. Got super salty Got peanut. Hey. AKA Joe. <laughs> Got Troy. I was frozen today. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mel. As always. Hello. And Rose. Hi. So, whew, this is a new system, which is pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of learning that had to be done, and this will be my first time running it. So, we'll see how it goes. Apologies if it's a little bit rough, but we'll all be learning together. So... Let's see how this goes. This is Hope's Last Day. For a little bit of background for viewers who uh, might not know about this, this scenario, it takes place on the Hadley's Hope colony on the moon colony LV-426 in the Alien universe, which is a familiar location to anybody who's a fan of the movies. And this is basically a little bit of a prequel to the second film in the franchise, Aliens. Uh, which is very beloved by many here and completely unseen by the others, but we'll rectify that in a <laughs> P-cubed film school. Uh, uh. So, it'll be perfect though. You guys get the prequel experience of what happened at this colony before the events of the film. So, without further ado, are we ready to get into things? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think so. I'm, I'm interested. Let's go... Let me go ahead and set the mood here. <clears throat> that being said, Hadley's Hope, jointly funded by Weyland Yutani and the United Americas, has a them and us feel to it, with any visiting corporate folk looking down their noses at the colony's laborers. Despite this, the colony has been developing well. There's opportunity aplenty, and risk aplenty too. Four days ago, a wildcatter named Russ Jordan was brought back, infected with something. He died, and some snake-like parasite disappeared into the guts of the base. Security has had no luck catching the thing, and somehow more people were infected. Rumor has it that some of them have died, and that there are more of these snake things than Supervisor Simpson is admitting to. Simpson spoke over the intercoms, calling for calm. Crisis or not, you have a job to do. 24 hours ago, you headed out on a maintenance run to Processor 9, happy to leave the base until the crisis blows over. 10 kilometers out, Singleton's tractor gave up the ghost. A nasty mechanical crunch told you it wasn't going any further. Calls back to Hadley's Hope got a cursory response. You were told to wait, and they'd get to your little problem when they had the time. While you waited, you got to talking about the crisis and the Wayland yutani corporate shuttle that arrived right before you left. The shuttle carried an inspection team led by company agent Miranda Reynolds and her chief scientist, Theodora Kamiski. Sig re relayed something he'd overheard, a hushed conversation about the shuttle being quickly and quietly readied for departure. Reynolds and Kamiski are likely the only two who can authorize its use, and the only two with the access key cards needed to use it. For all you know, it was Reynolds who ordered Jordan out there in the first place. It's not right for the Whalen yutani reps to just skip out and leave you, the workers, to clean up this bloody mess. If things go bad, why shouldn't you get those key cards and get away instead? Well, the day has passed, and you've still heard nothing. All further attempts to contact Hadley's Hope have been fruitless. No one is coming to help. The only communications you pick up are garbled and even panicked. There's no option but to walk back and see just what is going on. So, 
That said, if you all would like, we can have a brief opportunity for character introductions and maybe a little bit of banter before you depart on the journey back to the main colony base. Uh, let's just go from left to right here then to okay. have a nice and orderly fashion. Lauren, introduce us to your character right. and any appearance or anything you might have in your in your mind. Officer McQueer is tall and slim. Her piercing eyes don't really look at you, but more so they're analyzing you and judging you. She's always frowning no matter what. And as she is trying to contact the uh, the base one more time, she just hangs up angrily and just, damn it, Simpson! So that's Officer McQueer. Next up, Joe, if you want to introduce us to your character. So I'm Morgan Hirsch, and um, uh, I would I would like to say my my guy looks like the knockoff Han Solo, <laughs> a little rugged, a little rugged, a little dirty, but uh, looks like he can get the job done. And he works in uh, sanitation, I believe. Or uh... yes, yes, he, he's he's cleaning, but he is dirty. Mm. <laughs> All right, and Troy. Well, my. My man's name is Holroyd. He he works with the machinery of the colony, and he's basically like he he gets down and dirty, and he's pretty much a technician. And he's pretty he's he works hard, and that's about it, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's is okay. He has brown hair. He's sort of a babyish face. Uh, I was gonna say, coming in as a technician feels a little familiar. <laughs> coming off of resident role yeah, play. Yeah, ha 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 ha. <laughs> funny, funny. All right, Mel. How about your character? So Sunny, uh, Sunny Sig, is a lab technician for the colony short black hair brown eyes sort of has a baby face but <clears throat> carries a very intellectual uh intellectual look about him um he's very much dedicated to the job just because he enjoys it um and most of the time just always seems to be someone who's staring off in their own thoughts um and sometimes very, very curious about a lot of things, sometimes for their, uh, uh, for their own good, too. Um, and, yeah, that's that's basically Sunny. All right. Sunny Sig. And, last but not least, Rose. So, my character is Hannah Singleton. Uh... She where is the picture? Uh she's got kinda of hard to tell her skin color. I think she has relatively palish skin. Uh with black like short black wavy almost curly hair. It kind of looks like a bob. And uh dark brown eyes. Uh, she's kinda of like like, she'll sit and chill and talk with you, but she, she's not necessarily friendly. She's more just, yeah, let's just get this over and done with kind of attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose the it. primary work you guys would know uh, her to do is operating the tractor around the colony. Right. The one that just broke down, you mean? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, single Singleton did Hirsch work on this? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. Ten kilometers. I do. I am not wearing the right shoes for this. I don't think they've invented the right kind of shoes. So with that quick bit of banter, anything else you guys <laughs> want to say before trying to make the trek? 
Uh, I suppose we should probably be on our way back here in a moment. Yeah, we're gonna run out of food soon. Whatever, whatever uh, they've got going on at base, hopefully they've got it cleaned up by the time we get back. Knowing, knowing Simpson, probably not. <laughs> Oh, we'll just have to do it ourselves. Yep. And with they that, that lackey. Oh, yeah. Well, they've got that lackey coming in to look at our problems, so, you know, must be pretty bad, I guess. Our problems are their problems. It's our problems, but. Well, it's our problems because they want it to be our problem. They could fix it. They sent somebody down, but, you know, it's whatever. We're the ones on... actually have to... Money's on them not being able to fix it. I know how corporate works. No, that's why they hire technicians and engineers and other people who can do it. Get paid enough for this <laughs> shit. Well, yeah, it keeps me in a job. Exactly. That's like you have a job. It. All right. Uh, Sonny just stretches and stands up. And with that, is Sonny the first one to exit the vehicle? Yep. You open the latch and exit the tractor to the harsh outer environments of LV-426. With the gravelly crunch of the natural terrain underfoot, you begin the walk back as the rest of you follow. The journey is long and arduous. The colony's processors have made the atmosphere breathable, but it's still choked by dense clouds and racked by electrical storms. The sky is always gloomy, more like night than day. This blue-gray hue, combined with the constant assault of the thick, dusty wind, gives a rather bleak mood to your long and tiring walk. Two hours and ten kilometers later, you all crest over a hill and see lights piercing the cloudy air. Those must be the outer wall lights of the main colony base. You approach and get a better look, finding a long stretch of industrial buildings laid out in the midst of this otherwise rocky landscape, all walled in with a tall barrier around it. Indeed, this is Adley's Hope. Uh, our oasis in the midst of... He holds up, he holds up two hands and does the quotes, uh, Paradise. <laughs> so Shall we? Um, it ain't comfortable but it's work oh, work you all find your way to an entrance in the west wall gate and open it up staggering into the west airlock weary from your long walk it's a ways from the main body of the base there's no noise except the soft hum of the colony and the squeal of the wind. The ready room is big, with metal benches and mesh-framed lockers. The lighting is always dim, and the place has a dusty and disused smell about it. You hear a distant voice at that moment, talking over the intercom. It's obscured by static, but you can make out the following. This is an emergency message. All colonists must immediately assemble at the main storeroom on the sublevel for safety. This is an emergency message. And it, it loops a few times from there. After several repeats, the message cuts off with an electronic screech. In the deadened silence that follows, you hear... And... 
this lonesome scream that echoes through the ventilation ducts. Could have come from anywhere. Everybody gains a level of stress. Ah! <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh, that's that's pleasant. Very concerning. Uh, all right, I, I said sub level, right? Yeah, sub level. Yeah, sub level. All right, sub level. Well, let's, let's keep let's let's stay together. We need to stay in a group. Make sure we're we don't get too far from each other because. Something's going on here, and I don't like the sound of it. What the hell happened in that day we were out? I don't know. Doesn't sound daily to me. Leave for a day. Stranded out there, waiting. Come back. <sighs> and this has occurred. Whatever this is. My gosh. I better have some answers, because if I'm not going to get paid for this. Uh, hey, Hirsch. Yeah. If if this all blows over and whatnot, the next beer's on me. Uh. I appreciate Oh. He dusts himself off, grabs his, grabs his, his, like, palms his necklace and mumbles a little prayer to himself, but, uh, is ready to progress forward towards the direction he feels is the yeah. fastest route. <clears throat> All right. Do you want to do want to quickly take a look around the area to see if there's like any sort of like map that shows where we are? Uh, well, Hadley's Hope has been your home for a while, so you all would know it pretty well, even by memory. So let me go ahead and bring up a little bit of a visual to help you all navigate because you have now entered the base. Cool, cool. So, Let's go. you Wait. all. Oh, there we are. E here we are on the upper left. You all have just entered the west airlock, which is about here. Now, of course, this isn't to scale, so this is just to keep track of where everybody is. It's not a fully developed battle map or anything like that. So, this is just just for tracking progress. So, you know, there are a number of blocks ahead of you. Uh, there are. Ladders available to traverse between the levels and a number of different areas. So you can kind of go up. Right now you're on the first floor, um, but you can go up and down at a number of different points. And there are also various other comms and computers and terminals that you might be able to find along the way, as well as other resources. But mm -hmm. right now, as you enter, the area starts us out in stealth mode. So, what that means for you all is that we'll be progressing one round, or rather one turn at a time. And a turn is a period of about five to ten minutes. And each turn that passes, you guys can uh, move one to two uh, zones. So basically, we'll count each of these areas, for example, the blocks, as individual zones. And you can move through one or two of them, taking a cursory glance, or take an extra turn there if you want to search it in a bit more detail. But it is stealth mode because, as you have already gotten the sense, this isn't an entirely safe or friendly environment. Yeah. If there's anything going around here passively, then you'll have a chance to uh, hide if you uh, if you notice it, in which case we'll do some contested rolls. But if there's something roaming around here actively looking for you, well, then it's going to be the one hiding from you. And then we'll see how the rolls go there. But for now, you all can move, get up to two zones at a time. It's worth noting that if you guys are moving as a group, the way the group, group stealth rolls work is that the person with the lowest stealth skill 
which would be mobility. Uh, the person with the lowest mobility skill makes the roll for the group. And they can be helped, though, which uh, any number of people can help them, which would add plus one to the roll for each helper, but up to a maximum of plus three. So my mobility's at a maximum of three. Uh, Sonny's is at two. Okay, right, so you're probably gonna be picking it. I have none. What's your no, the maximum? So my, that's my agility oh. plus mobility is three. Yeah, do you have uh, the ending? Oh, oh, okay. Mine's seven. <laughs> oh, okay, mine. Oh, okay, so my max, my max would be six then. Uh, my agility is six. Oh wow! So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna be making it. Yeah, the it was yours five. Three. Three? Uh, yeah, unless anybody has a total mobility roll that's lower than three dice, then that will probably be a queer. Uh. Somebody help me. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, are we doing agility plus mobility? Yeah, because a, a mobility is an agility skill. So, you add your. Yeah. Uh, your agility attribute score and your mobility skill, and that will give you your total dice pool. But again, we don't have to roll anything yet. That's okay. it, when you uh, encounter uh, anything that might be moving about. So for so now, sticking together, you guys, just decide how you're going to move. Um, I think we need to. Well, there's a terminal right in front of us, right? Yeah, mm. there's a terminal right here. Yeah, and that's part of the intercom system through which, through which that message just came. Yeah, I want um, to just check out that real quick to see if it's still broadcasting or if it's, like, completely out. Doesn't seem like any more messages coming through the system when you go up to it and start clicking away on the keyboard and the various switches. The signal seems to have stopped. And all right, so there's no, so there's nothing else coming through that terminal. Doesn't no, seem like, like it. Me- no other messages or anything that we can like look through. Nope. All um, right. That was just a regular automated emergency uh, message, right? Uh, you're not entirely sure. It seemed like it, but then it kind of got cut off there. So you're not sure if that was a mechanical failure or if that was the individual getting cut yeah. off. I mean, like, if it was it was it like somebody, um, somebody who made that announcement and then put it on repeat, or was that just a standard emergency message that is like pre-recorded and all this other stuff? Like, would would we know like if, if that that's a, a normal? There's an emergency broadcast. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose as the union leader you would kind of know that some of the standard procedure around there. Uh, yeah, to your knowledge, it would likely be a person making that broadcast. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think we just need to get to the sub-level as fast as we can and see if anyone else is still still around. All right. So you all uh, taking this turn to go down the hatch to the sublevels? Which I believe, Uh, yeah, there is a ladder over there, right? So I think it can. Yeah, I think that does, because there's nothing on the second floor there. So yeah, I think that does lead down to the sublevel. As long as there's nothing Why else am I to look small? Forward, just continue. Why am I small? Yeah, they're not uniform because there's no grid on here, so I just kind of made everyone roughly the same size, but... Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but since there's no grid to snap to. All right. So you all take the ladders down to the sub-level. It brings you down 
to what you know is the mass housing and maintenance area. And in fact, if we could go down here, let me open that up below. Oop, that was hide. Reveal. There we are. Oh, oh there we go. So you would come down roughly uh, around this ladder area in this hallway near the middle, and you find the basement level dark and smelly. There are claustrophobic housing and high ceiling maintenance tunnels and bays all around. There are no working tractors left. You find if you were to round the corner to the vehicle unloading and uh, cargo depot there. Oh, I was pinging this ladder here. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, oh okay. No. I don't, I'm not seeing your ping. But... You're not seeing my ping? I, I'm, I'm seeing a blue ping, and that's it. Oh, no. You're not seeing my red ping? Nope. Ping. Nope. Oh, wow. I well, just went off my... your description. Let me use <laughs> oh, the <wait. laughs> There's a ladder in the middle. Yeah, let me use this pointer here. Can you see the pointer? Nope. nope. You can't nope. see my pointer either. Wow. You're locked out. I uh, know. I guess uh, let me just try refreshing oh, to be sure. Oh, that it was, was there. I think that's no. Oh no, I'm the red one. How's that? There, there it is. is. There okay. we go. Yeah. That's weird. Roll twenty is being buggy today. Uh, roll twenty is being roll twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, gazing around. Again, you find that claustrophobic mass housing area. There are no working tractors out in the vehicle depot. And the disassembled parts that remain can't really be made into anything working. The tunnel to the nearby processor 1 has been hastily barricaded with welded scrap. Whether to keep something in or keep something out is unclear. Where is processor 1? Uh, it would probably be somewhere off the map, probably with, through one of these halls going out of the area. Uh, again, it, with this, yeah. you, with the movement, you could kind of explore the general uh, the area, area that you're in. Yeah, this is within your All right. two zones of movement. Is there but, anybody in? Oh, yeah. In, 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 we, didn't, we don't see anybody then. No, it seems derelict. Hmm. Where the hell is everyone? Surely they would all be here. Maybe they uh, ditched the job. I would. I was going to say, is McQueer, I see you moving there. Are you kind of looking into the mass housing area in more detail? Yeah. I'll say you could spend the rest of this turn doing that if you would like to make an observation roll. First roll. Uh, sure, yeah. Observation, observation. Not terrible. Oh, no. One success. Uh, one of the ones, Whoa. dude, there's a... Oh, yeah, I see that. That's weird. What is that one doing there? Oh, from the what one stress. The one okay, I see. You uh, yeah. have that set up so they roll separately. That's interesting. All right. So, yeah, with that success, you look into the mass housing area. Uh, again, it's a little dark. Um, I think some of you have some uh, equipment that can help with visibility. But as you look into that area, you find that this appears to be a sort of a last stand position where the remaining colonists took... To, to battle. You see signs of something terrible happening here. Doors are torn apart and ceiling and floor panels have been shredded. There are some mutilated bodies, but not as many as you might expect. There is a lot of still sticky blood and many drag marks smeared in crimson. Acid burns still fizz and fill the air with an acrid smell that mingles with the stink of death and smoke from some smoldering fires. You don't see any 
creatures or really anything living here. But you do gain a stress level for witnessing this. Guys, guys, I, I found everyone. What do you mean you found everyone? You found so, uh, Holroyd uh, basically enters the housing area and turns on a flashlight, his flashlight that he's using. And he looks around. Looking around, you see the same sight. Signs of a last stand, a terrible battle. Blood smeared all over the place. Doesn't phase you too much, but you could see something horrible happened here. The queer is like nearly about to vomit, but also kind of hey. like holding, like choking back tears. Come on, come here. And she's gonna like kind of lead her out of the mess housing. What the fuck happened here? I wish I knew. The thing is, but obviously corporate do corporate doesn't care enough to stop any of this. Bastards. Somehow their fault. It's always their fault. I thought that fucking what's her name? Reynolds? Um yes. I thought Reynolds got here soon. They probably oh my god, they know. Of course they know. When have they ever cared about us? <sighs> All we can do is look out for ourselves now. We have to get out of here. And I was going to interject. Uh, anybody who does enter the mass housing area will likewise get a stress level for it. Uh, however, McWeir, with oh, the additional you. time that you spent uh, making that observation roll and searching around in there, you did see some remnants uh, amidst some of the human remains. You find you or you found a M41A pulse rifle and an M4A3 service pistol as well as an M240 incinerator unit, but no reloads for any of them. Uh, are they, and they have full, like the, the one weapon is, has ammunition, but there's no bonus mm. ammunition. Yeah, and ammo she's, is she's, kind of abstract in this system. So, but yeah, it is loaded. Yeah. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, yeah, it's loaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's gonna, well, like when she's, when she brings everybody in, like you can see her kind of like, um, she's not necessarily like touching any of them, but she's like nudging them with her foot. And as she does so, she reveals to everybody else those weapons, but she doesn't pick them up herself. So anybody who, who came in with her after would see them, but she doesn't have, but she's not going to pick them up. Uh, Holroyd quietly walks over to the pistol and he, he takes it. Uh, Singleton left the room with McQueer, so she probably didn't pick any of them up. She picked it up on the way out. If you need, if you want to pick it up. What was it again? It was... There was a pulse, pulse rifle, rifle, a service pistol, and an incinerator unit. The service pistol was taken by Holroyd? Yes. I'll take the pulse rifle. Pick it up. It's a meaty assault weapon, military grade. Cool. If I spend time cleaning in this area, like moving bodies around so it's easier to walk and move around, mm -hmm. is there any chance that I could find anything else? Uh, you spend some time moving some bodies around, looking around. Uh, I'll say go ahead and make an observation roll of your own. See if you notice okay. anything new. Oh. While this is happening, McWeir is just in the hall. Is that like, wits just enough? Stringing. Huh? Is it wits and observation? Yeah, yeah. wits observation. Okay. And add your stress dice. 
separately. Add a stress dice separately. Yeah, for how many levels of stress you have, which I think should be two at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we naturally have one stress, and we just gained one from going in this room, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you got one right at the beginning after you heard the scream, and then one for seeing the sight at this gotcha. mass housing area. So, and McQueer is just stringing together uh, curses under her breath at the uh, at Red Reynolds. All right. So that looks like a success. Uh, you search the area a bit more thoroughly during the same turn. Uh, you do still see that incinerator unit unclaimed, but you don't appear to find anything more of value other than some personal effects from a number of people who were living here. Can I gather up those um, like, if they're like dog tags or anything like that, or uh, identification? Uh, there was some basic ID um, and some uh, IDs from some of the security personnel you gather, some of which you recognize, but Nothing in the way of dog tags or anything like that. Yeah, just, no just some way that I can here. identify a, a, a body to, to know if this is like a friend or something that I've I've had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find one for one of the security members, Alex, who you're on quite friendly terms with. Damn. Damn! And then he grabs the incinerator and walks out the room. All right, he grabbed the incinerator. A little bit of a flame flickering near the front of the nozzle. Um, I'm gonna... Okay, so these intercoms, uh, out of character, these intercoms, uh, do they... Are they two-way? Yeah, you do get the sense that you can... Or you would know, rather, just from living here, that, yeah... They are two-way. You could access the intercom system through any of these terminals. If you want to send messages right. elsewhere in the facility. All right. He's he's going to walk up to the intercom. All right. And he's going to... He's going to... Like, uh... Oh speak a message and he's gonna ask this is this is maintenance officer Holroyd is there anyone here is there anyone left come in wait a few minutes or a few moments don't hear any response he he thinks about trying again, but then he just... He shakes his head and turns around. Well... I reckon... We really are... The last, if... If not close to the last... People here. All the better reason to get out of here. We need to get out of here. Did we? Does anybody remember where they had, where that uh, that Utani ship went? Not uh... sure where the Utani ship went, but Reynolds and what was it? Kamitsky. 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 <clears throat> Reynolds and Kamitsky. They would be the only two that I think would have access. And uh, McWeir, as the one of the superior officers on the staff, uh, you would be aware that Reynolds and Comiskey both have key cards for accessing the shuttle, and you would know that they would be most likely to be found in the offices on blocks C2 and E2. So that's C and E on the second floor. Yep. I'm sure each of you remember me talking about what I overheard. 
Yeah. That shuttle, and it's starting to make sense. Are there any other uh, shuttles that we have on the... Um, from, just on the base? The only... Primarily the only vehicles would be the ones in the vehicle bays down here. In the cargo areas. Uh, there are shuttles that go to and fro, but, you know, those... There's only one landing pad, and... Uh, that's where that shuttle currently is. Got it. Oh, we, we all gotta find them. Dead or alive, we're gonna need those key cards off them. Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> he just like kind of, kind of flicks his lab coat a little bit just to make himself feel a little better. <laughs> after what he'd seen. Um, Straighten it out. Straighten How do we it. actually plan to get these cards, though? Yeah, we have to find Reynolds and Killian. Comiskey. 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 Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then what? What are we supposed to do? Kill them? Kill? No, God, no. <laughs> what That's what I'm saying. We can't, we can't just ask them. We can't just kill them either. Yeah, we can ask them. Absolutely. We can very much ask them. And what? They're well, going to just hand over their cards. They're, listen, they're, if they're still alive, they're on their way out. We need to be on that shuttle when it leaves. Mm -hmm. And we can't afford to be standing around here. We need to do something. Y'all here. Well, clung, 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 clung. See? Did you just hear that? Uh, I don't like the sound of that. that. That was the sound of something clanging on the floor above you. The floor above. Yeah, the ceiling to you, but yeah, it must be one of those uh, metal mesh floors or something. Sound like clanging, or mm -hmm. did it sound like something going like running across? It sounded like clanging, almost like something fell onto the floor and bounced a few times. Okay. Let's take a look. Something must be loose up there. Make sure you have something to defend yourself. Oh, I do. I'm worried about the rest of you, though. What about you? I do not. You, you don't have anything. I'm not a fighter. I am a lab technician. I don't take have this. Use. She's gonna hand you a knife. Just takes the knife. Well, I suppose this works. It's like a scalpel. Yeah, like a scalpel. You get a white neck. <sighs> All right, let's get going wherever we need to go. Uh, do could we get to C? Hold on, which one is closer actually? B. C. No, C. Uh, so yeah, could we get to C from here, from 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 below? Yeah, since this is all kind of uh, one general zone on the lower area, um, and you you would be able to within the time of the turn get to a number of ladders in this general region. Uh, but C, C, that is. I'm oh yeah, the C block is where you guys just came from. So mm. that would just be returning from whence you came. Oh, okay, okay. So all of that area is C block. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was just like that little clump of buildings. So you're returning to C1? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So I return to the Quiet hallways going. up there. Moving Very in. quietly now that that sound happened. All right. Yep. Moving along We're quietly. Up. And whoever has the whoever picked up those guns are going first. So who, who picked up the rifle? Singleton, right? I did. Uh, Holbert? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Singleton. Holbert has the pistol. Yes. I have the pistol.
All right, all right, cool, cool. I just, I just <laughs> needed to remember who it was. I, I, I put a mental note. So you guys would know that this area, C1, uh, here on the first floor is the commercial offices of Block C. It's a fancy, well-kept meeting area where the corporates do their business. All the doors to the side kind of exit to conference rooms and things of the like. We're just looking for any signs of Comiskey and Reynolds. All right. And we need to find out what exactly made that noise we heard. I agree, but don't... Technically, we don't have to find that out. Speaking of which, I will need the person with the (laughs) lowest stat in the party to go ahead and make the mobility roll, since you said you were moving quietly through here. And everybody Stig wish me luck. Will and somebody... I can help though. Right? Yeah, if yeah, yeah, if up to three people are helping, which I assume you are as a group, uh-huh. then uh-huh. you'll get uh, yeah, uh-huh. then you'll get plus three to the roll. Yeah, That's, that brings it up to six. <laughs> All right, and plus your stress dice. Oh right, plus stress. Well, that's not bad then. Uh, so we got six for that, and then stress. You're, yeah, you're a little stress. You're a little shaky coming through here. Yeah. Now. Quick understanding, that stress I rolled earlier, did I gain more stress or no? Uh, no. I think yeah. everyone's at two. Except yeah. Except mm-hmm. So, you got some successes there, and the... Yep. You have an extra success, too, so you could do a, <laughs> a stunt if you want. I don't know if there's any, what's associated with mobility, but... That's fine, I'll really quick. That... <laughs> How do you do a stunt stealthfully? <laughs> Just levitate. <laughs> She's a robot. <laughs> I mean, that's that, that's why I'm so good at my job. Just you know, scanning through paperwork real quick. Let's see. Uh, what am I look, looking for? Um, mobility. Mobility. <clears throat> so. You can give one success to another player character in the same situation as you, uh, which doesn't necessarily apply for this as a group yeah, roll. Uh, yeah. Or you could gain a plus one modification to later skill roll relating to this one, or you impress someone. Uh, we're going to take a plus one to a later skill roll revolving right. rolling this one. All right. I'm impressed with that choice. <laughs> <laughs> so you manage to slip by so smoothly and quietly that... You feel like you could keep this momentum going for another time. So, you move throughout C block. It is now a new turn, generally, that you guys moved through here. You can move into another zone still left in this turn if you would like. You could either investigate this area further or move into a different zone if you would try to start, if you want to try and start moving upwards or. Did we get. uh, Did we look around for. Uh, look in this area for any signs of uh, Reynolds and uh, the this area with the conference rooms and whatnot seems to be uh, rather uh, empty. You sure. know, they're sort of temporary meeting areas. Wait a second. Yeah. I have, no, I have no issue like, with this. No, am I very cyborg? <laughs> yeah, I have you're no very issue. Cyborg. You sound like mother now, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. No, yeah, so this area, again, are kind of temporary meeting areas. Doesn't really seem like any mainstay okay. office supplies are in here. But you said in E1 is another place they could go. Or they could be. Yeah. C2 and E2 were the two places that you would you know there are some main office areas. And they're next. So since you're already in the C block, I assume you're just moving upwards. We're going to E block, right? Well, you can, or you could take the ladder to. Um, to well, essentially, you can right. have a couple of options to do within this turn. You could either take this ladder up to C two, or head into one of these adjacent zones. What's on C two? That's just more of this office area. Those would be the corporate offices. Oh, okay, should we check there? I mean, she's 
been they've been seen in here, right? Yeah, this, that would um, be one of the places that you know Reynolds and Comiskey might be. Just check C two, then go to the E block. Mm-hmm. All right. So you head. How many levels are there? Just the two and the sub level. Okay. So you head up to the second floor, entering C two. Let me zoom out a bit to unfog this for you. I keep doing hide button. Oh, it's not taking a reveal. What huh? the heck? Oh, the horror, please. How many times do I have to click this? There we go. Okay. So you move up to the second floor in C2. Uh, Holroyd's gonna stay on the first floor and see what that clanging nonsense was about. Okay. What? You go ahead and make yourself an observation roll while you're down there. Meanwhile, we'll stick with everyone up here, though, and we'll get back to you in a moment. Gotcha. So you all enter the corporate offices, the home of Weyland Yutani's offices. An upper floor with windows that offer a gloomy view outside. The office of Supervisor Al Simpson is located here in the northeast corner, which you all know was recently commandeered by corporate agent Miranda Reynolds. Uh, you see, if you head in that direction, which I assume you do, you enter that office and see a figure in a chair facing away from the door. Simpson? Reynolds? No response. Do you approach to Harry? get a better look at them? Yes. I have my little flamey thing ready. All right. You have your incinerator <laughs> unit at the ready. You step around, your heart thudding. You walk around this swivel chair, and on a closer inspection, you see it is Reynolds. She seems to be sitting quietly with her head down. Snoozing, maybe? Small ventilation grill overhead has been battered free, and the vent itself is twisted as if whatever exited it could barely fit through the space. So it's broken out, not something going in. Mm Mm-hmm. Reynolds? Gonna poke the... Is she facing away? She's facing away? Mm Mm-hmm. Gonna poke the back of the chair. Poke the back of the chair. She rocks a little bit. Gonna turn it around. You turn it around, and as it comes to face the light now, you see that she is dead, having been brutally killed somehow. Her face and neck are a bloody mess, covered in gore and entrails. Anybody who's right there, which it looks by the kind of divisions on the map that it's just, uh, is it just Hirsch and McWeir that are in the the office? Uh, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you said you were nearby with the, uh... Yeah, because I'm, I'm in the room with the little flame thing mm-hmm. going. Wait, no, yeah, is, is it all four of you up there in the room, or...? McQueer, what? Yeah, obviously is in the room. Yeah, well, McQueer and Hirsch. Oh Just yeah, considering, um, considering, yeah. yeah, considering we were all sticking together as it was, Sig mm-hmm. would stick together. All right. So you all see this ghostly sight of her absolutely destroyed figure, and all of you gain one stress level just for seeing this. Uh, oh my god. That happened to... I'm so stressed. <laughs> what? Damn. You do see, however, that her keycard hangs around her neck on a Wayland yutani lanyard. It is absolutely covered, though, in gore and entrails. Can... If someone wants to try and dig into it. Uh, 
Sounds like my kind of job. I like snap gloves. Get the cleaning. But Greer's going to back away, just rubbing her temple. Her temples. All right. And the corpse kind of reeks. And as you approach with your gloves, you attempt to dig through the guts and wipe away the gore in order to retrieve that key card. You do gain an extra stress level for being the one to do this, but you take the lanyard. And as you wipe away the gore, the gore from it, you realize that there's a bit of a crack going through it. It is damaged. Damn. Broke. It's what? It's broken. It's got a crack. Oh, like this day couldn't get any better. Ah. Uh, where? Okay. Um, However, as this is going look, on, does it look mendable? Um, not necessarily. There's a bit of a split, and there's a chip missing. That okay. you're not sure would where that piece might have gone. But on the desk, however, you see spattered with Reynolds' blood is a small handheld comms device. A light on it is blinking. Uh, I just reach over and touch the button with my bloody hands. Touch the button, and the comms device lights up a bit more, and you hear a voice coming through. Uh, Reynolds! Reynolds, you read me! Is that live? It seems is, to be. Is it live? Oh. It seems to be. You finally uh, answered. This, this is a Reynolds. Miski, where the fuck are you? Uh, is it, who, who, who's that? Who's, who's there? This is Officer McWeir. Where? What, what is going on? What happened here? I, there's a... I, 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 don't, I just... I've been de- I've been trying to get a hold of Reynolds. I'm, I'm I'm trapped here in the med lab. It seems to have locked down. This place went into to quarantine effect. I don't know. I'm in the med lab. Reynolds and E2. is dead. Reynolds is dead. Very. Reynolds is dead. Everybody's dead. I have to. I have to, I have to please, please help me. Help me. All right, we're coming to get you. Sit tight in the med lab. Med lab, all right. Please, please, quickly. And with that, the signal turn, cuts out. I turn looks around. and face Singleton. Um, if I'm eyeballing Singleton, does Singleton have uh, the gun drawn out? That rifle? She's got it, like, in hand. Yeah, so like you're you're carrying it out, like right. Yeah. I'm approach you, and I'm gonna give you the flamey thing, and I'm gonna snatch the rifle out your hands, and be like, I think I could do a little bit better job of this. Well, if you say so. And she's like kind of annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the old, old school dirt bag, just snatch your shit. Sorry, Nick Weir's just gonna be like, he's he's an asshole, but. I've seen his record. He's he's gonna he's good with the rifle. Very. Let's go get it. <laughs> McGuire's gonna know look why around. I just went and, Jersey on this. But McGuire's just... gonna like he's gonna start to leave and look around and say, "Where the fuck is Holroyd?" Meanwhile, back on the first floor, <laughs> Holroyd, <laughs> you are walking around, searching the area. You do not have any successes with your observation and therefore do not really see anything more than was noticed previously. However, you do hear a (laughs) coming from above you. Sounded like it was in the vents. Okay, let me think here. I could I could ignore that and head back upstairs. 
Or I could do the stupid thing and find out what it is. We can't lose someone straight away. Oh, but we can. <laughs> oh, no. Chaos. Well, actually, Holroyd looks up at the vent for a moment. He narrows his eyes. Grimses, and then he, he just heads up the ladder. All right. You head up to rejoin the others. Yeah. Holroyd comes up the ladder as the rest of you are on your way out, heading back to it. Where the Wait, hell were you? What did I miss? Reynolds is dead. Oh, fantastic. What took you so long? I was searching for the source of what made that clanging noise downstairs. I couldn't find anything, though. I think we all know that whatever that clanging noise is, we don't want to be near it. I I did hear something back on the way up, though. It was... I heard something in the vents. Again, I don't think we want to know what that is. McQueer immediately looks at the vents that it was that was above Reynolds. It's like, in the vents. Fuck, in the vents. I think whatever killed Reynolds is in the vents. Oh, God. And between that, like, between the the carnage that we saw downstairs as well, there were vents down there as well, torn open along with other things. I, uh, you didn't really see any torn open vents downstairs, not while you were moving through C block. Okay. Keep an eye on the vents. Hmm. I don't want to get surprised. Uh, Comiskey is in med lab. We're going to go get her. She got locked in after quarantine. Oh, so she's yeah. alive, huh? It appears so. It appears so. Quarantine probably saved her life. We also need to figure out a way to fix that, uh, key, that, uh, key card. I don't think there is any fixing it. I threw that shit on the ground. Use... <laughs> <laughs> we just have to use Komsky's. As you all are Go ask her. out here having this conversation in the hall, you're a sudden commotion as <laughs> that sound sort of echoes from the office that you just came out of before. I hit the deck. <laughs> <laughs> I am the, 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 the fire thing. All right, yeah, we Singleton, all, we, we all spin. I'll spin and just, like, level our weapons. You all are kind of having this conversation around the corner from the doorway. Does anybody go and peek inside Reynolds' office? Um, no. Holroyd. Holroyd's gonna do that. All right. Holroyd courageously approaches... As you round the corner, you find that Reynolds' body is no longer there. Uh, you do see some blood uh, dripping from the vent above. All right, what do you see? The body's gone. And uh, judging by uh, the mess here, it went straight into the vent. You mean the body moved on its own? Perfect. That's well, if I know exactly what we wanted to hear. All right. I assume um, that whatever was downstairs in the vent came up here and took the body. All the more reason to get out of here. Let's start let's, moving. Let's go now. to the med lab. Uh, Ursh is like already walking away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Polaroid's gonna follow Hirsch and take out that service pistol. All right. And with that, it's a new round, or a new turn, rather. Gotta get used to this terminology. 
So, you guys can move to zones. Where are you heading to next? Looks like we have to get through block B to get to block E. I don't think there's any way we can get there directly. Yeah, yeah. you would have to. So that would be our two turns then. Uh, is there anything in block B we need to look at real quick? There's just a um, mainframe. We could I always uh, like... Uh... Ah, there's an armory! Or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, I know a place that I clean a lot. So, <laughs> so you clean all this room a lot, make your way here. over to B2, the command crew quarters, you would all know it to be. It's the upper level of Hadley's Hope's central block, which consists of an office, operational ready room, and the armory. The block is keycard locked for command personnel only. However, so the door that at the end of this hallway would be basically uh, stopping you all. There is, however, a terminal beside it. Uh, This one I just pinged here Uh, that Hirsch went to. I don't see it ping again. Uh, No, my ping is gone. But yeah, I I I knew what you meant by this hallway here. Yeah. Okay. So the command crew quarters area. So to get into B two, you see my ping. Okay, I hit and reconnect. Does my um, does my card work? I'm assuming this one. Yes. Yeah, where Hirsch is at. Yeah. So you are piled up in that hallway now. Does my card, my company ID badge work? Uh, It seems you don't have a high enough clearance for this area. So, I'm seeing, um, or actually just. We able to get through? I don't have clearance for this. Can I swipe my badge? Uh, oh yeah, actually, your badge doesn't seem to work. Because uh, you have to usually when you're cleaning this area, somebody has to let you in. Damn. Um, okay, <laughs> you said there's a terminal next to it, right? There is. Is there any way? Seems yeah. The um, controls. I yeah, I was gonna have Sig go through and start looking at the uh, looking at the terminal to see if there's a way. Okay. Do you want to potentially bypass? Yeah, if you want to do a hard bypass, I'll need a Comtech roll. This is going to be rather difficult, though. It is a hard Comtech roll, so that's a minus two penalty. Is can I um, motivate Sig? (laughs) Motivate. Is that even a thing? I'm trying to see. Well, I mean, like, I can. Can I help with a? Um, order. <laughs> okay, what? Uh, tell me what you're trying to do. What, what, what do you say? Break this lock. Well, like once we get there, I'm looking at him, just like, like oh, I, don't, I don't have enough clearance. Hey, it's sick. Yeah. You good with computers? Oh, of course. Can you get us through? I probably can get us through. I need to take a moment and. Just figure out what I'm figure out what I'm working with here. Well, see what see what you can do, because I am not going back down to C one. Do you hear me? Just uh, <laughs> Sonny, Sig just glances, <laughs> narrows eyes for a moment, and is just like, yeah, you know what? You know what? I agree with you for once. <laughs> just, just sitting there is like you know yeah we're not going down let's uh let's take a look at this I I agree with you agree with with. <laughs> if I need to I, I can make a command uh, I'll say go ahead and uh, make a command roll if you succeed then we'll say that counts as a help for you okay so that's command plus stress mm-hmm. Can I pep talk him by being like, you got this, buddy? <laughs> Look Ooh, at that. Two successes. Whoa. Get your ass in and here. I have plus one that's, success. That's three, three, four. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, I'm not going down to C1, and I want to be in E2 by 10 minutes from now. <laughs> when she starts giving really? orders, you listen, Sig, and you are motivated to attack this door with everything you've got in your entire technical expertise. So go ahead. So that will give you a plus one to that roll. 
So it's minus two and plus one, minus one overall from your com tech roll. Yep. So that'll just bring me down to six. Sixty-six. Plus your stress. Plus my stress. So I'll roll the stress here in a moment. Uh, once I get this up. One. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a success. Mm-hmm. So you're going to bypass All the right, door, but let's see what else. Okay. Ooh. All right. So. Sweet. Get it back, though. You take your tools to it and unhinge the paneling on the side of the little terminal and begin getting into the guts of the wires within. Uh, You pretty readily find the route through which power goes to this electronic lock and just reroute uh, some of those wires and immediately the door swings open. And just, just, and there we go. We're not heading back down. Hmm. Good work. You know, your uh, monthly review. If we get out of this, you're, you're, gonna, you're probably going to come out with a promotion. I don't know if that wasn't smoke. But that Old Roy looks before. to the side and spits. <laughs> 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 and Sig just Sig just Sig hearing that from like, where just looks confused and is like you know I'll I'll take that I'll take that that's assuming we live wow well, of course there was small print <laughs> <laughs> even a monkey can do tricks right and I didn't see you do anything. I don't think that's how the saying goes. Either way, we're, kill- we're, get- we're getting in block B2. <laughs> All right. So that will conclude your first move. Uh, now, is the uh, visual order here represented kind of accurate to what you guys are doing? Is Singleton kind of hanging out in the back? With Holroyd? We'll take that as a yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I know where I'm at. <laughs> that door Hershey's open, I guess. Walk Sleepy? Right. So, what? Sleepy, do you know what your order is? <laughs> like, where you want your character to be? Like, are they in the back? Or, like... He... <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> in the back. Yeah. It's like more like in the middle. Yeah. So it was, it was Holroyd was in the back as you guys were going through. Okay, well. Holroyd and Singleton are probably hanging out. As you're moving uh, and taking up the rear, you hear a familiar clattering about the vents. Go ahead and make an observation roll for me. Okay. Oh, fun, fun, fun. Chance for success, 100%. (laughs) You're going to get... (laughs) Oh, dude. Uh, Plus, plus, you you, just... No, stress dice. Yep. Oh, wait. No, I know. You've been rolling a lot of fives. He has one. Okay. Oh, it has one stress die. Well, what? Was that? Wait, why? What Didn't was that? Two? Oh. So, Polaroid, you're not on your best guard. You're not, uh, you're really not too sure where to look about to, where the vents might be in this particular area. Uh, However, what's coming after you is not necessarily much better off. And it just just crashes out of one of the vents very sloppily. And you see this small figure with a long tail, this little pale fleshy thing, like two pairs of hands landing on its back on the floor before flipping over, riding itself, and then skewering along the floor, coming towards you. Can I shoot it? Can I shoot it? Well, it didn't do too well on its uh, mobility, so it does not <laughs> surprise you, which means you're going to have to draw for initiative here. 
to see who acts first. Right now, just Hol Holroyd and the face hugger. Oh, come on! And then the rest of you will notice this oh, going so on in a little bit. Alright. Oh, three Man. of the diamonds. I see the 8d6. I'm like, ah! So, let me draw for it. Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, did it's you. It's high. It is high. Yeah, did you oh, draw for Holroyd? I did. It was a three of diamonds. Oh, wait. Okay. Where's your card? Yeah, I didn't see it either. Really? I think you How had... do I show it? You got to drag it out. Yeah, you got to um, drag yeah. it out. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, that is at the bottom. I thought you drew the eight. Oh. Well, in this case, the lower the better. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. So, oh, okay. so Ace, that... is, Ace is Ace is, is best. Is best Ace is best. So. Okay, got it. Holroyd, you are you do get to act first, so you're gonna go ahead and try and shoot it with your pistol. I am. All right, go ahead and roll for ranged combat. All right, oh, let's see. That's sick. That means it's a new initiative. I like it. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Really? Wow, wow, that is a lot of dice, but nothing. You fire your weapon, it scatters across the floor as this thing kind of scurries to the side and dodges out of the way as it closes in on you. You have the option to make, that, that's a slow action in order to do that. You have the option to take a fast action if you want to try and move uh, away from it. Okay, one sec. <clears throat> I will... Is there any way I could, like, uh... Okay. Is it behind him? It is. It's it in front of me, I think. Yeah, it's back here. Well, he's facing it. Uh, right, you guys can't see yeah. my... Or oh, right behind the party, I should say. Yeah, it is behind in that... You see it there in that C2 block area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will uh, retreat back. All right, so you use your move. Um, but as its turn comes up next, it does use its fast action to try and close in on you. And at this point, you see Holroy just running past all of you and uh, coming into the E2 block area. And, and we heard him fire, so we're just You heard like, him fire, fuck. turn around, and you see him barreling down the hallway with this little thing giving chase behind him. And it does manage to catch up and it is going to lunge, or rather, we have to roll to see what exactly it's gonna do. This is as a it lunges. <laughs> it is going to do a tail lash. The little monster comes for you, lashing out with its wicked tail. It is going to roll. What can I block? Five base die. Uh, let's see if it hits you first. You already used your fight. Your That's action. true. It would take a slow action, <laughs> which you used to move. Um, it does not hit you. Uh, so it whips around, leaping through the air with its tail flailing like a whip. Uh, but it does not do any damage towards you. What is that? Yeah, do we get oh, to that? Yeah. So now you all see with this all going on. You hear the gunshot. All of a sudden, it's chaos in here. Everybody draw for initiative. <laughs> yeah, five. <laughs> Four. Oh, this is great. Apparently, there's normal call. Oh wait, what? Weapon. How is there two fours? That is true. How is right. there two fours? It, it said there were normal cards when I uh, cards when I drawed it, and then I guess I drawed another card Ooh. from another deck or something. My four. That is odd. I don't. Think Should I try to draw Technically, shouldn't one? be possible. Well, hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me get involved in this or what? <laughs> Wait, what? Let me send Wait, one of those back to the deck. Well, hold on. Let me see. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm also seeing I can't draw any more cards from the deck either. Yeah, it says oh, there's yeah, six. There's, there's six there. unplayed.
Hold on, let me try. When we've been deleting the cards earlier, was it pulling from this one? Yeah. Should we just delete these ones that are on, on the deck right now? Hold on, let's try... Oh, let me see something. Let me try deleting these two that are out here. I hit recall. Shuffle, yeah, it says whatever's... there's only two in the deck. Eight. So that means it did count those going back to the deck. But yeah, only let me only go... two in play. Yeah, only two in play. So let me go ahead and shuffle that. Now everyone try drawing. Okay. That's seven. Nine. I got a full. You... All right. <laughs> Again. I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still doing the best here. What the heck? All right. So I'm sound off in the back. real quick. Uh, what's everybody at? Um, McRear is just like, Horde, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? And she's at nine. <laughs> Horde, what did you do? This thing chased me, okay? It's not my fault. Harsh being pushed out of the way by everybody running past him, uh, sits at a seven. All right. Harsh is at a seven. <clears throat> seeing you just looking at this thing, Chasing, <laughs> chasing uh, Holroyd is sitting at a six. All right, and Singleton. Uh, Singleton with her incinerator out, sit it sits at a full. All right, yeah, Holroyd is still doing the best. <laughs> Oh, and I also forgot. Hold on, how many? Okay, yeah, there is still some left. I was gonna say, I, I forgot that the face hugger is to draw more than once for initiative. What? It's still not doing well. Okay, it's, it's still doing. It's a little <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's fine. Does that replace its eight? Or does it go twice? Uh, we shall see. What What are all these? What are those? Are... What's that ace what? and two? Excuse me. Okay. So we've got the initiative for this, so let's go ahead and clear off these all mm -hmm. off. I have it all recorded now. Oh, oh, Send it all oh, back oh. to the deck. Okay. Uh, 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 spaghetti -os. And... Let's change the volume a bit. Battle music. So. Coming back to the top of the round. Uh, as you all hear that gunshot go off, Polroid comes barreling down the hallway brushing past many of you. You do... And, and this is area B2, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, you all see that small creature scurrying after him, freaky little thing, making these squealing sounds as it goes. You also hear coming from... Uh, Around the corner of a nearby hall, these <laughs> encroaching heavy footfalls. Uh, and in fact, coming in from the other side is Whoa! what is that? <laughs> this large black creature problem. with a long carapace head, this sharp tail coming around the corner unlike anything any of you all have ever seen. Uh... Hor uh... The crew's having crazy. a bad day. This thing... We're gonna laugh. This thing gets that I'm laughing right now. 
Predator comes out like you guys are gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get a stress level for seeing it for the first time? I'll say no for now. Okay. So Do I see this too, or am I uh, otherwise? You're on the other side, but it looks like it came right up on Singleton. So behind you, Singleton, <laughs> this creature comes out and... Came out of a vent. Let's see what it does. So, the Xenomorph attacks with its venom-spiked tail. It is going to go ahead and roll to see how it does. Oh! Oh! It does have oh, a couple no. of successes there. That's two. Uh-oh. So, that block? it hits against you, Singleton. And you count as ground. Oh, no. And need to make an opposed close combat <laughs> roll against those base dice. Uh, or against... I think it has to roll again, yeah. So you are now grabbed, but you need to make an opposed combat roll to see if you can break okay. loose. No, I was joking when I said I thought I'd die first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Oh, wait, no, rather. Um, yeah? Hold on. I was reading from the wrong thing there. Uh, so, the, yeah, it does hit, hit, hit you, dealing one point of damage. Okay. But it... Can't you block? You can try to block if you would like. You still How have your... Uh, you would have to expend your fast action to do so, which means you won't have that available when your turn comes around. But you would have to roll okay. a close combat roll, and any successes would deduct from the damage. It's just one point of damage. Okay. I will roll. Would you a like close to try and block? Combat. Okay, yeah, I'll we'll go ahead and roll the close yeah. combat. Um. How many stress dice do I have? I have three, I think. Uh. Oh, uh, wait. So, oh. you succeed. Oh, no. <laughs> but you rolled a one on one of your panic, or your stress dice, which means you're going to have to roll on the panic table. But first, let's resolve what happens here. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, so that was for a block. So that one success means you bring the damage down. The attack does not cause any damage. And therefore... You are not affected uh, as this tail daggers towards your neck and you bring the incinerator unit in your hand up to block it and it bounces off, not drawing any blood on you. It didn't seem like it was going for a particularly deep cut, but whatever it was trying to do, you just blocked. So... However, I need you to roll a d6 and add your stress level. Okay. <laughs> add your stress level as a flat number. Oh. Eight. Yeah. Eight. So you start to tremble uncontrollably. All skill rules using agility suffer a minus two modification until your panic stops. When does my panic stop? When so we'll have to find anymore. out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so. That is the end of its first go, but it also actually has the next turn in the initiative, so it gets to go immediately again. Oh, no. Who's behind Singleton there? It's either Sig or... Uh, I see a creator. face, but I can't tell. The one oh, yeah. on the left is Sig, the one on the yeah. right is McQueer. Okay, so one of you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll to see who it goes for. High is... Uh, high is McQueer, low is Sig. So, McQueer. It is going to use some movement to approach into this hallway... As you all see this freakish creature 
enter, and it is going to roll to see what it does. So, the Xenomorph grabs you, McWeir. It's in her jaws, poised to strike, as you see it. This growling, shining teeth in front of you, slick with an almost oil-like substance. And as it opens its mouth... Let's see what happens. Oh, no. This wow. makes successes! <laughs> so since it doesn't hit your chat myself <laughs> you do not yeah you do not count as grabbed so it bears its teeth and attempts to lay hold of you with its hands but you terrified in that moment manage to sidestep it enough to not get grabbed pure instinct <laughs> pure instinct and that brings us to Holroyd. Okay, well, um, Holroyd's dealing with an issue of his own. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's gonna try shooting this stupid pest again. Mm hmm. Well, this thing just tried to whack you, so you are going to be in close combat. That would give you, or it's in the engaged range with you, which would give you a minus three penalty to ranged combat rolls. Unless you want to move Ooh. away first. You know what? I'm gonna see if I can't like try to like stomp on it or something. Oh, okay. In that case, that would be a close combat roll. Okay. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Well, that would be kind of metal. We don't know but... that. Yeah, you, you guys don't know. <laughs> see, uh... hey, I'm gonna shoot this thing on my turn. <laughs> oh wait, actually, hold on. Mm -hmm. I need to look at some how fast factions are. No success. Wow. <laughs> Why is this happening to me? Why? You you could push I if you want. It. No, I wait, no. called it. I said I wouldn't have luck. Yeah. I was right. I don't have luck. Uh, well, I'll say you try to stomp it out, and your feet land everywhere around it, but do not manage to do any damage as this thing is tiny and crawling around the floor in I all sorts it. of ways. It is so small. Uh. And the lighting so dim. No. Oh, I'm sorry. That's kind of unbelievable. You you have some good stats, but <laughs> it's not happening. So I think next up is me. Holroyd, you do Roy still have your frustration. Yeah, you do have Wait, a fast action go. available still. If you could save yeah. it, if you think you're gonna get, if you want to try and block later in the round, though. Uh, or you could hmm. use it to try and move out of its engaged range this turn. But it would still be able to just catch up with you if it's intent on it. Um. Uh, can I... Can I aim my gun at it? Apparently I can aim... That would just enhance your roll uh, for making a ranged combat roll on the same turn. Oh. Well, actually, you know what? I, I should probably get out of range. Um, I am going... Could I make a recommendation? <sighs> What's your recommendation? Blocking. <sighs> Early because, like, as soon as you move, it's going to catch up to you, so it would have been pointless to move. Yeah, because you could only move out of its engaged range, but again, if it is if it is still, by the time it comes around, intent on going after you, it will just be able to use its fast action to catch up right away. So, it's up to you, though. You know what? You know what? It is a bit meta, but I'll do that. I'll block. Well, you can, you say you're going to block if you get attacked. So, you just have, you, but you need to have your uh, fast action available to do that. Okay, so, then I'll just hold it if I can. Yeah. All right, so that's Holroyd's turn. Singleton, you're up next. You, after dodging a <laughs> cut from this creature's tail, you're standing there. What do you do? Is using the incinerator a, 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 a like a mobility agility thing? Uh, it would be a agility ranged combat roll, I do believe. So is that one of the things I have disadvantage on? Uh. 
Oh, no disadvantage. Like, I have a penalty too? I believe it was to all agility-based rolls, right? So, in that case, yeah, you would have the minus two penalty. Let me see, tremble, yeah. All skill rolls using agility, minus two. So that would include ranged combat, since that's a agility skill. You can do it anyway. She, All right, go for she, it. She's trying her best. She's trembling. She's shaking, but she's gonna try. Uh, okay, so that's fine. You do have some panic offsetting so, it, so that's true. Yes, yeah, so that would be five d six. Can I stress when I'm panicked? Yeah, you can still gain stress. Or okay, you, and you can that. still panic again, too. <laughs> you can always get worse. <laughs> One success! Okay. And are you? did you roll your panic dice as well, or is that coming? Uh, what's my panic dice? Or your you're, stress you're, dice, rather. Your stress dice. Because you can panic again. Yeah. Or you could succeed again. Both are possible, but either yeah. way, you need to roll your, yeah. all your stress dice every time. Oh god, okay. Uh... Because you could add stunts to this, which could be helpful. I don't know, what if- I don't want to panic again. Oh, I'm panicking again! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do that! So, you do hit it as you <sighs> send those flames out. How much damage does the incinerator do? I have no idea. It's I in the- Uh, up. whereabouts is it? It's in gear. Uh, gear... Let me double check. Uh, it does two it's... damage. But it has a fire intensity of nine. What does that mean? Um, right. So fire intensity. So fire can catch things fire. So you're actually in a good way here. Uh, so first off, uh, yeah, fire intensity of nine means you roll 96 and the number of um, successes that you get each deal a point of damage from the fire. That's and if it sick. takes if it takes any damage from the fire, then it catches yeah. fire and will take some residual damage later. Yes. yes. All right. So it does take one point of damage from the the fire, as well as uh, what's the base damage again? Two. Uh. Yeah. Two. I think it's two. So, so it takes three damage. Three okay. damage in total, but I have to roll its armor rating to see how much it reduces that by. One. Which is by one, because so, that's one success. So it takes two damage in total. However, it has caught fire now as you... And you hear it squeal, let out this nightmarish sort of animalistic sound. It's just like... And it comes out at a high, high pitch. Uh, this thing has caught fire, and it does not seem to like that. Um, and I do, however, need you to roll for your panic. <laughs> okay, what am I rolling? Is the same uh, thing? Yeah, d6 plus your total stress dice. No, plus, plus the, your stress level, rather. Not if your you stress panic, dice. does your stress go up? It's possible. Okay, so that's, depends, that's it what depends it on the effect. Yeah, depends on the okay. effect. So a D six. Oh wait, plus I, your I stress it wrong. Okay, eight, eight again. Eight again. Oh. So you're still you're, no. That's not so bad though because you're just still trembling. You're still shaking. You don't gain anything okay. new. Nothing is changed. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, count as is like the trembling is one thing, not two times she's trembling. <laughs> Twice the trembling. Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know if the effects stack, uh, but I, for the sake of mercy here, I might say that they don't. I was gonna say, okay. I've seen I've seen someone roll the same thing, and it hasn't stacked from what I've seen. Yeah, I don't know what the rules as written would be, but I'm gonna make a ruling right now to say it won't stack for now, and each one is an individual effect that you either have or you don't have. Okay, good. So, okay. That's Singleton's turn, though, as you're still panicking and shaking, but pfft, your shaky hands blowing fire into like the room in front of you. like, screaming while she's, like, spraying the incinerator. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, just screaming your lungs out as this nightmarish creature approaches, but it seems to have caught fire. That was one heck of a turn. You did some hurting to that Xenomorph. Is that going to be Singleton's turn? I don't believe you uh, used... Is that your... No, you did use your secondary action, or, or rather your fast action to block earlier in the turn, so you yeah. technically don't have one uh, earlier in the round. So yeah, you're you're done. Uh, Sig, you're up next. Kind of crammed into that same hole. That's crazy, because I have... I'm looking at my stuff like I have nothing... To, well... <laughs> Hmm. Uh. So, okay, I have a. I have a service pistol on me. Would would Sig be able to take that as like a, like a thing and use it? Like if it's just kind of on my my hip. Actually, let me look at the um, action stuff. Cause... Yeah, because there are uh, the... pick up item. In Fast action. Mm, you could do that if she's kind of signaling to you. I will say you can freely do that if you like to signal to the weapon on your hip. So yeah, she'll do would that. that mean, would that mean I'd be able to, when I get, like, when I grab the service pistol, um, would that just count as me picking up an item? Yeah, so that, that would be a fast action. Pick? So you would still have your slow action available if you want to grab that. Okay, yeah, I will grab that. All right, Singleton, with like, her shaky hands, just kind of taps the pistol on her side and calls out to you, Sig. Bless Sig this is, fucker! And Sig's just like, he doesn't say anything? Because he's just like, what in the hell is this? And just reaction reaction to that just, like, grabs the pistol. All and right. And just staring at this thing. Um and would I be able to fire? Yep, you can make an attack with that pistol as your slow action, so go ahead and make a ranged combat roll. All right. Uh, we will see if any of this works. And then that's also plus my stress. Plus your stress. Die. Yep. So this is regular. Oh. Success. Hey. Um, and then... No, so just one. All right, nothing good, but nothing bad on the stress dice. So one success. What's that weapon's damage? Uh, that's the service pistol, right? Mm-hmm. All right, let me go down to the thing. Service pistol is one, is one damage. Oh wait, Oof. it says plus two bonus. Oh, that means you could add two more oh, to you, the oh. to the roll. Oh, two oh, more. Yeah, more yeah. So add, yeah, add, add two more d sixes because this thing did roll one on its armor. So you would. Yay! Oh, I was gonna say yeah! it rolled one on its armor, which means it reduces the damage by one. But if you could get one more success, you could add another damage. Yep. So Bang. it would have negated the damage with this thick black carapace that covers it. But your bullet strikes it in a more vulnerable spot and pierces through. Um, and deals one point of damage to it. So. Uh, I believe that completes Singleton's turn because, yep, or rather six turn, all uh, things. because yeah, yep, you all used all your do. actions. So Hirsch, you've been seeing this all go down. You're surrounded on both sides by craziness. What are you doing? I'm gonna try to slow action pop a shot off at this little creepy crawly. All right, so you see a little. The little one. The little <laughs> one. I'm going to pop a shot off at the little creepy crawler. All right, so you fire a burst with a right. pulse rifle, bringing you back to your marine days. Go ahead and roll for ranged combat. It is not engaged with you, so you don't have any penalties. Is it so that's not considered close quarters? Uh, it would it's not be. Quarters, it's in close quarters Yeah, it's in close quarters with Holroyd, but not with you. You're a okay, little bit okay, down okay, the hall. Okay. Gotcha. And that is... Agility ranged. There, no. Uh, you got the pulse rifle, right? E. Uh, you get a plus one on that as okay. well. Oh, does it have a plus one bonus on the weapon? Yep. All right, so I add uh, one more dice to that roll. Yeah. I have to stress out too, right? 
Welcome yeah. to our luck. Yeah, I have the stress. That's <laughs> uh, four. Dog, we stressing. Where's coffee at? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, Ooh, wow. <laughs> You could push if uh, you want. Of not six. You could push. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, you could push. Oh, right. Totally forgot about that. Pushing is a thing. Hey, pushing is a thing. Yeah, we go. We go push. So how does push work? How many? So push you can I do? You gain. You can only do it once on a roll, but when okay. you do it, you can you gain a point of stress, and then you uh -huh. re-roll this exact roll, but with one more stress dice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Let's roll go. your 66 plus 5d6 in stress. Uh. Uh. Come on! Why? <laughs> what? What? Why are, the combat, why are the combat people not Why hitting? is the nurse six? <laughs> Sig, apparently, <laughs> is the sharpest shooter. <laughs> Apparently, I'm that's so I was hoping it was clo considered clo close quarter combat because mm. it's a little bit better for me. Um, but if you're making a, uh, attacking with a ranged weapon, uh, you would uh, yeah. you would have to yeah you wouldn't be able to use the pulse rifle. Uh, however, mm. yeah, that does unfortunately it is scuttering around and you are stressing out and aiming your weapon and firing a burst along the floor as the rest of you hear the fully automatic fire. <laughs> echo throughout this hallway but does not hit the small thing you want to check something real quick um uh, do i continue to go for the little guy or do i take a, a shot off at the uh, xenomorph you can only make one attack per turn right yes uh, well oh it's only one attack no matter whether it's fast or not well, it's yeah a it's fast a sl or it's slow a sl action and attacking is a slow action attacking is a um. slow action but yeah, so you do have a fast action still available. I don't believe you've used that. No. Um. Fast actions, you can move, you can save it for a block if you think you might get attacked. I'm, I'm looking at something right now. Can Before. I... Can I run up to Holroyd and give him my rifle? And almost like take the, the blocking position? Oh, standing between and, like, you and it? Yeah, to intercept the the creepy crawly. Okay. Yeah, I'll say you can move over to Holroyd and begin handing off that rifle as you stand by him. Okay. All right. Uh, I got you. So that's going to be Hirsch. Next up, the face hugger is going to move, and seeing as you just moved in front of it, mm -hmm. it is going to... Thank you, the target of its ire, as we see what it does. The facehugger leaps and catches you from behind, its tail whipping violently. I need to roll another d6. Uh, Hirsch, your legs are caught, and you fall prone, and you must make a panic roll. Uh, panic roll is how stressed I am, plus... One dice, right? Yep. 1d6 plus your stress level. Oh, jeez. So, you are now I'm on the ground. Now, dog. <laughs> Stressing. Oh, oh, no. That's 11. <laughs> seek, seek cover. You must use your next action to move away from danger and find a safe spot if possible. You're allowed to make a retreat roll if you have an enemy at engaged range, which you do. And your stress level... Uh, is decreased by one, but the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range increases by one. And then after that, you after one round of doing that, you can act normally. Okay. So you lose one stress. Uh, Yay! But everyone within all short the range, ones. which is every all, all of the characters uh, in this particular hallway, range. yeah, that short range. Uh huh. 
All Every, right, because short range. So in, engaged is what short range would be in like D and D. Yeah, engaged. Range. Yeah, would be like melee range. Short range is anything beyond that that's still in the same zone. Right. Yeah. So everybody, everybody else gets one. Yeah, and then medium range would would be the next highest, which is like in the I next mean, in the next zone. To be fair, the the combat ready dude's running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you need to yeah. So you need to seek cover on your next turn. Um, so the rest of you gain a point of stress. Um, however, Hirsch, you lose one. Well okay. Uh. Get wrecked, everybody. <laughs> and then that is going to be the facehugger McQueer. You're next. Uh, quick question. I'm um, looking at ammo really quick. And does the the flame, the incinerator, does that work on ammo rules? I believe it does, yeah. Because if it you does? panic, if you roll a one on your stress dice while using the weapon, you empty the max. Oh, right. That's right. She did panic while wielding it. So you did do a good bit of flame to the xenomorph, but you expend all the fuel. Oh. Well, shit. Uh. That was a good gun, though. Oh. Uh, Mc, uh, McCreer is just looking around and at all this chaos, and she's just like, she's she's just looking back and forth before uh, and just hearing uh, Singleton just like screaming her lungs off and. <laughs> just like it's basically blowing up that room full of incinerator ammo, <laughs> and she's just gonna yell at Singleton to stop, breathe, and and get a hold of herself. And I'm gonna try to get her to stop panicking. All right, are you using your talent? No, this is or... just a regular slow action. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that is something that anybody can just do. Right. Yeah, so uh, stop panic. I make a command check to see if she um, listens to me. And I think, let's see panic, or er, command. It'd be really unfortunate if you rolled a one on stress for this. We're, we're getting stressed out. It's, she'd be like, don't panic. Don't panic! Don't panic! Don't panic! Don't panic! Don't panic! <laughs> <You're just> hyperventilating <laughs> in between. Get yourself together. Slaps yourself. <laughs> <laughs> are you talking to her or yourself? <laughs> I'm talking to you know, anybody who can listen. <laughs> Command. Stop panic. Uh, make a panic roll control. Command roll to return them to their senses. Yep, so you make a command roll. That is. 8 plus. Come on, please. Oh no! A lot oh, of success, but... <laughs> oh no! Imagine if you had a gun and you said, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> All right, so that is four successes, but oh boy, you are going to panic. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Is there any? Uh, well, first off, <laughs> what are all those? Yeah, what are the stunts on command? I don't really think there are any. Every, command, every uh, skill has some stunts. I, I, I can, it just says the things you could do with that are stop panic and give orders. And oh, really? some, some, some other stuff for officers. Okay. That's disappointing. We need a stunt. Well, can I, uh, because I got three extra successes, also command everyone else in my range, which would include where Hirsch just not panicking. <laughs> you know what? Because of all those successes, I feel like you would be able to she do just, that just from that like, sheer she, number. No, she, 
Like, no, like, for sure, like, exactly what we were just saying. Like, she starts panicking, and she just stomps her foot down and is just yelling at the top of her lungs to anybody who will listen. Take a deep breath! <laughs> <laughs> and then panics. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So I'll say, Hirsch and Singleton can both end their panics. But you gotta roll A on the panic table. Uh, so, so go ahead. Stress level add to a d6. That's correct. Six. All right. You managed to keep your nerves in check. Barely. You're keeping it together. Ah. You suffer no effects. Deep breaths. Ooh. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. That's good. That's great. <laughs> and then as a fast action, um, let's see what she can do here. Um... Uh, okay, is, um, Singleton is being grappled right now, right? Uh, no. no. Singleton evaded getting any oh, sort of thing okay. done to her. Okay. By blocking. Okay, I'm gonna hold my facts action just in case I have to block something. Alrighty. There was something... That. Okay, there it is. Okay, I was just trying to find a table that I needed. All right, so that took forever. Uh, so is that McWeir's turn? That is McWeir's turn. She's gonna hold her fast action in case she has to block. All right. Well, coming back up here, the face hugger gets to take its second turn of the round. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll its d6 to see what it does, as it is still around. Uh, it's right in front of, in fact this grounded Hirsch that it knocked down last time. Damn, damn, trip me. Damn. damn. Ah. It is going to do a tail lash. Little monster comes at you, attacking with this number of dice. Those are two successes. It does one damage, and it could do an additional damage with that extra success. So you take two points of damage. Hirsch... And you also get your stress level increased by one as it whips at you with its tail. It doesn't quite lay hold of you, but that thing whacks you really good on the side of the head. Oy. Ow. And the that... one stress, two health. Mm-hmm. Oof. You get back the one you lost. So that's going to be the end of its turn. That brings us back to the top of the round. Now, that is going to be the Xenomorph acting twice in a row. However, this thing is still on fire. And fire intensity increases by one every round. So, Singleton, oh. I need you to roll 10 D6s now to see how much more you hurt this thing. Yo, imagine if you got, like, five sixes. Here we go. Ten sixes across the board. Uh. Yeah. I got one! <laughs> you did get one, so it does burn for one more point of damage as you hear it hissing <laughs> and waving its arms around. Um, actually... I feel like this is still Singleton just holding the trigger down. Yeah, yeah, still in that <laughs> fell swoop. What is, what actually, it does it still have to roll for its armor, so it's possible it could reduce this. Don't you dare! Uh, oh. It does reduce it. I've been rolling really well for some reason. <laughs> and we haven't. <laughs> Rigged. Rigged. <laughs> Rigged. Uh, but, but it is still on fire, and it is in a bit of a bad way because of that. Um, as you see this thing beginning to flail around. Um, but it is in a position where it is okay, in, front of, about to in die. front of Singleton. <laughs> so... Right now, it's kind of in between Singleton, Sig, and McWeir. Um, last time I went after uh, Singleton and McWeir, but it is, as the one who lit it on fire, still kind of has its ire on Singleton a bit. So let's see what it does towards you. 
<laughs> so, uh -oh. the xenomorph opens its outer jaws wide, and the deadly inner jaws lean out as it growls and gnashes in anticipation before snapping forwards. It is going to try a head bite. Uh, do I have any actions? This is a new turn, right? This is a new round, so you can attempt to block if this hits you. I try block. <laughs> if this hits oh, you me. might want to wait until yeah, it, you might want to see wait. if it hits. <laughs> yeah, if it hits me, I'm going to try block. <laughs> It does it not. Hit me. <laughs> so yeah. you see this thing, this little mouth come out of this bigger mouth, this weird eldritch what the fuck? imagery, and you instinctively recoil, and it gnashes forward, but does not go into your head. That is going to be that move right there. On its next turn, it is going to turn its ire to Sig, who is right beside you. And let's see what it That's tries cool. to do. So, Xenomorph lunges forward and attempts to grab its victims, its inner jaws poised to strike. So, let's see if it could lay hold of you. That is a success. So it does grab Sig with its little bony arms. And you are considered grab. Oh. And you can make a opposed close combat roll to try and break loose, though. Okay. This is the one I in inadvertently read from that one time. Okay, uh, and I guess that would be my slow action, though, wouldn't it? Um, it doesn't indicate that this... Hold on, let me see. Uh, let me check the grappling rules, because I'm not entirely sure if that's something that happens right when it grabs you, or if that's something that's supposed to happen during your turn. Follow special rules that is described in the section on Xenomorphs, page 112. Mm. 112. Let me double check that then. Uh... No, that just gives the basic Xenomorph stuff. Yeah, I already know all that. I'm trying to figure out where the grabbing rules are. Does it give a page number? 93. For that? 93. Grapple your opponent as a stunt in close combat. You and your opponent fall to the ground. Opponent drops any weapon they were holding and cannot move. The only action they can perform is an attempt to break free, which is a slow action that succeeds if the opponent wins an opposed close combat roll. Okay, yeah, so I think that is something you have to do is uh Or you, or you can block it to not get to not fall down. Oh I can block block I think. it. Can you block it? Silly block it? Let's see. Uh only Have you seen that? Um, on page 93 for grappling? Yeah. I want to see the, the only thing you can attempt is to break free. No, I, I'm, I'm saying can you also choose oh. to grapple or to block it? Uh, I feel like there should be... Let's see... Let's see, block it. Victim counts hmm. as grabbed. Block it. Oh, Try wiping hit. Fast action. Close combat. Oh. 
Yeah. You must decide that you are going to block an attack before they roll. Oh, does it say that? You must decide that you are going to block it before the attacker rolls for their strike. Uh, and then oh, yeah, it does say that. An effect. You, and then you can, oh. oh, so so for each success, you can either decrease the damage, counterattack, or disarm them. I see, I see. Okay, good to know. I forgot about those extra effects. So, uh. yeah, so you are grappled, and it would take your turn to try and escape from that. Uh, so right now, it has you in its grip, and that is going to be where we leave you for now. Uh, so, that brings us to Holroyd, back over there with the face hugger. Okay. You also have a rifle now. You also That's have a good. rifle. Okay, so, given that he has this rifle, he's going to aim and fire this rifle at the face hugger. Okay, are you going to use any movement to get some distance to negate the penalty, or... It's still pretty close gonna, to you. I'm going to walk back a few steps. Okay. So you move to short range. Go ahead and make a... Actually, hold on. I believe you need to make a retreat in order to do that. That's so I'm not, yeah, yeah, so, that's so I'm not sure action. if you... That would require your fast action. That's right, yeah. Even though it's focused on me now? Yeah, it's still, it's still in the, in the same, same proximity. Uh, but uh, it is it is focused on you. But you could I believe the retreat allows you to move as part of the retreat, though, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Yeah, well, retreat is just you move into yeah. short range. Yeah, so there you go. So, yeah, you oh, are still able to shoot. So okay, go ahead good. and roll for ranged combat. Luck be a lady and not a man, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a hit. Oh, oh and don't forget the weapon has bonuses, right? <laughs> yep. So it already it already does. Uh, if you oh yeah, you can roll one more die. Uh, well, which rifle is this? Yeah, is this the, the pulse, pulse rifle? rifle? Yeah, pulse rifle. So the okay. pulse rifle, yeah, is a plus one. Uh, yeah, plus that's one. a plus one. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm looking at retreat now. Oh. Okay. Okay. So. Oh yes, yeah, stress. Oh no, you don't have stress. Um, so that's three damage since it already does two damage. I'm looking at retreat. If you have an active enemy in engaged range, you must make a mobility roll to move away to short range. Oh, I see. Right, you have to succeed a mobility roll. And, and then if you fail, you still move, but they get an attack of opportunity. Okay, I see. So go ahead and make that mobility roll real quick. Well, same versus the first. Okay, so you're good. Hey, you're nothing good. changed. Nothing changed. All right, just making sure we're good here then. Uh, so it deals two points of damage, it looks like, from the pulse rifle. And that pulse rifle has armor piercing, which means that uh, its armor rating is halved against this weapon. So let's no. see. Yeah, so... Um, you fire a burst with that rifle and just like pfft, pfft, scatter it into pieces. Uh, it is absolutely obliterated. However, its blood splashes in its immediate vicinity. And it looks like Hirsch is in the splash zone. Uh, can I, can, uh, wait, 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 can, can Holroyd, can Holroyd, can Holroyd rush to move? Hurst out of the way. You would not be able to. You're all out of actions. You no. take one point of damage from the acid, Hirsch, as it splashes onto you. Ah! Ah! And it begins searing your skin and your clothes. But the face hugger is destroyed. So. Exploded. That is going to be Holroyd's turn. Next up is Singleton. Okay. Well, the pistol's on the ground, so you could grab that. I should do because you're out of ammo for the incinerator. Yep. 
think. Actually, hold on. Let me check something. Um. So I'm actually curious, real quick. So, like, with the way that damage works, you're rolling to see if you can hit, and then. And then the arm they roll for armor to see if they reduce yeah. it. So it's okay. flat damage okay. for mm -hmm. all weapons. Yeah. So oh, okay. would it be a fast action to pick up the pistol from the ground? Yeah, I would say you could do that. Yeah. Well, it's it's flat damage unless you have... Yeah, depending uh, on how many more successes you roll. Yeah. Okay. So you could add that more damage. Baseline, baseline, whatever the weapon does, plus anything above that you roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the incinerate. Is dropping in like a free action? Uh, yeah. Unless I'll I can allow just it. like strap it to the side. I don't know like how this works. Well, so swapping weapons is a free action. So you could swap. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. You could go ahead and swap it. So we'll say you could just sling okay. it over your shoulder and then pick up the pistol. However, this thing is chaotically flinging around as you're moving by, and uh, you're still in pretty close quarters with this thing, but you have picked up the pistol. That's your fast action. Okay, I'm going to try yeah. fire at it. All right. So You're... what is the penalty? Uh, it's a minus three penalty at this engaged range. Unless you move back. Okay. But she would I have to take her back. action to do that because she already used her oh, right. fast to pick it up. So she could, so... but it would be the only thing she does. Okay. So... If you have one fast action, one slow action, you have to do one of each, or can you do two fast actions? You could do two fast actions. You could use your slow action to do a fast action naturally, as the name but implies. But not the other way around. But not the other way around. Interesting. So you could you could effectively be like, okay, so I want to go through and pick this up. Yeah. And then I want to move and run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Ah. Yeah, you can't, or, but you can't. Yeah, or you, yeah, you can. Ooh, even with the minus three. Plus, you're stressed, don't, lest you forget. But yeah, or if you want to make yeah. a full retreat, you could do two run oh, actions oh, and wait, just wait, go wait, 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 wait. really far. Wait, before before you roll before you roll your stress. That's right. Add plus two to that. Oh, right for the gun. Oh, the you, pistol you has a plus two. The, the pistol, yeah, the pistol has a plus two, so you get All two right. more dice on that. Two more successes coming up. <laughs> So roll two more dice, <laughs> and then two, and then whatever hey, your stress dice are. Hey, All right, two that. successes. Look at this. Oh. Then... Hey, oh. Oh. <laughs> so good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. So let's uh, let's go one at a time here. First off, you get is that? Here's a question: Is that weapon armor piercing? Uh, it is no. It's not an armor piercing ooh. weapon. Okay, so let's see how this resolves because. The Xenomorph, I realized I messed something up earlier. Its armor rating is going to be... Actually, I realized I messed up a... Whew, messed up a couple of things here. Um, it actually should have had a slightly lower armor rating before against the fire. Um, but it is does have higher armor rating against non-fire. So, oh, interesting. Let's see how it reduces this here. It doesn't reduce hey. it at all. So that is going to be all of the damage. So one, so one, it does base one, then two, th so three. So three. Wait, does that mean I use up all the ammo in the pistol as well? So you <laughs> aim this oh pistol God. at the burning Xenomorph that is on top of Sig and <laughs> empty the entire magazine into it but as these bullets pierce into its thick carapace you see spatters of green shooting out of it um as oh, it no. needs to roll its acid of splash against well technically all three of you are in engaged oh no and <sighs> singleton you need to roll for panic So what? you roll a success on panic? Shit. Yeah, you can roll a success dead? on panic. Okay. What is this? I'm gonna Are we block. dead? I'm gonna block. I can't block. What is this? Oh, we just... Wait. Uh, wait. 
Wait, no, Can we I... said you, like, you have to block before the, um, a close combat. Is this a what close combat? And even can we? Be... Uh. Okay, what's uh this? Oh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Don't pay. Yeah, don't you think don't panic. Matters. You keep it together, but you do take four points of damage from the acid. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, me too. What, what is this? Well, you are broken. You are not so dead, but you are broken. broken characters. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you broken what? as well? Yeah, dude, I have two health. <laughs> two. <laughs> two. All so right. I. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's e it's going to be easy to get killed. Uh, let me look up what? the broken rules again. I don't think that was supposed to happen, though. The that map was fifty right percent success on us. I had that was that, that was a pretty that was a pretty extraordinary roll. So okay, but, the cool thing is we can't go below zero here. So yeah, you we're can't not go below dead. zero. You're not dead. We're you not, are just broken. But we're all we're, swimming in acid. We're all Resident Evil. Yes, you are all Resident Evil Five. You all are in acid, which is still residually on you. Oh. Oh, oh, it's residual too. Are you serious? Ah, that's a xenomorph in close quarters. Okay. Bro. So. Tell me it's at least dead. However, she does kill it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's why, well, and that's why it spills all that acid there. Um, that's not. So let's see. You are broken. Uh, you're taken out of the action. Immediately roll for a critical injury. And if you're not dead after that critical injury, then you can crawl and mumble around. All right, let's see. Critical injury. So go uh, ahead. How do you roll for that? So you, I don't know if this can do a proper D66. We've never tried it, but it is a D66 table. Oh, no. Because it, it, only certain options... Are available. What's I'm not sure if doing D66 will just do a number though. between one and sixty. Critical injuries. There's critical a in table for it. Page 100. Page 100. Yeah, I've got the tables ready though, so I can let okay, you know what so you well, get. Just roll two. Just roll two D6 well, separately first, and then add. Them let me just, for the sake of experimentation here, let me see if it does just. Yeah, I think it is just going to generate a number between one, one and, and 66. sixty-six. Yeah. Because that is not a yeah. number you're supposed to be able to get. So yeah, just roll two d6s. And add up together. Uh -huh. one, and one and smash the numbers <laughs> together to create a new number. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. One of, the, one of the critical injuries is crotch hit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like I said, I got the table. Uh, so just roll your dice. Okay. Let's keep things moving here. Okay. Uh, Wait, so roll two, d slash, slash roll, roll two d six. Roll two d six and add them to smash them together to create a new number. So thirteen. Oh, okay. Thirteen. So ten and thirteen, or rather fifty-five and thirteen. I was just adding them up there. Five. <laughs> fifty-five. Uh, McWeir. Thirty-one. <laughs> so, McWeir, the acid splashes onto your left leg and corrodes it. Uh, you have lost your leg, and ah! you can no longer run, only crawl. And this is a fatal injury that will have to get treated, otherwise you could die from it. All right, all right, okay. Uh, Meanwhile, also the ground. Thirteen for Sig. You are racked with crippling pain. Your stress level increases by one. <clears throat> All right. He's just on the ground like, ah! Oh, to, like, to be fair, because it's like sitting on top of you and she was shooting above it, it's probably shielding you from the most of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 31 for Singleton. The acid splashes onto your face a bit and eats into the cartilage in your nose. You have effectively a broken nose. Your manipulation and observation are minus one for a matter of days. 
<laughs> for the rest of this encounter. Yeah, essentially for the rest of this. Scary damage nose. <laughs> Well, that's for manipulation. Yeah. Is that not scaring people? Well, observation is still that's... minus one. <laughs> so. However, this darkened xenomorph creature that none of you have seen anything like before is now slouched over on the ground. And with all this gunfire and all else that resounded throughout the fight, you hear... A lot more noise humming to life around this facility around you. But you all are in this hallway in the aftermath as McWeir is screaming out in pain as her leg is being reduced to bone by this acid. Like it, the the acid like splashed like as it thrashed, and like a clean line of acid went like right above her knee and the, the lower le- uh, half of her leg is, is standing where she used to be, and she's on the ground yeah. several feet away. Yeah. Oh. So, if you suffer critical injury listed as fatal, which you did, you must make a death roll when the listed time runs out, which is stamina that you cannot push and cannot add stress dice to. Stamina. If you <laughs> if it succeeds, then you hold on a bit longer. If it fails, you die. So, what is the amount of time it lists? Or your severed leg. Severed leg. One shift. One shift. So, so at the end of one shift. At the end of one shift, which is, yeah, about uh, five to ten hours, you will have to roll for death. I got some time. I got some time. <sighs> yes, the acid has kind of cauterized it a bit. But to save your life, uh, someone will have to administer first aid. Med lab. <laughs> Does it have to be first aid? Could it be carterization? It requires a medical aid roll either way. Oh, okay. (laughs) If that's how you want to flavor it, you could try, but you would have to roll for medical aid. Uh, I mean... (laughs) And it's worth noting that this this (laughs) fatal injury is so fatal that whoever does the medical aid roll gets a minus one penalty. Yep. Uh. She has the I mean, I'm, medical aid. I'm kind me, of in. and I I'm feel, down. <laughs> oh, wait. it's worth noting: separate medical aid rules are needed to get people unbroken too. So you're gonna have to. Someone's gonna have to apply medical aid to get to any, all three of us. To, yeah, to all three of them in order to get them out of broken. And I believe you're the only one who sustained a fatal injury. So you would yeah, need to get really unbroken. And then treated for life-saving uh, medical aid. However, you can do those in any order you wish. Apparently, drag our ass to the med lab. <laughs> um, can we yeah, drag gonna... them broken? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that just okay. means that they are and they are not able to take actions. But and y'all would know Sig is a medic here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna what, pick up what... Sig. What can we do to unbreak you? <laughs> um, how can I help you? I need okay. to help you, buddy. Don't uh, leave me. Also, I, I, uh, I have some, I don't know, fucking heavy, heavy painkillers right over there. Okay. Uh, Hirsch, the acid from that face hugger is still burning at you, uh, but it seems to sizzle out and fade at this point. I was, was going to say, can I just take off my pants if that's the case? <laughs> <laughs> I drop the pants and I go running over the sink. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Okay, so it is no longer affecting me. Yeah, but it looks okay. like the acid is still eating at the three who are down and may still cause some damage to them yet soon. If you guys don't okay, do anything. Um, so I'm going to like start dragging bodies out of the acid um, towards the med lab. So okay. I can grab like, can I grab effectively at least grab two wrists and pull? <laughs> like, I'll I'm say grab, uh, two different people by the wrists and pull them. Well, down I, the I was going to, I was going to grab Sig. 
Oh, you grab Sig, then I'll grab the other two. I don't care. Yeah, I'll say make a stamina roll as you're trying to drag these two. Okay. I can do that. Adding your stress, of course. Oh, um... How safe do we feel at this very moment? <laughs> not safe? I was going to say, with the sounds safe. that you just heard echoing throughout the facility, not very safe. You would have to enclose yourself in a room or anything like that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. If you want to... Yeah. Feel a bit right, more comfortable. Um, that is five. So five stress. Seven. I, I did not successfully do that. Is that with uh, your stress? No, the stress I'm adding now. Okay. This still stress. gives you chances for success. Oh! Hey, you do succeed, one. but you do panic. So you That's aren't right. able to two-handed drag uh, both of them at a time. Um, I'm going to need you to roll a d6 plus your stress level for panic. Yes. I hope he. Can, I hope he's able to still move after this. Tim, you're frozen by fear or stress for one round. You're kidding me! Losing, losing your next slow action, your stress level, and the stress level of all friendly player characters in short range of you increases by one. Um, so you're momentarily <laughs> stunned as you're looking <laughs> at <laughs> as, as you're pull, looking I'm at this horrific sight of how messed up McWeird <laughs> looks right now. You momentarily gag and freeze for a moment before you're able to continue dragging them on. Okay. Uh, I, as so, I, as so. I start to pull McWeir, I see the legs gone. I'm like, ah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so. that's gross. But you all increase one stress. Well, like it's just standing upright two feet away. <laughs> uh, now the acid is still eating here. So... But do I have them a little propped up off the ground? <laughs> They're not going to catch as much damage here. We're boots. Come on, guys. Help. Help. I'm frozen. A leg. Scare me. Uh, actually, it's only one round, though, right? Uh, or one whatever. Technically, it's oh. supposed to reduce by half round after round. So, but with that no, one, no, it no, was for his, his, his oh, for his stun, yeah, fear. yeah, yeah, which isn't too bad because that's only one more acid thing before you um, start dragging. Does uh, does do you get Sig out of there before this acid takes effect? Well, you do, but it's still clinging to their persons, uh, as it was oh, with you, yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, it's all over, it's all over Sig, it's on Singleton's face and on my leg. Yeah, it hasn't burnt out yet. I thought it was like a pool that I'm dragging you through, not mm -hmm. the stuff that's on you. Yeah. Uh, however, I will say, if you want to start administering aid, you can do so, and I will allow it to negate the acid if you do so immediately. Because otherwise, it's going to be the next round, and they're going to start burning. Frozen solid, it's on you. It's on that's you. true, that's true. <laughs> Hirsch is currently frozen Some with Holroyd. fear. Holroyd's the only one who can act. Are you going to try and administer that. medical aid to any of them? I will, that lag Okay, in. so I, I now I'll admit Holroyd doesn't like Sig very much, but he's he's still a good person. Like, okay, Holroyd is still a good person, so he just grumbles and he starts administering aid to Sig. All right, go ahead and roll for uh, medical aid. Ugh, God, this ass. Minus one uh, penalty. My, ooh, my. What? Because the... Oh, wait, no, no, not for Sig. Yeah, that's for McWeir. So, yeah, oh, no, norm, normal, normal roll for Sig. Way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wait. Hang in there. No, they're, they're, they're fine. You're fine. Wait, McWeir's the one who's dying? Is the one who's dying? I'm, I'm Every, dying. Everybody's broken. Well, technically, they're all oh, dying because they're still yeah. ta about to take some acid. Yeah, but, like, I'm... So which like, will, every time it, it damages them, it will cause them to roll for critical injuries again. Uh, and we could die. Which means oh, any, yeah. Yeah, any critical injury Very could good. kill you outright. Yeah. 
But can it's up we, to you. You know, the, Sig. You know, Sig is has the best medical knowledge out of anyone here. So it's about what order you want to try and save these lives in. But no matter what, there's Sig. gonna be some it risks. Has to be Sig. It but has to be Sig. my my question, my question is, is, being that I'm frozen solid, but can I can I still speak like 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 and try yeah, to mumble you, something out? I'll allow it. Yeah, if you could try is, to is, speak falteringly. Is it? Uh, is there a way? We can at least, uh, um, you know, dil- dilute, dilute the, the the acid. Is there some uh, kind of water suppression system nearby? I don't <laughs> know. I'll say, let's see. Uh. I mop so, these floors. I wouldn't know yeah, where the nearest yeah. water spigot is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say Holroyd, since you're the one, only one who can be active right now, has to make an observation roll. Uh, well, that okay. Observation. Wait. What? Hold on a second. Well, would that take up? Would that take up the action of medical? I'm taking a look. Quite possibly. No. So I'll say you can you can look around medical. for a moment, or you could administer immediate aid. As administer immediate aid. As, administer as, immediate aid. <laughs> I was gonna say if Sig knows if the water would dilute the acid. <laughs> I can't okay. tell you anything. I'm yeah, on the he's racked like, with oh. pain right now. I got two successes on Sig. All right, uh, two and, successes. Uh, uh, two eight. That, yeah, that's his total for the roll. I do believe. Okay. Now, okay, so for Broken, getting back up. Uh, yep, so you gain a number of health points equal to the number of successes in that roll. So you gain oh. two health points and you're back up, Sig. Yeah! <laughs> Sig gets back up. <sighs> okay. okay put some it. grease into those elbows and help me. Yeah, well done. Please. I will, don't worry. Oh, God. You apply what basic uh, wound treating that you understand, Holroyd, and just tear some sheets and wrap some wounds. You um, manage to get Sig back on his feet. So I'm going to go into my equipment real quick because I have something here. Right. Which is what's awesome. What page was it? It was here. Um... Hello? Where did it go? Hold on. Are you looking for... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking for... Your I'm equipment? For, uh, yeah, equipment. I don't know where it went. I was on that page earlier. It's not suits and armor. It's... Ah, oh, here it is! All right. Uh, do for your gear. Uh, do do. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, so it's just a personal med kit. That's what it is. So it's not gonna do what I thought it's gonna do, but it's gonna help with something. Personal med kit. Um. So. Yeah. Medical supplies. Let's see. You. Oh yeah. Pers- Personal med kit. Well, it does give a plus two modification to medical aid rolls, but can only be used once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and uh, I'm gonna go through. Um, ah, this is a hard situation because no matter who I get, someone's gonna get hit with acid. Yeah. Um, and then you will so, momentarily as well. So if it does take you out again, you might need another medical aid roll on yourself. But we will I will say that takes uh, effect at the end of your round. So you will get to get one medical aid in before I roll for it. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the med kit and give myself a plus two. And I'm going to go for as much as... As much as uh, Sig doesn't like McWeir, um, the situation is way worse than petty rivals. 
Um, so she's gonna go, or he's gonna go through and uh, try and get you up. All right. So roll for medical uh, aid. Honestly, I'd I'd say stop me from dying first. Uh oh yeah yeah because yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. there. there's a, there's a minus one. That's what it is. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there, there's a minus one on that, and if you have a plus two for the med that's kit. that's what I thought I was doing. That's what yeah. I yeah. okay yeah. So you're gonna go for the dying. Get it any order, right? Yeah, you can get get her unbroken or undying, in whichever order okay, you so that's choose. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, because I, if, cause if I take this again, I it might be really rough. Well, no, again, like well, again, I was gonna say I thought I was doing that as a whole. Yeah. But technically, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. So for the dying uh, thing, you don't have to roll for death until the end of a shift, which is a uh, number of hours. Whereas with the broken, if he gets you unbroken first, then you'll have some health points to cushion you. Oh, Although you'll oh, you'll still oh, okay, so you okay. can get back That's up right, and because... still be dying, but you won't have to. You won't bleed out for another few hours. Right. So I'm not gonna bleed out for like yeah. Yeah. So being okay, unbroken mind, would be more valuable first. Okay, okay, well, here we go. Uh, you are, so four, five, six. That's going to be 8d6. Plus... Are you using the med kit on this or save it? Yep. All right. Ma yeah, I'm using Imagine it. rolling and losing your same leg over again. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to use it for this. I'm going to do that later. All right. For when we're giving you out of dying. I'm going to save this. So 6d6. That's one, and uh -huh. then we're gonna go through one, two, three, four, five. Mm. Your stress. This is crazy. Oh, oh another two so successes three, in a pack. You get three health back, and then you got to roll for panic. Yeah. So uh, shrug it off. Shrug it off. McWeir. You are no longer broken, but you still cannot use your leg, your left leg. I'm still crawling. You're still crawling, and you so are. So you said it's going to be technically gonna be, dying. Uh, what is it again? It's plus a D6 your, uh, a D6 plus your stress level. Eight. You are trembling uncontrollably. Your agility it's skill right rules get minus two. Ha. That's 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 fine for me for now. Okay. He's just he's just like, okay, okay. Got the shakes. Um, or I'm still frozen solid. <laughs> all right, we need to, he's like, all right, I need to come over to you now. <laughs> Which, I will say that does take your round though because it is the slow action. So, you are preparing to apply A to Singleton. Let's see if the acid yeah. does anything more to you. I move over. It does not. Nope. And to... Uh, well, I'll say just for the sake of time, I'll roll those communally. So that will be for all three of you. The acid has not uh, done any more. But it's not done yet. But that yeah. will, you have time to make one more <laughs> medical aid. Yep, one more medical aid. Let's get you up. That's one. Stress. Two. And no panic, so... Right. Okay. Two health points to Singleton as Sig comes over and begins applying a bit more refined medical aid to you. And Sig clearly has some first aid training in this workplace and is expertly able to summon that, although with shaky hands, to mm -hmm. get the two of you up to tip-top shape. So the acid's, the acid's gone, right? For us there's now, one more. Or... There's one more roll. Yeah. Oh. Nothing more. So. All right. All right. So technically, there'd be I one more after that, but what are the odds of a D six? So, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I'm I just gonna kill any of us. But... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and roll the one. Yeah. No, you okay. got y'all are good. The acid dissipates. So I want to go through. I want to go through real quick as we're moving, as we're getting everybody to start moving out. I want to use my talent real quick. All right. Um, I want to use my talent on the alien to analyze. All right, analyze. Um, so remind me again what analyze does. All right. So uh, on the notes on here, 
So I have to roll an observation check, and every success roll I get to add, or for every success I have rolled, I get to ask you one question from the list. Ooh, and right, this one. Yeah. If, as, and as long as uh, if I succeed, um, I reduce the party stress by one within short range. Is that for each success, or is it just uh, uh, in that's total? just for just as for, long as... uh, just for one? I okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me yeah let me grab all right so let's see yeah, how this observation roll uh, goes a successful analyze roll also reduces the stress level of all pcs within short range by one all right but if i fail it it increases by one <laughs> <laughs> so you, let's you better find... roll good so as uh Don't the rest of you me. are getting back up on your feet getting up and moving again uh sig takes some time to crouch down by the dead dark creature in the back of the hall and start inspecting it. The Hold clear on. Still got stress. Still got stress. The clear goes over to Singleton and like gives her a hug after all this. It's just like, whoa, my God, your face. Cool. Um, I, I've, I've, well, no, I haven't really had worse. But... So, Zig, what are you doing? It's not as bad as your, as your leg. Sig... So Sig succeeds, but also has to roll for panic. Yeah. Oh boy, uh, this is going. So we lose one. We lose one, right? That is true. Yeah, Everybody no, loses it. one. Yeah, one stress. Because right, 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 no, yeah. he still succeeded. Stress. Yeah, he still succeeded yeah. the roll. Yep. Yeah, but it's quite. It's quite possible, depending on <laughs> what he rolls for the. Uh, panic roll get to get it back so but i'll say yeah for the sake of this panic roll you will the losing your level will count first yeah yeah so um D6 the question plus. yes uh oh, right. oh wait right. oh yeah so the question that say that i have that sig would want to know mm -hmm. is how does this thing work? After observing it in battle and the way that it's the way that it was moving and whatnot, how does this thing work? Especially because it didn't seem like it had eyes or anything along those lines. Right. And that is uh, that is one of the list pre-listed questions there. <laughs> oh man, that one's pretty broad. Um, and uh, do, do, do it does say you can you have to answer truthfully but you're allowed to give vague or incomplete answers right right um so okay you, that way it doesn't um spoil the scenario yeah yeah so examining the creature yeah it doesn't seem to have eyes you're really not entirely certain how it sees or navigates its environment but clearly this is some sort of predatory creature you have seen that it's blood appears to be composed of some sort of acidic substance, which makes it quite deadly if someone were to try and kill it in close quarters. And you see it even eating through the floor below you. It seems to burn quite strongly. You do uh, also, in examining it, you do notice the dagger-like tail and the tongue with another mouth at the end of it, both of which seem pretty deadly. I will say you do notice from this roll that, or from this uh, ability, your analyze ability, that the tail mm -hmm. seems to have some extra coating on it of some sort of, uh, you put it in a vial and you're really not entirely sure what it is, but it's different from the substance that was in its blood. It's different from the substance that is kind of around its mouth that seems to be a kind of gooey. There seems to be what you might Assume, although it's a, not a hypothesis you have, you have the ability to test right now, that this might be some sort of toxin, judging by its kind of predatory behavior and the kinds of things that creatures like this might be able to do if you're finding another substance that you can't identify that is just on a piercing implement on its, on its back. All right. So as, as things going through this, the, I, okay, I want to tie this in. 
So as he's looking at this creature, deducing all of these things, putting it all together, realizing just how dangerous this thing is, he goes into panic. Right. Yeah, the sheer terror. It's like, Roll what for just your happened? Pain. Wasn't yes. it even as bad as it could be? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's like realizing that. Oh! Oof. But your minus well, that, well, yeah, your minus one from reducing oh, yeah, from yeah, yeah. yeah the thing, oh, so that 11. would be eleven. So you seek cover. Well, seek cover. cover. That's the one. I you mean. must use your next oh, action to move away from danger and find a safe spot. <laughs> but oh, 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 you actually <laughs> lose a stress level, but everybody else we gains one. Gain it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you lose again, but everybody else gets the one they lost back. <laughs> Dang it! So he he, he so just broke. Y'all see him just there, like, thinking, curious. His eyes widen, and he just goes, No. Yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> just runs <laughs> and just starts running. I'm just looking to get behind cover somewhere. He freaks out for a moment. Like, I, I think he's got the right idea. <sighs> All right, so who's carrying your ass? <laughs> Who's carrying your hobble leg? Uh, who, who would? Because effectively, it? I was holding your wrists, but you guys all seem to be okay now. Well, well I, I still have to crawl. I can't. I yeah. Can't yeah. Uh, so I'm saying, do you want and, to and Singleton like, like shoulder her? That's that's what I was saying. Is somebody mm -hmm, gonna yeah. carry? Like, yeah, yeah. I'll her? say I'll say she can keep up if she's leaning on someone's shoulder. Okay. Yeah, I'll all shoulder right. her. So Singleton I'll, takes her up. I'll hold the back of the group. All right. So you are beside that armory, but you did just hear this place hum to life a bit. You reckon there's more out there, and you don't know that they might, it, whether or not they might be closing fast. But whatever is happening here, you get the sense that this place is now on alert. And clock is ticking. What are you guys going to do next? Okay, I think so we should stop in the armory, guys. What was that? I, I was going to say I think we should stop in the armory, get ammo. Miss Triggerfinger over here. Wasting all our ammo. I was trying to protect us. We didn't need to spend all the ammo. What are we supposed to do now? I, all right, I then let's go to the armory. Me. We we need let's 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 get to the armory. Let's just get get whatever ammo we can. But the if we see those things, we need to we need to run. I I just we we we've we haven't seen everything that this thing can do. All right, quick, then get get your get your ammo. We need to leave. We need to get to the med lab. Yeah yeah. All right. So you rush into the southwest corner where you find the armory with charts and rosters pinned on the walls. The armory door, however, is heavy. Only the admin and security have keys and they are missing. You'll have to try and break into this if you want to uh, find entry. Um, do we have any weapons that we can just shoot the door <laughs> down? Like, is this a, yeah, does anybody a, have any weapons remaining? Weapon? Is this a fortified door, or is this a... Um, yeah, it's a like heavy steel it? door. Um, you, you, you could damage it enough to break it down if you want to try. It's pretty hefty. I, have a, I do have a bolt gun with armor piercing. Oh. I also have a bolt gun. I have a cutting torch. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That might be the best bet, honestly. I was going to say, the cutting torch is a tool that would be pretty ideal for this situation. I would actually go as far as to say it's so ideal that I would allow you. I'll say it will take the whole turn, the good few minutes, but you could break in without having to make a roll with the cutting torch. However, you will have to make okay. a supply roll afterwards. I, uh... I, I look at, uh... Look at the group, 
and say, just give me the gun back. You guys head to the med lab. I'll cut open this door and I'll meet up with you guys. I don't know if we should put up anything. You... It's going to take me a bit of time to cut in here. It's best you guys make it to the med lab before what's her face dies. And I'm not talking about you, McGuire. I just don't like you. Hirsch. <laughs> this is the hardest I've ever seen you work. Are we safe enough for that to be considered banter? <laughs> I will. Hmm. Okay. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So okay. everybody reduces their stress by one. However, that does take a oh, bit please. of time. Uh, it's I think that's also two. supposed to take the turn. Banter does two, two stress relief. Well, that's only. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Banter. Yeah. Is that a is that a talent? It's a talent. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see how exactly the it words it. Yeah. Uh, between fights, you release tension. Your stress levels. Yeah, so it drops two steps instead of one for every turn spent in a safe place. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So out in this hall, you're not necessarily in a safe place, I would say, and you would have okay, to spend the whole okay. turn there. That'll be once we get to the Yeah, so if you guys rest in a safe place, every turn that you spend resting in a safe place, you could reduce your stress by one. But with Hirsch, if he's bantering all the while, then you reduce it by two instead. That's so cool. <laughs> all right, so yeah, yeah let's, let's go to the med lab. And I'll banter you guys there. <laughs> but Hirsch is staying behind for now to open up yeah. this door to save you guys some time. So he sits there, gets out the blowtorch, and shh, begins carving through. The rest of you move your way down to E2. You know that this is the area of uh, featuring the command, medical, and morgue areas. The command center takes up the upper floor of E Block. It consists of the command room, which you guys know as Ops. Uh, the assistant operations manager Lidecker's office, the med lab, and the morgue. Are you guys just beelining it for the med lab? Yeah. So in, in my condition, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holroyd's Holroyd's gonna remain in the hall for now. All right. He's so gonna... you said, did you did you give me that rifle as well? Uh, sure. Okay. All right. So Holroyd, you remain back with Hirsch. The rest of you run ahead to the med lab. You enter a chamber consisting of an examination room and a quarantine booth, which is locked uh, from the outside, but has a viewing window as well as an intercom. But this whole place is in shambles. Empty cabinets flung open and overturned in the mad scramble for medical supplies. Through the quarantine booth window, though, you do see a figure trapped inside middle-aged woman with big glasses and short brown hair, wearing a lab coat with the Weyland yutani logo branded on the shoulders. Uh, McQueer, you would recognize this as Dr. Kamiski. She appears to be trapped inside. And along with her, you see the dead body of a man on an examination table, a specimen tube with a live face hugger inside, and a dead yeah. face hugger on the floor. And Dr. Kamiski is leaning against the viewing window, old tear tracks on her cheeks. Kamiski? <laughs> she just seems to buzz to life as she notices you and turns back to face the window. She's like, ah, oh, oh, please, please. Oh, um, just get me out of here, please. Please, just, please, please let me out. And she's begins sobbing and tears running down her face. Is there a way to open the... Um... Uh, what, do you, what do you call that? The... The quarantine area? So, looking at this quarantine area, uh, there does seem to be a door there that cannot be opened from the inside or out, but there is a terminal beside it that 
seems to interface with it. <clears throat> I can, uh, I can, uh, go to that. Or see, cause there's no way to go in. So we see a terminal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're going to have Sid go over to the terminal and start just kind of looking through it, seeing what we can, what we can do. All right. That will require a contact roll in order to attempt to bypass. Perfect. Kamiski? What happened to that guy? What? What? And she looks over at the table. Really? Oof. Got stress, though, still incoming. There we go. All right. So as you bust open the panel and get into the wiring sig, uh, McWeir, you, uh, you ask her that question. She looks over to the examination table and she just says, hey, hey, hey. she just seems to be in an almost state of shock, but she calms herself enough to say... Uh, I will heal out here if I have to. His name, his name was Michael, Michael Drapers. He's dead. I killed him to spare him a terrible fate. What? What terrible fate? Did you did is worth killing him? <sighs> and looking at that man on the examination table, and lo seeing uh, the more of those face hugger creatures along the ground, she kind of points to one of them and says, "These things, they, 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 they impregnate you." There's something far worse that comes out of them. And he was impregnated? I'm sorry, impregnate? Yeah, these these creepy crawly creatures. They latch onto you. They put something inside of you and it comes out later. Um, with that success, does the door open or... So with uh, the success of Sig, you get into that wiring, a bead of sweat on your brow from all the stress that has built up over this time, and you are able to reroute the wiring in such a way as to send a positive signal that bypasses the quarantine lock. The door is opened. Um, the crew's going to level her uh, bolt gun at Kamiski. Are you, are you impregnated? What? What? What are you talking about? She kind of puts her I hands up, low at the bolt gun leveled her, at her as you enter the room. I see two of these things in this room. One of them's dead, and we have a dead man on the table, and one of them looks to be alive in a jar. Are you impregnated? I, 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 she just kind of stutters for a bit. Make a God, manipulation roll. I am this. Everybody is dead. I am the senior officer on this station. If you do not answer me, I will have to include this in my report. I'm going to pull right. Ooh, what does that do? Um, I can roll command versus manipulation. If I succeed, they must follow the order. And um, she has to tell me. And uh, my stress level increases by one. Ooh, okay. So I will say... So that's uh, command versus manipulation. So it's contested. Yes. yes. So go ahead and roll for command. I'll have her roll for manipulation. Command eight plus one, two, three, four. And manipulation is an empathy roll, I believe. Yeah. What's your stress? Oh. Oh, you kind of got cut off there, but I think you just screamed. <laughs> oh, I panic. Oh, there, that's the, that's the, oh, that one was the panic. I thought that was your, your base dice. Yeah. So you do succeed, but let's see how she rolls. Oof. It's actually, it's a tie there. You have an equal number of successes. So I'll say both re-roll your so, base. Base? Okay. Uh-huh. But we'll see how you panic. Is there a way to this. help with this at all? 
I'll say this since this happened very suddenly. Let's see. What is that? My base uh, is. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, that's a lot of oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You way outrank that. Um, so go ahead and roll for panic real quick before she gives yep. her response. And my stress just went up. <laughs> Wait, why'd your stress go up? Because uh, if I pull rank, it, my stress level goes up by one. Oh, no. Ten. All right, ten. You are frozen by fear or stress for one round, losing your next slow action. Your oh, stress level good. and the stress level of everyone else increases by one. Oh my god, what's so oh stress? <laughs> you guys are very stressed. <laughs> she has to answer me truthfully. But she does have she to answer you. And so, as you are sitting there, not even shaking, just frozen, perfectly still, you see her with her hands up in the air, just start sobbing even harder. It's like, I, 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 it's, I can't, I can't, it, 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 yeah, the, 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 one of them got to me. I, I just, I, I woke up in here. I, I didn't know what to do. God. Ah! And McGuire just starts screaming in in place. And she's going to do that for a full round. <laughs> <laughs> McGuire just continues to scream. And Singleton's just going to try and comfort her like, hey, hey, hey calm down. Also, Hirsch is outside of the room, so he actually doesn't gain that stress level. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> Hirsch and I'm Hirsch. Yeah, yeah. I'm with also, Hirsch. that's true. Yeah, both of you. Uh, also worth noting, everyone else in the room, after hearing her ad admit to having been face hugged, also gain a stress level. Oh. All of you again. Oh, oh no, my God. <laughs> no, yeah, these oh, these I'm gonna die from these from scenarios. Christmas. These scenarios right. are brutal. <laughs> Hmm. Don't worry, guys. I'm just cutting a hole in the door. <laughs> Stress in here. A little bit of sweat. Oh, I'm loving this. Oh, man. As, as 10 xenomorphs pop out of the hallway. <laughs> Please. Oh. I don't, no, no, no. Look, look. You need to take me with you. We could, we could get off site. We could get... We could get help. So Sig... Sig is just... Like out, you know, after the door, after hearing all that, then just here's you to take me out. Sings just like you have one of those things inside of you, and you just said that it comes out of you. If we take you with us, that is gonna be. You're going with to us. put us all at risk. The G only. She grips mm -hmm. the lanyard around her neck and says, "Look, I got it. I have the the one key card to that shuttle. If if you don't Did have Reynolds, that Reynolds key card didn't work. You didn't mention that, but she says, "This is you're coming here from Reynolds' office. I'm assuming you need this." We need it. I, I can get us out of here. I have. I'm not good at lying, guys. We <laughs> were coming down here to check on you because you asked for our help. The other key card works. We can just leave you here. Make a manipulation roll. I'm so glad I didn't do that because I have a minus because of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> that would be more manipulative. <laughs> <laughs> Who even is that? <laughs> Stress. 
Yo, nerd! One, two, three, four. Alright, let's see. Yo, oh, nerd! Push! Oh. Oh. Uh. Well, you can't push if you roll a panic, actually. Oh. You, you panic? Oh. 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 Okay. So, well. instead, I'm gonna need you to roll for panic. Damn. Okay, you're fine. Okay, you're good. fine on panic. You keep it together. Cool. You keep your cool, but she seems unmoved. She's still gripping onto the end of that lanyard, just like... No, 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 that can't be right. I know you lot. You need this. We need to get out of here. There's, a, there's, there's more... There's more I know. I know what's aboard that shuttle. What's aboard that shuttle? You have to give me your word that you're taking me along. McGreer still has the uh, bolt gun leveled at her. It's just... If you give us that key card, I will consider it. Make a manipulation roll yourself. Oh boy, this is getting intense. Meanwhile, Stress. boy. Yeah, meanwhile. Boy, they're, <laughs> they're just, yeah, they're just shooting. <laughs> That's higher than my actual roll. Your stress is higher than your actual roll? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, here it comes. One success. Oh. One oh. success. And not a panic at all. Not a Get single right. panic, too. Oh, with all those stress dice. All right. Oh so, my God, that's a lot of dice. You say that with as much conviction as you can muster. And she looks you in the eyes. And pulls the lanyard off from around her neck. And hesitantly hangs it forward in front of her. Gripped in a fist. Sig, can you... Yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, that's a sick. That's fake. Because you're holding sig. me up. I got, I'm got. i going to fall over here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sig. Sig. sig walks over. And just takes it. Your word. I'm only as good as my word. I will consider it. Right now, we just need to make it to the shuttle first. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's get to the shuttle. Alright. And uh, with, uh. You said there was a live face hugger in a tube? Uh, yeah. Was, mm -hmm. there, there is a test tube that seems to have a live face hugger contained within it. Like, we're talking, like, big test tube? Yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> big, big enough to contain it, yeah. This glass guess, uh, sort like of... Mason jar. Yeah, this glass cylinder that it it is, that with a cap on top that seems to have it trapped inside. Okay, I, was, I, I wasn't sure if it was, like, one of them, like, portable ones. Uh... I mean, it's only a bit larger than the facehugger itself, which is pretty tiny. Sig just kind of walks over to it. Hmm. You could see him just kind of staring at this for a moment, just again, lost in thought. Tig. Dr. Comiskey is looking at you as well. You have the badge. Let's go. I know I have the badge. But... Maybe but we can what? take one of these. No. I, 
I don't know what the company wants with those things, but they've been nothing but trouble. All of this has been because wants. of them. Yeah. She points to these series of vials that are along one of the laboratory tables. Uh, or rather, small canisters that are there, each lit with a small blue light along their side. Those are hypercoolant sprays. The science team has been using them to keep eggs in a dormant state for transport. There are dormant eggs on that shuttle. But it's okay, they're... They've been... They've been cooled. They should be completely dormant. In a sort of stasis. Did the company bring those here? No. These are here on the planet. So the company's have... harvesting these? Why do you think they want to make a colony in a place like this? It's a, they invested a lot of money to make this place happen. I'm pretty sure they knew this was here. And they've been using this colony to get close to it. So knowing that there's live, it seems like there's live specimens on the ship. Sig just looks at the looks at the tube and is just all right. All right. This this will stay here then. The rest of you moving on. So Yeah, I don't know if we could wait. I think we just have to go. Yeah, All right. Have, yeah, yeah. It's just time to go. Oh, wait. Uh we're in the we're in the med lab real quick. Well, we're in the med lab real quick, right? Like, yeah, are you guys going to take a turn to want to take make, a turn sort of make yeah. Dying? Kind of make camp here, try and make this place as secure as possible. And take a few minutes. And wait for... Wait yeah, for, wait for uh, Hirsch, Hirsch, yeah. Hirsch and Holroyd in here. And in that time, let's get you out of dying. All right. Yeah, that's the, right. You can make that uh, medical aid roll during this. But first, let's cut back to Hirsch and Holroyd, who are back right. and the, uh, in the other area. While that whole conversation <laughs> took place... By the end of that scene, Hirsch and Holroyd will have finished cutting it through the armory door. Go ahead and make a supply roll, Hirsch, for your... Uh, and how, how exactly does this work? I was trying to look it up with the rule book, but I couldn't... Uh, it it's the... Uh, what? How much supply does it have? Three. So roll three d6s. Any ones will lower it by one. Okay. Nope, good. still good. Your torch is is still pretty functional. So you cut open enough to basically reach your arm in and hit a switch on the other side. The door unlocks and you're able to simply push your way in. You enter the armory. Inside, you find what looks to be a number of weapon racks. There... And you've seen this area before, Hirsch. Again, you like to clean around here. You have a buddy, your buddy Alex in security always let you in and let you take a look around, let you reminisce about the good old days. But you would recognize that this area isn't as well stocked as it used to be. 
Uh, however, there there is still a few things that remain. There's one Armat Model 37A2 pump action shotgun, as well as a 357 Magnum revolver with two reloads each that are all that remain. So you got a shotgun and a Magnum, both with two reloads. Oh, uh, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and just grab them for now. All right, so you could look those up in the gear section. Yeah, yeah that's what I was gonna do when we progress forward. Mm-hmm. So do you regroup with the others now? Yeah, as soon as I open the bag up, oh, I thought there was gonna be more in there. Polaroid's waiting outside, just gun at the ready. All right. So, the two of you regroup back at the medical area. And all of you take a turn to regather your senses and have a moment of calm in as much safety as you feel you can have in a moment like this. You seem to be in the clear for now. However, you don't know how much longer this is this will last. So, during that turn, you said Sig was going to try and apply some medical aid to McWeir to get her out of dying? <clears throat> yep. So, so Sig's like, Singleton, I'm going to need you to <clears throat> put uh, McWeir right there. I'm going to start working on whatever I can to help that uh, leg. Oh, it burns. I know. And uh, once once McWeir's on the ground, just starts to with the med kit and whatever other supplies are around within med lab or whatever little is left. Yeah, I was gonna say, given that you're in a med lab, I will give you a uh, you have access to the best equipment that you'll have possible to make this happen. I'll give you an additional plus one from the med lab. Oh, sweet. So, so gonna, actually, that negates the minus the minus one. one yeah, from how Ooh. from how severe the injury is. So there you go. So roll your medical aid, and you said you're using the med kit. Five, six, yeah. So four, so that's five, another six, plus five. two on top of that. So actually, because that negated it out, I won't actually get the benefit of the plus one that's yeah. there. Yeah, but you do get okay, the plus yeah, two the from the med kit. Cool. If you're using, if you're expending its one use. That's crazy. <laughs> oh. Here comes the stress. One six eight. Hey, Oof. you know what? That's uh, that's all you need. So oh, need. you. Attempt, you gather your supplies from the surrounding med lab and uh, apply a combination of medicinal fluids as well as some dry powders that are basically a, um, a base type substance that will negate the acid burn to a pretty good amount as well as some balms that you can apply to the wound to stop the excess uh, bleeding and any infection that might be happening there uh, from this pretty severe wound but it's pretty sickening you've never seen an injury this bad up in person and mm -hmm. there's a moment where you realize how you're making contact with raw exposed bone that causes you to get sent into a panic so go ahead and make your roll yeah so you are frozen by fear Everybody gains a stress level because everybody's in this room. Oh, no. <laughs> oh do we all make it down there now? Inc yeah, you got a sense. Yeah, you guys walk in. Just you guys to hear? <laughs> yeah, just to see. Uh, Sig so... frozen and just staring catatonically at this yeah. nasty leg. Uh, yeah, you included Sig as well as everybody else gain a stress level. So like. So, like, yeah, definitely, it's, like, as, as everything's working and he's, like, you know, the numbing is in and all that other stuff is there, he's just, you just see him just stare off. Like, he just loses focus because his mind is going, 
this is not what I signed up for. I didn't. It, this is disturbed. What the hell? Now you Eddie's see why I was scared. <laughs> Everybody who sees my leg banter? is just frozen. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Your leg just causes people to stop in their tracks. Is it that bad? Uh, it's, it's pretty bad. It's almost as bad as your personality. Holroyd just looks forward. <laughs> I've, I've never. This, this is bad. Uh, yeah, you'll be the... fine, Sig. You'll be fine. Oh, God. Now is not the time for petty insults. Oh, well, at least he's not the ugliest person in the room now. No offense, Singleton. <laughs> I don't know whether he just called me or you ugly. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really confused. Sig, snap out of it. Kevin. Oh, it's only scary for the first time you do it. Don't worry. When I've seen it, I, I, I pretty much froze in place too. <laughs> so with, with that brief, brief giggle, as you guys take this turn within the med lab, Y'all have enough of a safe place rest in order to reduce your stress by one, with Hirsch's banter by another one. Let's go! Yeah! Get that de-stress. So, Hold two, on, minus two talk. stress to everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Back at seven. <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be in this predicament right now if it wasn't McWeer losing the leg. We wouldn't be in this position if Holroyd hadn't alerted those creatures. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you would have ran. At least we're all alive. What are we even doing Says here? Says you. <sighs> yeah. That's... Oh, by the way, Holroyd Hirsch. That's. Which one was that? C not Reynolds. Um, Comiskey. Cashmere. Yeah. <laughs> Comiskey. That, that's Comiskey. <laughs> Comiskey is pregnant. Oh, congratulations. Well, With one of those things that we just fought earlier. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Afraid not. Nope. Dr. Comiskey is just in the corner, just kind of timidly looking down. What's that mean? Like nine months? What do we got? I don't. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's uh, good enough news to leave you behind. That's cool with me. Ulroyd's fist. No, 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 no. You gave me your word. Uh, you I have my you shit. <laughs> 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 like you have you here. have my word. And I said I consider it. So what what kind of timeline are we looking at? We can't say. Why? But can like, Someone. do you mean time, like, for the pregnancy? <laughs> but yeah, like, she's pregnant. Yeah. With an alien baby. How long that gonna take? Can't say, but considering how bad the outbreak got from the little time we were gone, I don't think it's nine pregnant? months. Holdroid, Holdroid quickly walks up to, up to Comiskey, and he, ra and he calmly wraps a hand around her neck. Wait, like to jerk her oh, or like to hug her? Oh, she's pregnant. Wait, man. are we talking jerking or hugging? <laughs> like, <laughs> a choke. Just, <laughs> just a choke. <laughs> okay, so you're going to two hand choke her? I knew he couldn't be trusted. Holroyd? Hey, Milan, he's doing what's right. Holroyd. He will endanger all of you. That doesn't... Guys, like, she see, like, 
you see, like, Singleton kind of tense up. He's an android! And? He's an android sent by the company. He's a what? I'm sorry? Holroyd turns around. How did you know? I'm not an idiot. I am, then. <laughs> That's my line. No, seriously, out of character, how did you know? Uh, that's, that's an in-character question. You know. that, that's I, an in-character question. Oh my god, fine. He out of character, asked, I did. You have to ask that in character. Well, I did. And she did. She's right. I'm not an idiot. How close am I right now? <laughs> situation because I feel like an android about to throw me across the room. I mean, you all are <laughs> at different corners of the room, and with that, that was. Are, do you still have Doctor Comiskey in your grip? I do. Okay, she has a panicked look about her eye. I was just there questioning. That's that's Thanks. why I was saying. Uh, I was like you that. You're stress figuring out that this dude's a this dude's a synth. Android, etc. Like, I mean, isn't it common in this time and age? <laughs> not <laughs> necessarily. Not, no, not necessarily. Really. That's out of no, character. Well, I was asking that. So, with, it, 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 I mean, they are fairly common. Not fairly common for you not to know upon meeting them, and you have worked mm. with him for a while, and you didn't know. Damn, I am an idiot. <laughs> Sigs, her, stop him. What do you want me to do? It seems like you guys are the combat. Well, well, one of you guys are combat. <laughs> I, I'm trying to hold up the the queen. I'm what do you want up me to slowly, do? like, hey, and bro, Doctor Kamisi, nothing wrong to you. Doctor Kamisi echoes, just like, please, please, stop him. He's been sent by the company. I've already said more than I should. All right, what do you want? What, what does the company want? This android won't let any of us leave alive. If he, no, knowing what we know, lie. that's a lie. I mean, <laughs> her boy just had my back like... down the hallway. We good. <laughs> yeah, is there an insight for that? Yeah, the, the his that isn't necessarily <laughs> a role, but I suppose it could be contested manipulation. I'm just, I'm vibing with it. <laughs> we got a robot. Let's go. <laughs> the fact that he split up from us and then suddenly those things attacked us. I can't trust him. I haven't been able to trust him for a long time now. Yeah, I feel so, the same way about McGuire, but you don't see me leaving her behind. Yeah, but I'm a person. That's no. an android. And he saved my life. So when... So, so you're saying you're siding with the company? I'm saying I'm siding with homeboy being okay in my book. <laughs> So that's when something. he said, so when he said that's a lie, like that's a lie. Insight on that, you said it would be <laughs> contested. Yeah, I would say contested manipulation rolls. So, who was it? Well, who who is it that you're going against? Was that uh, 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 uh Holroyd? Yeah, when, when he contest- said that. Can I yeah. go against um, Kamiski? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. So you're you're well two pairs of contested manipulation. You know what? And I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a <laughs> think that Singleton's calling bullshit. This dude ain't an android. <laughs> 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 this, this, two successes for oh. Kamiski. Uh, he said manipulation. Uh huh. Right, hold on. I gotta count my stress again. That changed. We got ourselves an old-fashioned standoff here. <laughs> well, oh, there's an error. Uh-oh. To resolve the first roll, though, while we're waiting for your roll. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, I panic. You succeed, but you panic. But you actually don't succeed oh, more than her. You both succeed in panic. So... Wait, no, that yeah. Was, that's... Com- that's the uh, that top one was Kamiski? Yeah, yeah, the the 3D6 there. Okay. And then uh 
Well, then I guess Sig also has to roll panic know. dice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, okay, it makes okay. sense now! Oh my god, Horoids! Oh! oh. By the way, yeah. so, so, Sunny and Holroid. Holroid isn't entirely convincing, uh, Sig, given his role. However, with your uh, keen manipulative tendencies with your success there, you do get the sense that there is some urgency about him in the way he said that and the amount of restraint he's showing, but you're not quite sure what all that means. So it'll be on him to convince you any further. But... Well, uh, oh yeah, and let's go through the other one real quick. Yeah, and then uh, McWeird... Well, first off, roll for panic. panic. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are you guys are against me like this, but I... I, I, uh, I don't you know. Let explain. Her That's Olivia. good. All you're doing is trembling. That's yeah, good. Yeah, tremble. Okay. You, you, you got to tremble. Minus two agility. Just, I, got the, I got the shakes. You got the shakes, but uh, mm -hmm. you do not... Oh, well, I guess since she won the contest, so I guess her side would be... I, I believe, I believe yeah, you, 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 you believe that... You, you believe what's coming out of her mouth. Yeah, I believe she's, she's genuine. Mm-hmm. Thing, oh my gosh, thing is, I think... Uh, just let me explain. Use words. If he was an I'm android this whole here. time... Now look what he's doing. If you're, you... Can I add stress to myself just because my guy's stressing? Your best Dude, friend's now an android, stuff. actually. That's pretty... <laughs> my, best friend's the, my best friend isn't even the android. I just He saved my life. I owe him one. I'll say oh, from this whole man. situation, everybody gains a stress. Yeah. I mean, it's all compounded me. quite a bit. Oh, Except for Holroyd, of course, because you don't gain you stress. Dick. I was so confused about all your roles until. Ah! <laughs> See, I, me, out of character, oh. I knew all that. Like, I had the assumption out of character, but that's besides the point. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, so... I still want to play re regular, so. I was just like, okay, he's probably just adding stress into all of the into the role itself. Ah no! <laughs> I got please I got spoiled with that stuff. Please help me. He's you know gonna what? Die anyway. Holroyd. Holroyd. Holroyd decides to let go. Sig. Sig's like Holroyd. Let me explain. Why should we trust a company? Hold android? on. I just let go of her neck. Hold on. Just let Holroyd explain because there's something that I can tell there's something you're not saying. I don't know if you're genuine or not with this, but I want to hear it. I know. I know why those big wigs from the company came here. I believe. I think her name was Miranda. It was Admiral Reynolds. Miranda Reynolds, yeah. Yeah. And I, I knew about those, those monsters. I, I knew about everything. And the fact that this all happened, I'm a part of the company too. I, I feel guilty. You're this- a robot, you can't feel guilty. How do we know all this you're saying isn't just programmed? <sighs> okay, it, it, it's as it's as Kaminsky said. If I were here to kill you, I would have done it. Everything, like my friendship with 
Persia over there. That's real. That's real. I appreciate you. <laughs> I, uh, I, I start to pace and grab, uh, grab at my necklace. Dr. Comiskey backs up a bit since he's let go of her into one corner of the room. All I want to do is make sure everyone here gets out alive. I, I can't trust either of you. But her, she's a danger. She's dangerous. You said she was impregnated by one of those damn monsters. Anybody looking in her direction see that her hands I are am. now behind her back? I am definitely, definitely eyeballing her. Um, did she just like quickly slip her hands behind her back? Not quickly, but they kind of okay. gradually move there as she moved towards the wall. Okay. Ooh, actually, let me let me tell you something. Okay, uh, out of character question. Uh, so, Polaroid's an android, right? Would he have knowledge about what the these things turn into? Uh, would it have, trying like, to recall what exactly is on your thing? Oh, let me see. Would it, would it have been oh. given to him by the company or? Let's see. I will say, yeah, you do have some extra knowledge. Um, not a whole lot. Only the basics, but you do you do know about why the company is here and what they want. You don't have extensive knowledge about the xenomorph creature, but you know the basics. Um, real quick, with uh, Kam Kaminsky just sort of like moving back, just hands behind hands behind. Can I make an observation roll? to see if she's becoming a threat. Absolutely. Because as, as, they're, as they're talking, Sig's eyes are like observing the area. It's obviously because of how stress mm. the stress is too. And it's just focusing yeah. on her. Whew. Two successes. Yeah. Two Although let's see how the stress does. <laughs> So are there any stunts you could do with observation? I don't know. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> <laughs> Three times the panic. Don't worry about it. So the stunts that are there for that one are like getting getting to know, getting to answer, uh, or well, get to know the answer to one of the questions or whatever you can think of. Oh, um, yeah, you got a couple of extra questions. Oh, yep. for observation. Okay. Yep. So the main thing, so the main one that's there is, is she looking like she's becoming a threat? Okay. So, and also, is that the right number of stress? Or is that from after you lost and then gained some? That was after yeah, I okay. lost. Yeah, okay. So it seems like you've been floating out 40, 46 for a while, but I think it's been going up and down, and it just happens yep. to be that amount when you roll. Okay, yep. so first off, with that a successful observation, you do notice as she's backing into that corner that her hands are behind her back because she's reaching for a scalpel. Reaching for a scalpel. And... Well, actually, that that was going to be the second question for me. Um, like, what is she reaching for? <laughs> um, and do, 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 do. and I the object of her, uh, the object of her uh, potential rage is it 
it, it's looking like it's going to be Holroyd or is she looking at everyone? She seems like, backed into a corner here. You get the sense that with that observ extra success, she's not feeling very safe. And so she seems to be just trying to find a way to protect herself. But if this escalates any more, who knows what she might do. Cool. But let's see what that bandit girl is. <laughs> Yer. Oh, so you drop an item. Whether by stress, confusion, or the realization oh, that you're all going to die anyway, you drop a weapon or other important item, and your stress level increases by one. Um, I have... Yeah, oh, did you okay, have something in your knife. hand there? Oh, yeah. He, yep. <laughs> you're, you are armed with a knife, so that clatters to the floor as this whole, just inadvertently as this whole situation uh, seems to be escalating. You just kind of lose your grip. Everyone hears that clatter against the floor breaking the momentary silence. And as it does, you I hear... towards that direction. You see the knife at six feet. And then you all hear from the knife. corner of the room just a... <laughs> As Dr. Kamiski starts convulsing all of a sudden. Oh. I need to go now. Too late. It's, uh, it's due date. Suddenly, you see her chest expand outwards before <laughs> there's a spatter of blood as this little creature <laughs> emerges it door, from it. Door, a little door. pale thing. First off, this is everyone's first time seeing a chest burster. Everyone has to make an immediate panic roll. Oh, oh, panic roll. oh no! Yeah. Oh, I. Am. Except for yeah, except for um, the android. <laughs> I am. Uh, okay, I'm so it's an immediate. It's immediate a panic. Yeah, no more stress. Just immediate panic for everyone. In okay, reaction, so. in direct oh, reaction no. to this thing. You no, can't that, do anything. Higher. You won't be able to do anything to get out of this one at all. This is no, yeah, this is just just from witnessing the chest bursting event. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, I wasn't sure if signature. Oh my god, no, one. no! I just made everyone do another panic roll. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was. Let's see. Just, just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Uh, long as, but yeah, let's. Yeah! Oh, McWeird. Let's go! Drop another <laughs> item. <laughs> McWeird, you drop an item. What do you drop? Uh, well, McWeird drew, uh, did 10. It's actually the a 10. I have a plus leg. Oh, uh, you're frozen for a moment. You lose your next low action. Everyone's stress uh. level increases by one from McWeird. Uh, uh, it was freezing in let's place. Go. Singleton, 12. You let out a blood-curling scream for one whole round. You lose your next low action, also being kind of stuck in place. And your stress level is decreased by one, but everybody else is, uh, has to make an immediate panic roll. <laughs> uh, but first, let's resolve these other ones before yeah. Hirsch and Sig both have to drop something that they are holding. Well, or a weapon or other, rather, a weapon or other important item. I, I, I don't. I don't have anything else. I poop out a magnum. <laughs> you drop That's a magnum, magnum to the floor. Magnum just pops out my pocket. Was, oh. so, Everybody wait, make wait, another so panic this, roll. Uh, wait a minute. So the nine stacked on top of the nine that I already had before. So I'm feeling like death is death. Basically. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no. No. Oh, no. oh, that is as high as you could possibly roll. <laughs> Let's go. I don't remember what eight is, but it's a lot better than nine. Uh, All right. Any more out of Here down. we go. <laughs> Singleton. The career is in a bad way. Yeah. So. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to make the extra panic roll. You just, you're the one who screamed. So. You paused it. Yeah. You just, so, McQueer. You are catatonic. You collapse to the floor. You can't talk or move, and you're staring blankly into oblivion. Yeah, that's about right. 
Oh, this dress is a bitch. Am I still, like, kind of holding her on my shoulder? Like, she's, like, yeah. kind of... Oh, yeah, she's on your sword holder, so she just goes limp on your shoulder, and you are now bearing yeah, her faints. full weight. Yeah, she basically... She full-on faints. Full-on faints. Hirsch, you are trembling. Agility minus two for all agility oh, skills. Let's, let's go, baby. I got uh, that. Shake. Sig, you've got a nervous twitch. Your stress level and the stress level of everybody else also increases by one. Oh, I'm at oh, nine. My... <laughs> oh, oh. I'm at ten. Stress. Well, I'm gonna pick my knife back. I hope up. I've been calculating my stress right, because apparently I'm at eight. Can... And with that, the little chest Can... burster leaps out of her chest and <sighs> scurries, slithering forward. And dis can I reach down and grab it? Why? Are you gonna Why? try and grab it? I am going to reach down and grab it and pull out one of my blow torches, and I'm a close quarter combat blast this bitch. All right, give it a shot. I want to see. I want to see this roll with all the stress you just accumulated. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> all right, so I love this is... so much. I love this. Is, so much. I love how chaotic this is. This game. Fun. We got here by mechanics, you guys. <laughs> By mechanics. <laughs> so, eight <laughs> on the. I gotta rush okay. outside to get food real in All right. here. All right. I love being an One, so two, two, successes. two successes. Roll two successes. your roll your stress dice. Oh, I gotta count. I gotta count all this stress up. Uh, one, two, seven, seven stress. Uh, no. I see panic. Oh, I see success. Another, another panic, successes. another success. With three successes, you manage to go down and body slam this thing to stop it from getting away. And you just grab it in your thick sausage fingers and bring out your blowtorch and just torch the thing in the head. It lets out this high pitched, ear piercing squeal as it burns to death in your hands and it remains unmoving. But you need to make a panic roll. In and this I sudden slam it on movement. the ground like ah, <laughs> <laughs> still trembling from the shakes. Just ah. threw it on the ground. <laughs> roll your panic. Uh, I need to get the right. Hang on. Panic is. Oh, this was a good idea. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. Apparently, also, take oh. damage increases stress levels. So oh. You should have been a lot higher. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So, you just can't take it anymore. You must flee to a safe place and refuse to leave it. You won't attack anyone and won't attempt anything dangerous. You are not allowed to make a retreat roll if you have an enemy at engaged range when you flee. So, that doesn't apply. Your stress level is decreased by one, but every friendly character who sees you must make an immediate panic roll. Oh no! <laughs> I can't make shit. That is true. I'll say, yeah, McWeir is catatonic, so yeah. she is non-reactive to this. Sig, you are frozen uh. in fear. What is my stress? And also, stress your stress your stress level and everybody else's increases by one because of your free oh, your freezing in place. My stress back. 11. You must seek cover. You gotta find a safe spot. Uh, and your stress level is decreased by one, but everybody else's incre increases instead. I have a yeah. question. For, so for one round, can you I, must seek cover. Can I, can I bring I go McQueen with me? <laughs> All right. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Uh, but yeah. You can, I mean, you can still drag McQueer along, but I would say because of the fact that she's catatonic, you are now slowed. Okay, wait. It is a slow action now to move. Uh, can you have more than 10 stress level? <laughs> I do not see any, I have not noticed any indication that there's a limit. I'm not 100% sure, but I haven't noticed any. I'm at 12. Oh my God. Let me, let me check that. Can I, 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 I hear my way out of this room? <laughs> yeah, it's safe again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you Wait, the we nearest. The... No, we already got the key card. We need to go. We need... The, the nearest safe area would likely be that armory. So you just run back into there. Can I pick up my revolver on the way? <laughs> just like ah, ah. 
Grab the one that pooped out. Yeah, I would say, given that that was all kind of a continuous string of events, you would not be able to get the revolver okay. back. Because you, you, you just immediately go into a panic and flee, leaving the revolver behind, which you just dropped. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm just hauling ass. Uh huh. Running. All right, I'm fine with that. I am. Uh, I'm going to step away and go use the restroom real quick too, while we're all, right. all kind of taking break and figuring out where we're all at. Okay. Is there a way to to save McQueen from being in a catatonic state? Uh, you could stop someone's panic response with a uh, command roll, right? Yep. Command. Okay, I'm going to wait. Uh, because if it gives no limit for how long it lasts, they will remain yep, that way indefinitely until somebody snaps them out of it. I'll wait for my one panic round to go up in the, like, to go Are you also, like, so you're also? Yeah, she's I, also I'm, frozen. I can act normally after one round. Yeah. Okay. So, so she, she's she's trying to Swamp find cover, <laughs> and you're just dragging me along trying to find cover. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, after a moment of panicking, you do uh, just run out trying to find cover. It is worth noting with that blood-curdling scream, uh, followed by the scream of that uh, little chest burster and all the commotion that just happened. The noise around the facility seems to intensify. As you hear in the distance, lots of movement. But you can't attempt to Does... make your command if you would like to roleplay that out with McWeir. Okay. How are you trying to calm her down? Okay. <clears throat> so she kind of like she kind of leans down like props her against like a wall or something. It's just like okay, Mikui. I know you can probably hear me. We're going to get out of here, okay? Maybe not all of us, but we're going to get out of here. So I, I need you to to focus on my voice. You know, look up at me, face me. I, I can't drag you out here on my own. I, I need you to just try focus on me. The both of us can get out if I'm not gonna calm people down. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you, it turns into a ramble after a bit, but go ahead and make your roll to see what effect this rambling has. Because I am at Eight, seven, no, seven stress. Uh, so that's it's empathy. Empathy command, command yeah. I believe. Yeah. At least my like, nose doesn't affect that. I yeah. Feel like Holroyd just sitting in. The yeah, he's just sitting board. in yeah. the med lab, unsure of the what these humans are doing and why they're freaking out so much. <laughs> I think that, like practically everybody scrambled after this, right? He basically, yeah. Okay. Roll your stress. Here comes stress. Here comes the stress. I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. You I have a lot of stress. Uh, stress I don't have 12, but... <laughs> It'll be a miracle if I don't roll a panic thing right now. Here uh, comes the stress. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Wait, so what's that? Hold on. I haven't rolled stress in a bit. <clears throat> Oh, I see a one. Oh, oh I see a, couple a one. Of ones, but you do succeed. You do but succeed. I see a one. Uh, this speech rouses you back to your senses, McQueer. Just in time to see Singleton. <laughs> Roll for panic to see what she sees. Uh, what's a twelve? You oh, scream okay, your lungs out for and another I round. <laughs> Your stress level is decreased, and she has God, to make man. another panic roll. Guys, I'm rolling at 12 here. <laughs> You're about to go into a catatonic state again. If you I don't think anything can... <laughs> oh my uh, you're God! You're catatonic <laughs> again. So you have this whole speech, it breaks down into rambling before breaking down into just a full-on anxiety attack moment where like, you just scream your lungs out 
And I feel like <laughs> like McQueer doesn't even budge. Like it's like she does like like she doesn't actually change her expression, and that's what causes her to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> What chaos have I just come back to? <laughs> I, oh my god. So Singleton... Right, so she got me out of... Yeah, use the uh, command roll to end her catatonic state. To end uh, McWeir's catatonic state. But rolled panic on that roll and screamed again and sent her back into catatonic from the screen. <laughs> Help me. Also worth noting, the guy with the guns is in an indefinite panic for fleeing, which means somebody would have to command him in order to get him to leave. Wow. Also, I mentioned that with the first scream, you guys started to hear some noise of scattering throughout the facility. No. The second scream, those noises seem to be getting closer, like a homing beacon to your location. Does anybody have a m motion sensor? Mm. <laughs> uh, is there... Oh, I have a motion tracker. Is that a motion sensor? Yeah, motion tracker. You can use it. Mm. How do I use it? So, uh, I believe you have to make a supply roll to see if it uses any more power. Um, but I believe you could just see any movement in whatever direction you point it when you use it. Uh, What's a supply roll? So, we'll get to that in a sec. That's what Hirsch had to do earlier with his blowtorch. Uh, let me see if I could find a motion tracker in here. That's under gear, I imagine. Yeah, it is under gear. Maintenance. Motion tracker. Uh, yeah, it's sensor range is long within close quarters, extreme and open terrain. So yeah, you would have up to long range, which is pretty much this entire facility. Yeah, and you just have to make... Uh... So yeah, just out to its sensor range. So you... Take the your motion tracker, aim it around, uh, and you find, yeah, within long range, it's pretty much everything. Uh, you see some pings of movement as the waves go out from this ultrasonic sensor. Bing, bing. With each ping. Oh, we need to go. It looks like in this direction. There looks to be movement that pings and then pings in this direction. Similarly, pings, pings. And then even more on the below levels. There are a lot of these creatures around and you saw what it took to take care of one of them. Guys, we... We need to move. <clears throat> I don't even know if moving is going to work at this point. They're everywhere. Okay, uh, so Holroyd's thinking, <clears throat> where exactly is this vehicle, this, uh, this, uh, ship? The this shuttle, shuttle is in air traffic control, which is this tower outside the walls. Oh, you guys need shit. to get outside of the facility and get to the top of it there. Okay. Does it look like there's a clear path? Uh, like, you, like looking at the motion sensor. Does it look like there's any way we can go that seems like it would avoid any I'll of like, the motion blips? Make an observation roll to determine the best route. Can I help uh, with that? I've got a minus to my observation because of my nose. I'll say, yeah, you. <laughs> I'll say if you're looking at, if you're next to her, looking at her, uh, if you come up next to her, looking at her motion tracker, then you can also, yes, try and uh, figure that out and uh, apply your knowledge of the facility. So yeah, that will yep. negate that minus. 
and you'll Guys. just have to roll normally. I'll do that. I'll do Guys, that. I have a one d six. Oh, should Sig roll instead? Oh, maybe or... a two d a two a two d six. I guess technically, if that negates my minus one. I was gonna say, does Sig have a better uh, roll for observation? Well, Sig... Yeah, it's six. Oh yeah, so maybe you should help Sig instead. <laughs> But yeah, either yeah. way, one of you gets a plus one and roll for observation. Oh, cool. That'll bring it up to a seven. <clears throat> Let's go. Six two Six successes. successes. Hey, guys. But here Hold comes on. the stress. Oh, also, hey, single guys, thing. You're going uh, to laugh. What's the supply rating on your device? On your motion tracker? Oh, uh. You know, or? Power supply? It's five. Okay, so roll 5d6 really quick. As Sig, you roll for your uh, stress dice. Oh, I'll do that. In yeah. A here. I'm also back, by the way. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I need to roll for my supply from whenever I did laser blast that thingy too. That is true. Yeah, go ahead and roll that as well. So both of you make supply rolls. Singleton with your 5d6. Oh, wait, I didn't have the greater than. I got a success. I don't know. Well, you're only looking for failures here, which you got, you got one. one of those. So uh, the, your supply decreases by one. Okay. Uh, oh, my your supply God. decreases oh, by oh, two. Oh, <laughs> no. So you only got one use left of that, or possibly one use. Yeah. My laser blaster. It could last right, a so while. Guys, it could. And <laughs> I will, right if, now, if you guys missed it, I was going to say Singleton did scream again. And the first scream seemed to be bringing activity in your direction. The second scream has intensified it. And she looked through her motion tracker and saw that two pings on your floor coming in your direction and even more on the lower floor. But right now, Sig, first, let's see Let's Wait. see what your stress dice result in is making an observation roll to try and determine an optimal path to the shuttle. Now, so are you guys laugh. still are you guys still on the E block? Yep. Yeah, so we're still I'm here. safe from hearing the screams and stuff because I'm over here in the uh, armory. I was gonna say, yeah, you're like closed in there. I'll say, yeah, you're good for the screams. You're far enough away, and plus, you're just looking to yeah. stay there. Yeah. But you do have Someone's to roll there. for panic. You're you got oh, the wait. trembles. Yeah. Oh wait, no, what was that? Ninety six. Oh or? no, sorry, nine. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be so two more from that. You're frozen for a round. Your, but your stress level and the stress level of everyone else here. So that basically just <laughs> it excludes Hirsch, increases by one. All right. Well, but you freeze for a moment. Cool. And by the time you come to your senses again, you realize from that observation, it looks like the north airlock is your best bet. If you could get, so, yeah, yeah. get down to the north airlock, you, th you feel like... Uh, looking at that motion tracking data, they're coming at you from the sides, and it looks like below, on the floor below, that's even also the case. So if you could get to a ladder and head northward, you could get out the north airlock, out the north gate, and go around the outer wall to air traffic control. But you don't get the sense that these things are going to slow down, which means as you guys are moving, you're not going to be able to stop moving. So yeah, if you so, make essentially, it there. so essentially... So essentially... He he relays all of that, and it's just if we're gonna, if we're gonna go, we need to go now, and not stop. We continue. We go. No looking back. No nothing. Sig, help me. Help me with McQueer. Okay. What do you want me to do? Pick up her other side. All right. What about? <sighs> What about Hirsch? What can we do? I want to get him, but I'm I'm not good at 
commanding, speaking, all that other stuff. I'm like, man, we're here. I, I don't know what to do. And these things are coming fast. Listen. We're both. If you want to try help him, then help him. We're both his friends. Well, we don't have a choice anymore. We're both his friends, and I want to see him get out of here, too. I don't want to leave him behind, but is there any... I'm more expendable than you. Leave him to me. All right. Remember, just when you you can get him out, head north. Just keep on going. Right. All right. So, Singleton, Sig... McWeir, I'll start heading north, trying to make your way down. Yep. All right, so you all take off. Uh, between the two of you hoisting up Singleton, I'll say you have a semblance of moderate regular movement, um, even if you do have to drag her along. Uh, you recognize that when you get to the ladder, it's going to get a little difficult, but you keep moving as fast as you can. Uh, Holroyd, they go past the armory where you know Hirsch is holed up. You take a moment to speak to him? Yes. What do you say to Hirsch through the door? <sighs> okay, um... I say to... I say to Hirsch, I say... Hirsch, they're coming. We need to leave. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure you get out of here alive. Whether it mean I stay behind and fend them off, or... Yeah, whether it means that or whatever it takes. But preferably not. But we need to get moving, man. We need to get moving, and we need to do it right now. And make your command roll. Okay. I'm just mumbling in the corner. Okay. <laughs> I only have a 3d6. I only have a 3d6. Oh, boy. <laughs> the, odds, the odds are not looking well for you. Imagine if they're all three successes. If you don't get a success, you will not want to leave oh! here. Okay, that was what you needed. Man! <laughs> Hirsch, you're back to your senses. You realize that there is some logic to what this android is saying, and you realize it is time to go. You, uh, your panic has ended. We need to get out of here. I can't give you a beer if we're not alive. My, my, my man. <laughs> Did you see me kill that thing with a blowtorch? <laughs> <laughs> it scared me a bit, but I did it. Pretty sick. <laughs> Pretty sick. All right. So, Hirsch, you can you can leave the armory if you so choose. Yes. <laughs> 100%. I'm running. Or All a goblin right. or whatever I need to do. I'm... I'm quickly following behind the rest of the group. All right. So this is all going to be happening pretty fast. You all are beelining it to air traffic control. It's outside the North Shield wall of the colony. You know, it's a big tower out there, the ATCC building uh, with a comms array as well as a landing pad attached to it. So. And of course, there's that Locksmart XL Star Cub resting on the far side of the landing pad with a 20 person capacity. So, the other group, Singleton, Sig, McWeir, you two are well ahead of the pack and you make it all the way over to A block and down to A1 even. Uh, however, oh, no. these xenomorphs are pretty, pretty quick. Um, they are technically faster than you guys, even when you're not carrying an injured person. So, I will say 
you guys are gonna somebody within your group is going to have to make a roll to determine how you want to try and subvert whether moving quietly or trying to close off paths you guys have to do something otherwise one is going to catch up with you okay what can we do so I hand uh Holroyd the rifle again and say you know what you were pretty good with a shot thing is, if we it. cut off a path, then we might also cut up a cut off a path for Holroyd and Hirsch. Well, we're with you though. No, but you guys are behind. Up. But yeah, you know, won't be able to catch we're, up. We're going to be able to catch. Oh, yeah. I just yeah, you would be able to catch up. You're eventually. basically you are going to catch up eventually. But the question okay. is whether they modify the terrain for you guys. So that or we sneak. Was Sig trembling? That's a good question. Somebody I think Sig's last thing was trembling. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. So he would have a minus two on mobility. Why am I muted? Okay, <laughs> literally, no, you're talking back. the whole time. Oh. It wasn't because it, it it wasn't because I had to increase it by two because I forgot that it's nine. So. I was you were frozen in place. Time. Right, yeah. yeah, you were frozen oh, instead. Okay. That's right, okay. yeah. Okay. Instead of the trembling. Yeah, I'm so. not trembling. I um, think, unless we want to risk our two party members, which I mean, that's, you know, that's up to you guys. <laughs> Who has the key card, by the way? Sig. I think Sig McQueen does. Has, yeah. Oh, Sig. Sig has Sig. it, yeah. I took it. Okay. Um, I think we can go through and... Uh, we would have to hide. We would have to stealth if we wanted to do this. Um, cause I don't, Sig wouldn't want to cut off their route because he, he did say everyone go north. Okay. But you all are sticking together though, right? Yes. Which means the person with the lowest mobility will have to make the roll. Uh, so and you guys five. can help which will add plus two to that person since there's only two others. Mine's so, seven. Plus two, plus one. Minus six. So yours is the lowest. Yep. Yeah. So I guess uh, So then, since you're the lowest conscious person, you will be determining the value of the roll, but this will be directly contested by... And I'll help you. A... Now would be a terrible time scout. to get the scream panic roll. It would be a terrible time, wouldn't it? Wait, are you guys out of the building now? Not yet. This is them heading towards okay. the north okay. airlock in block A. Oh, okay. We're about so to leave I... right now in block a, in the uh, first floor. Or rather, a drone. It will be a drone that's looking for looking for you all. So what am I? What am I contested against? Uh, so you need a roll for mobility with all your stress, and I'm it's gonna roll 76. observation. Okay. Ooh. No, that's one success. One success. You just have to beat one success. Oh, that's one success. One and one. So the stress dice could be the right. determining factor here. So, how many stress dice do you have? You're gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a success, but there's a panic. So, you succeed in the stealthing aspect, but whatever the panic might be could throw a wrench in the works. Let's see. Please just shake. Please get, just shake. Please don't please scream. Shake. If I get a two. I'd prefer you go catatonic one. over screaming. Yeah, me too. Catatonic. Oh, you know, it's catatonic. Oh, <laughs> you are catatonic. So, so but, but, but I'm not. It doesn't give away our position. It doesn't. But you. Okay. So here's what happens. You all are dragging McWeer along, who is simply catatonic and staring off into space. Completely unresponsive. Sig and Singleton, you're dragging her along. 
carefully as best you can, trying to move quietly. You hear the steps coming from the corridors to your sides, and you duck into recesses as you see the shadow of one of those things, that xenomorph, move across one of the halls, looking around before moving slightly along. You pause there for a moment, and Singleton, as you try to move on, you look back at Sig, who's also just staring blankly and collapsed to the floor. You can't drag two people. Oh, shit. (laughs) And I can't try to save someone, because if I roll a 15, then we're all catatonic. Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you if you end up panicking, there is a chance of that. So, like, where at are they located now? Like, they are now room or? in A one. Oh, in A one, and where they're where just in the room before get? the north airlock. They have gotten into a little bit of a cubby where they were hidden for a moment. I would say Holroyd and Hirsch are about in B one on their way, following up okay. that. Uh, that corridor. Okay, so she's gonna take the key card. Uh, the problem is, my own morals are conflicting with my character's mor- morals. What is? What are you gonna do? Add a tonic. Uh, what is Singleton gonna do? You see a shadow in the hall ahead. Looks like the drone might be doubling back. You're not sure. Uh, uh, I hate this. Um, oh no. <laughs> Can um, we progress forward while this is still being debated on what's yeah, going on? Yeah, as she's sitting and waiting, Hirsch and Holroyd are catching up pretty swiftly. Uh, two able-bodied figures moving at full speed. However, as you all are moving along, since you fell behind a bit, there are more xenomorphs back in this area that will be able to intercept you. Wait, which area? Uh, the area that you all are coming through as you move through this corridor. Oh, they're in this post-room corridor? Not that you see immediately. Yeah. Okay. But as you're moving through, one comes out from one of these side rooms and intercepts the two of you. I'm going to roll to see who it gets. It's going for Holroyd. Xenomorph grabs Holroyd, its inner jaw is poised to strike. Let's see if it gets the grab. Yep, those are two successes. You are grabbed, and you would need to make a opposed close combat roll with your slow action to break loose. And, uh... I would say okay. Hirsch is the only one in the same zone as you. So he has to make a panic roll upon seeing this. Really? Wait, I have to make a panic roll? Yeah. I'm already in a panic. Damn. You said opposed <laughs> close combat, right? Yeah. All right, I can do okay. this. I can do this. Catatonic, baby. Well, no, that's go. just that's ju- uh, you have to go straight to the panic table, so you got to roll yeah, the one d six. Oh, right, that was horror, right? Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm waiting for my time. I'm just calling. Yeah, up. Yeah. I'm going catatonic too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So, uh, but let's see. Hirsch's panic would happen first. That oh. is. Let's go, baby. I you just drop an item. Another gun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. And I promptly pick it up. <laughs> What's it gonna be? Um, I guess just the oh, shotgun yeah. is all that's left. Yeah, because I gave away my rifle. <laughs> so, that's yeah, right. Shotgun just poops out my pocket. <laughs> I'm left with just one single blowtorch. 
<laughs> so, so running. Shotgun just fell out like my butt pocket. Pick it back up. Yeah, I'm running. Yeah, Screw you're going to keep place. moving. You leave Holroyd behind, Same. who makes that close Wait. quarters roll against one success. I guess we'll have to re-roll it. Wait, what? Uh, you both got the same number of successes, so re uh, Wait, roll yeah. your 76 again. Seriously. Ooh. Oh. This Wait, time what? it... This what time is a six. One of those is totally one a six. One of those is totally a six. One of those is a six. <laughs> yeah, that's literally a six on the that's, board. That's not right? even cocked or anything. But that's red. That's Raph's roll. Yeah, oh, that's, that's my roll. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Yeah, that yeah. was that yeah. was yeah. the the, the six time. from the yeah. That was the six from the xenomorph that just rolled. Uh Raph. so this time it gets one success and you get none. It maintains its grip during your your turn, your round there. Okay. But Hirsch is going to keep running. Um, Holroyd's like, go, go! I, what's he being grappled by? He's being grappled by this big uh, drone xenomorph. Like, by, by the hands uh, or by the tail? It's got, it's the two grubby little hands on, essentially around his waist is lifting him up into the air. I am going to attack one of those arms with my blowtorch, close quarter combat. All right, roll for it. That's an eight. Ugh. Technically, you can still do that as a slow action, and you'll be able to keep moving. But okay. Oh wait, you need to add your stress as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I have to keep flipping back between the rule book and the uh, <laughs> thing to remember how much stress I got. Seven. I swear to God, if he goes catatonic, Holroyd's so. <laughs> no panics. No panics. Yeah, baby. No panics. <laughs> band of success. <laughs> um, Let's go. Cut that wrist off. <laughs> so. I don't believe... Oh, I got a supply Hold charge, on. too. Damn it. Is that the, uh... I don't believe it gives a damage for the torch, typically. It just says that I can use it close quarter combat. Yeah. It says, you know, um... Mm -hmm. So, here's what I'll say. I'll say it does do... Because as a tool... Because even some weapons only do one damage. Uh, you only got one success. So it will do the one point of damage. I have to roll for its okay. armor to see if it negates it. Okay. Which it does not. So it does take one point yeah. of damage. And catches fire, I would say, because that's a fire uh, weapon. Yeah, yeah, torch. It burned. Does so, that, like, make it lose hold of me or something? I will give it a minus modifier to uh, uh, the next contested roll. Got it. All right, now I'm running. Sorry, I help, I help, <clears throat> I help. Um, let me, uh, actually, before I run, let me, uh, let me roll my supply. Okay, I kept, I keep it. Do I gain extra supply for <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it just uh, overpressured. No, I got two. <laughs> no. Right. no, yeah, um, so you're yeah. good. You keep oh. your you still have power in the torch. You still got fuel. Brain check on that beer, bro. <laughs> Hirsch, you take a moment to <laughs> burn its hands, it catches a little bit of fire. You did what you can and you're gonna keep running. Yeah, I'm leaving shotgun and everything yeah. behind. Like I'm hauling hauling ass with one torch out. <laughs> this is all I got left. Sir, during that uh Yes, has Singleton come to a decision? Sure. <laughs> she she looks down and she like she, like her expression changes just as like kind of angry, annoyed, irritated. Since she, she just sighs. I'm sorry, Six. Orders are orders. Cool. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Just because you're an android doesn't mean you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> out of character by the way I knew this was going down mm -hmm. I hope the others find you 
and she, she gets up like she has the key card she gets up and she's gonna she's still got uh McQueen. and she heads to the the ship you head for the north yeah. airlock so you leave yeah. you leave sig behind and drag McQueer towards the airlock you hit the button and open it up to the harsh environment outside Hirsch, in your panic and all that's going on over there, you don't quite notice any of this go down, but you do get to the next zone and do find uh, Sig alone there, staring off into oblivion. And you do hear from a nearby hall and see a shadow ready to round a corner. It seems like another one of those things is quickly approaching. What are you doing? Sig! Uh, slide down. Uh, kind of like slap him up a little bit like uh trying to see what's wrong with him is do i notice like bleeding or can i plainly tell that he's just like what yeah <laughs> you could tell that he's just out of it uh he's unresponsive doesn't seem to have any wounds or anything like that just staring off into oblivion can i ask what i have to roll to try to break catatonic uh to stop a that panic response that is a command roll oh boys can i clutch yep. this are you gonna That's try and empathy, snap him out? Right? Is that empathy? Yeah, it just you're just literally just slapping him around and. Are you saying anything to him? <laughs> just smacking him up. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> you got your stress Don't dice still coming. Six. <laughs> Don't leave me six. <laughs> oh. I really hope you're not yelling that because uh oh i mean all bets are already <laughs> off <laughs> oh that's no already, that's already <laughs> done that's already done i'm in a panic at this point he'd rather keep him in a catatonic state so he doesn't realize when he gets killed let's go baby. No! Oh! <laughs> you got three successes but you panic sig you are slapped back into your senses shut up, shut up, kid. You all of a sudden have realized the urgency of the situation and you're getting ready to up and go. Hirsch, though, I need you to roll for panic and hope it doesn't send him back into catatonic like it <laughs> with McQueer. As, as I'm shaking him and stuff, uh, I'm just getting real angry. Like, Wake up! Everybody's leaving! Everybody's leaving! They left you behind! Somebody left you behind! You're here! Let's what? fucking go! You drop an item! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> you drop your torch and your stress level increases by one. The last thing you had on you. The only oh. thing that he could drop now is just like his clothes. The only thing he yeah, could drop is I think he still has a signature <laughs> item left. Oh yeah, his signature my, oh. item could could get dropped. But can I can I change dropping my signature item for keeping my torch? Because of the panic state of me trying to wake up somebody catatonic, the necklace breaks. Okay, I would allow, I'll allow it. it. Does say the GM gets okay, ultimate and... decision, but I'll go. Uh, I'll I'll allow it. It will say, yeah, your necklace breaks off and your cross clatters to the ground in the midst of your fervored movement. And trust me, that's gonna make <clears throat> that's gonna stress my guy out real quick. <laughs> it's a test. It's a test. It's always been a test. <laughs> so, but. Sig is back to his senses. Hearst is in front of you, yelling at you to get on, and you see behind him okay. this large black figure around the corner and look at the two of you and bare its teeth. Oh, I need to go. Shit. All right. Oh. So the, are the two of you getting running? Yeah. You book it for the North Airlock, both of you in now top condition physically and mentally speaking in order to keep, move on without any impediment. You get out the North Airlock and the door closes behind you. It's not locked by any means, but it is closed. As it closes, can I look back and see Holroyd? Well, we don't know if I'm there yet. No, I was gonna say, let's see what. Let's cut back to Holroyd and see what happens okay. when you look back. So, Holroyd, another round is happening here. However, let's see. Okay, so you will have one chance to break free. Uh, 
Go ahead and let's make that contested roll. Synth versus alien. Mm-hmm. I thought you said yeah. simp. <laughs> <laughs> Get right. Get off of me! Oof. Oh shit! Against. That's a lot. There's no stress to that. Not for androids. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's not right. for androids. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's go, baby. So, no, yeah, that's only one success for the alien. So with that, you take your forearm and break its grip. It, you drop to the ground with a heavy thud of your synthetic feet, and you are free. I'm dashing. I'm dashing. I'm going to block A1. All I'm right. Running. You run. And this drone that just let you go, this xenomorph, gives chase behind you as you run as fast as you can. There's still the one in block A1 that will try to lay hold of you as you have to pass it to get to that airlock. And you see this mad dash happening, Hirsch, as you look back. Come on! I'm, I'm like waving him on as the airlock doors are closing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, the Xeno attacks. Holroyd, you are knocked to the ground and you drop all handheld items, but otherwise take no damage. Do you have anything in your hand? I think you had the rifle, right? I did. Yeah, so you drop that and the Xenomorph stands over you, taunting its prey to run so the game can go on. You would get a stress level and immediate panic roll. But because you're an android, you're unaffected. It is playing with its prey, but that has no effect on you. So you are able to actually just get up and keep running if you want. I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. In the face. Yeah. So yeah. you get no. up yeah. and run. I will say, <laughs> because it, you're in this engaged range, you do have to make an agility roll this time. From breaking the grip last time, you're able to get away with just that action. But I will say this time you do have to do your retreat. So make an agility roll. Nice. I believe it's a mobility roll, right? To do your retreat. Oh, it's it's a straight agility roll. Or is it just straight agility? Well, it is for me because I don't have mobility. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> make it easy. Oh, watch this though. Look at that. But you've got oh. those. You've got those synth physical abilities you keep running you after it trips you get back onto your feet and tackle it into the side wall with your android strength it gets shoved out of the way and you keep running and just you trip the motion sensors just enough to keep the door held for a moment before you get out of the north airlock and it closes behind you And while he's not exerting any energy, he's... Well, would he be patching? I don't know if he'd be patching, but... You would no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, since you're kind of sent undercover, you might have been programmed to pant just to fool people, but yeah, you, don't, you don't have any need of air. So, Hirsch, you have been rejoined by Holroyd. Meanwhile, I'm a man. I'm a man. you do see, however, on the rooftops of Hadley's Hope's uh, buildings. More Xenomorphs descending upon you. Oh, we just run. Yep. Yeah, that for oh, Hirsch, yeah. Hirsch and Holroyd particularly, who are pr still close to the building. The two of you start running. Oh wait, no, Sig was with you guys as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. The three yeah, of you so are still there. You're all just booking it for the North Gate. Meanwhile, Singleton has yeah, dragged- Singleton. Yeah, Singleton and McWeir have made their way up into the tower. Have they though? Because yeah, of, that's, how, like, that's one person dragging another that's person. Far. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I doubt, I, I, would they? I mean, it's still one zone. <laughs> they, had a, they had a pretty solid head start too. For crawling? For crawling speed? Yeah, even at crawling speed, it basically means they could move one zone per round instead of two. Man, zones. Yeah. Wow. But we're in this zone now, so we can move two zones to catch up to them. Basically, yeah, you'll pass them in the next round, but they are already at the at the air traffic control tower. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. 
Singleton and McWeir, the two of you enter into the air traffic control center. The ATCC building has a storeroom and generator on the ground floor and the control room with panoramic windows uh, on the first floor. But there is no power and no way to fix it. The only thing to do here is get to the corporate shuttle up top. But you see Am behind... Am I able to... Yeah? What's that? What are you saying? You go. You go. Okay, yeah, you, I was gonna say, you see behind you that the north gate is still uh, is opening up again and Hirsch, Holroyd, and Sig are coming out hot on your tail. Am I able to lock this door? I would say it will require a contact check to see if you could work the panel to get locked. Okay. Oh, get a fucking panic on, girl. Really? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you go I'm just it. trying to do what my character would do. Oh yeah, it's on. I don't want to do this. Oh, you're playing your character. <laughs> Here it comes. Here comes the panic. Oh. oh. <laughs> See those stress Two, dice. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm praying you miss for once. <laughs> Me too. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> and you panic. That's the panic, panic. Go ahead and roll for panic. Panic, panic. <laughs> At this point, I don't care. <laughs> Too good. I love the stress aspect of this. Dude, the stress it's is the so best we we made Please it here me through mechanics. I'm not kind of twenty. Oh, drop you drop the me. item. <laughs> oh yeah, you drop <laughs> McWeir. <laughs> <laughs> and your oh, stress level increases by one. So you drop McQueer, even in just that, you can't sustain this anymore, but you're trying to get into these panels and trying to bust it up, do anything to sabotage this door. I will say... Do we see this? Is McQueer you guys, dropped in the doorway? <laughs> yeah, McQueer, you see McQueer <laughs> drop to the ground there at her feet as she attempts to work something with the panel there. I mean, at and then this... Singleton also drops to her feet, but not like catatonic, but just like she just does. <laughs> it's worth noting at this point, because there are, since betrayal is an inherent part of the uh, the alien story, uh, there are rules for this. But basically, at this point, I would say your character has gone full turncoat. So uh, once you've gone full turncoat you can relinquish control of the character to the GM. If you so choose. Fight it out. Let's go. Fight it out. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I picked up that well, knife. Why did I get the betrayal character? <laughs> I picked up that <laughs> knife. So, uh... I still um... have a blowtorch. <laughs> 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 we have an android on our side. That's true. I weren't relinquish control yet. All right. Fight it out. Fight it out. We got this. But you drop McQueer. You see them closing in. The shuttle's above you. She also drops where, like, like just, like, drops downwards. So you drop knees. to your knees. The rest of you are able to catch up pretty immediately afterwards, but there are xenomorphs hot on your tail that are leaping from the rooftops and over the north walls and giving chase. But also, technically, just out of character, we don't know you've turned. Well, like, none of us have actually we, seen you do it. That's true. That's true. Because we haven't seen anything. Not only that, I'm but just I don't assuming think we you saw gave you. up. Yeah. We. I don't think we saw you trying to sabotage a door. Yeah, and I guess uh, Sig was catatonic while when she yeah. gave her speech. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. We don't know yet, but at the same time, they're uh, coming we're up. Just running. We're just running. We're gonna ask questions, but like right now, Hirsch's mindset is you had to you had to leave somebody behind. And working with you guys for so long, we know that you're going to make the choice of McQueer first. Mm -hmm. like, it's not that you're betraying us; is that you had to make the smartest decision. You couldn't carry two people. But so uh, I mean, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. so at this point, it's just, uh, we're just running and leaving. We don't, <laughs> we're not trying to stay here. We need to go. 
Uh, so, Hirsch, Sig, Holroyd catch up to the ground level of air traffic control. But as you're running into the entrance, a very fast scout xenomorph dives into the midst of them. So in that order, uh, I'm going to roll to see who it goes for between Hirsch, Sig, and Holroyd. It's going for Hirsch. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I got a blowtorch. I'm in. <laughs> Attempts to grab its victim. It's rolling 10 dice against you. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. You are <laughs> very, very grappled. And you would need to make a close combat roll next to break loose. But okay. the rest of you can move on. But this uh, scout comes down to the ground and just... <laughs> intercepts him, tackling him aside and pinning him against the wall with its hands of the air traffic control center against the outside wall. What are the I'm rest of you doing? You android, because uh, I don't got the strength for that. Sig's running. Sig! No! No, Sig, Sig's, not, <laughs> Sig's not running. Sig's got the knife out, but he's just like, I can't do shit. Help! Help me sing. <laughs> Actually, I, I technically have one give the weapon the knife to left. you? I have one weapon. Oh? I haven't used it this whole time. A bolt gun. Yo! You did say you had it earlier. That's why I took the rifle away. But then I was like, oh, I got the shotgun um, and the magnum. And then I remember dropped my <laughs> Remember, my, the rifle scattered on the floor and I was forced to leave it behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All my weapons gone except for one blood I torch actually, so i actually you have the watsumi right uh i think yeah it should be the watsumi bolt gun mm -hmm. yeah that's it so okay so in the book it doesn't necessarily show its damage because i don't yeah i don't know what Wait, well, no, no, no. I, it, does, it, is it is listed as a weapon in the previous section as well. So it's listed as yeah. both a tool exactly. and a weapon. So yeah, it does three damage. No bonus. At short three range. Damage. No bonus. Okay. Three damage and armor piercing. Armor piercing. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So you're going to try and shoot it? Also, Screw your yeah. arms. The queer has a bolt on her. She does. It's, she's still holding it. She hasn't dropped anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, somehow she hasn't dropped anything. She's still holding on to a bolt gun. So there's another weapon among you. But Sig, you bypass Singleton if you you can bypass Singleton if you want and just start running up to that shuttle. Um. Oh, I wanna I wanna see if I no, I don't because my stress die. Um. Single. Uh, By the way, that's ranged combat. Combat, right? The singleton. Yeah. Or, actually, is the is the key card noticeably on singleton? Because he he'd look and notice he doesn't have it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, is is I don't think a singleton has made any effort to obscure it or anything. So you would be able to at a glance see that singleton has the key card. gonna go for the key card and be like because we we need the key card to access the shuttle mm -hmm. okay so so sig's gonna be uh, so sig's gonna sig's gonna look over and notice notice that uh whole uh holroyd is helping out hirsch and then is just gonna look at uh singleton Need that key card. Getting this shuttle open so we can bring, <laughs> so you can go grab McWhir, bring her up. I was gonna go to take the key card. The singleton resist. Uh, she won't resist. Okay, so you could take the lanyard right off her. 
So yeah, we'll take the lanyard. And yeah, it just it just says the same thing the others. I'm getting the <clears throat> we're gonna get the shuttle open. All right, help you, us in. You start running up <laughs> to the shuttle level. Boroids ranged combat. That is one yep. success. So you do just the weapon's base damage, which is three, and armor piercing. Um, so let's see what its armor looks like to reduce that. It reduces it by one. So you do two points of damage as you stick this nail, essentially, bolted into the uh, carapace of the xenomorph. Although... That's a, that's a high armor. Yeah. Hold on. Let me quickly double check if it's on damage or on kill that they do their acid blood. Let me double check that. No, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. So, Hirsch is in engaged range. As this attack hits, it splashes blood. However, you do not take any damage from the acid splash. And it does not seem to stain you as the spatter goes out in a different direction. As it squeals and screeches and thrashes around, but it still has you held. I'm gonna close quarter combat it with my blowtorch. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna hit it with the blowtorch, or uh, you could try to do that, or try to escape its grasp. Mm. Either, either way, though, either way, it's close stress. quarters. Yeah. yeah. Either way, you risk stress as well. It's up to you I'm what gonna, you want to do. I, I, I'm I'm. Challenge Chauncey. I gotta, <laughs> I do what I gotta do. Let's go, Marine. <laughs> so you're gonna torch it? Ah, torch! There's one. And we got one stress dice. Which one stress to go? So I'll up. say it will take one, one point of fire. Which it is weak against. Ah! <laughs> and one another point, two. but with a panic. With a panic. Oh, no. You better drop something. Drop your pants. <laughs> I'll drop the torch. Pants! <laughs> wait, wait. You drop an item. <laughs> I drop yeah, an torch. item. There goes the pants I wanted to drop earlier. <laughs> the you pants know, just hit the ground. You drop <laughs> the blowtorch at this point. Yeah. Dang it. I pick it up and drop my pants in this place. <laughs> <laughs> the blowtorch drops to the ground as you panic in this moment out of sheer fear of this creature before you. It does not reduce any of the damage, though. It takes both points from the blowtorch, and it is burning. Uh, does it lose grip, though? It does not lose its grip. Oh. I thought I'd attack it, it loses grip. No, that was a home home rule for freaking resin oh. roleplay, but that... Uh, <laughs> Dang. That's not an aliens <laughs> thing. No! <laughs> but it have bit its claw. <laughs> but it is burning. But you are still yeah, in its burn. grip. Okay. Right. So. Holroyd, I dropped a torch! Help! <laughs> and Holroyd, Holroyd just took that, that uh, round to attack it with the bolt gun, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, the aliens. you all have done a significant amount of damage to this thing. It is on its last legs. However, can I kick it? <laughs> you were not able. You were not able to break its grip. So, as its next turn comes around, during this round, 
it does get to use its head bite attack against the victim as it has you pinned against this wall, bears its teeth, <laughs> opens its jaws wide, wait, wait, wait. and the wait, inner wait, jaws wait, lean out. Is there anything I can do? Hold, hold, is there anything hold, I can hold, do? You took hold, your action. Do. You already took wait, your action. Block. No, my slow action. But the block is a fast action, right? It is. I still have one of those, right? Yeah, I think you only used your slow action to use the torch. Yeah. So, can okay, I... you can, yeah, you properly this okay, time, so... declaring it beforehand, yeah. yeah, you can declare that you're going to block this. Yes, I definitely want to block this. I can All also right. shove it. That's four successes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot of block. So that means it is going to deal four points of damage. So you need to make close combat. And try okay, and get four combat. successes at the at the least. Okay. Is this possible? Well, well, it's well possible. there's no. a number of different Is options you could do for the block, right? You can reduce if, the damage. Yeah. Or you can, I believe, counterattack. You can whichever, counterattack. Or whichever you, you think. Disarm them, but you can't disarm it. Yeah. So, and counterattack is you basically to... you do one damage for each six you roll, I think. For a, a counter attack. So. And I can't mix and mingle. Like, if I get six. That's what I'm trying to over. figure out. I'm trying to look it uh, up, okay. but it takes so long to flip through these pages. Here, I got uh, it. Yeah. Can I... You cannot spend additional dice to. Okay. For each six you roll, choose an effect. So you could choose on each individual oh, success. Yep. Oh. So you can decrease Ooh. and counterattack or do them all to one or the other. It's up to you. So let's see how many successes you roll. And then Actually, you can you don't have a weapon. That's true. I think counterattack and I... yeah, it says you deal damage to the attacker equal to your weapon. It said you can fight unarmed in close quarter. I will say if you want to try that. If you want to try the only thing you can do the head butt back i was gonna say to try and hurt this thing in this state from a purely narrative perspective is to grab hold of that bolt that's in its side and attempt to worsen the wound okay but that okay, will hurt that's a good head butt. Ah, bah. that will trigger its acid splash for sure but oh oh all right. if i jam it deeper it'll yeah. splash more blood mm -hmm. okay oh boy <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oof. You stress dice. Yeah, is that, is that with your? Is that is this with your stress dice? That was the regular attack. Mm -hmm. Or the regular dice, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so Imagine getting when I dro success. every time I drop the weapon, I gain distress too, right? Yep. Okay, then I added it right. Up. Uh, not I don't a see single any one. Are you kidding? Not me? a single one. A panic, though. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see what I'm... the panic is. It'd be funny. Get the scream and then, like, like distract it with the scream. Is it possible that it missed? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, this is just to see if you do anything that affects anybody else before you go. Oh, uh, present solid. Okay. So. No, the 11 is seek cover. Oh, oh, you seek can't. cover. Yeah, which, which you can't. Oh, which that. you can't. But I'm seeking for it, but I'm stuck. Exactly. Your stress level does decrease by one. Yay. I'll say because nobody necessarily witnesses this, that short range doesn't apply. Uh, besides Holroyd, but that doesn't count for him anyway. Nonetheless, you are gripped and pinned against this wall. You are not able to break its grip, despite with your last effort trying to counterattack and reaching for that bolt in its side, attempting to deep more deeply penetrate that wound its head snaps forward immediately causing a critical injury that kills you in one dreadful blow as <clears throat> the tongue goes right into your head sending a gouge of blood pouring outwards and you go limp and it drops you to the ground So, Holroyd, you see this. What are you doing? 
I suppose we'll have a moment to think for you as Sig makes his way to the top. Now, at this point, McGuire is still catatonic, correct? And Singleton is still on the bottom floor, or is Singleton continuing upwards? Uh, am I allowed to pick McQueer back up? You could. Not stopping you. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna basically like, kind of like one last burst of energy, like... I can't just sit here. She's gonna grab McQueer and she's gonna try to get up. All right. You he start heading up to the rooftop. Sig, you've already been at the top of air traffic control. As you approach the shuttles, the desperate screams of the friends you've left behind, of Hirsch coming down from below, you swipe, or you bring the key card up to the hatch and you can swipe to open it when you're ready to go. Swipe. All right. So, you swipe the key card, the hatch unseals and opens up. And inside, you see the number of eggs inside the shuttle with the coolant apparently worn out faster than expected. And a horde of thawed out face huggers flood out looking for hosts. Oh, so they're coming for everybody now. Yep. Five of these what? things jump by. A couple of them immediately whiz past you. Uh, but let's see what some of the ones immediately in front of you are going to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like like Sig said, pick up like like Sig said, pick up Big Weir, come up, we're gonna get out of here. Mm -hmm. So So this as one he did open <laughs> This one goes immediately for you. Number six is called the final embrace. Oh hell yeah. The face hugger gets to you. It's acid making short work of any helmet or respirator that might be in the way, which doesn't necessarily apply for you. But it's gonna go for an attack. I blocked. <laughs> I couldn't anyway. I don't have the stuff for... I don't have the thing to block. Yeah. And this one actually doesn't necessarily do damage as well. So with that one success... Oh, really? So you couldn't even, like, dodge? Yeah, I guess you can't dodge this one because, yeah, it doesn't deal... It doesn't deal damage. Huh. So, with that, poor Sig is face hugged. You are immediately sent into broken as this hand clasps around your head and the tail whips around your neck. Your last sensation is horrible, yet strangely loving. A firm but gentle caress around your head. A smothering sensation, followed by a, a warm burst of oxygen-rich air filling your lungs. A deep sensation of slow motion falling. And you think, it's okay to fall asleep. Cool. So. Singleton, McWeir, Holroyd, still at ground level. What's happening? Uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, these things are coming down after y'all, too. It's true. So. But and then you we don't... need to go up there to get and the you ship? you need to go up. Yeah. Yep. You don't know There's that they're coming down. They're, you don't know that they're coming down yet, by the way. So what is your like, plan of action? You, all you know, all you know is that Sig went up. As, as Sig was going up, he said, bring her up. I'm getting stuff started. Mm-hmm. That's I last you I'm heard. You don't know that there are face huggers coming down. So, Singleton, you drag McWeir up to the top. 
Polaroid, uh, to cut back to you for a moment, what what is your action in all of this? Uh, okay, let's see. So now that Hirsch you've had all this done, done, yeah, Hirsch is um, on the ground with a hole in his head. I'm tempt. I'm debating whether I should avenge him or not. Avenge him or not. Avenge him or not. Avenge him or not. Do we have Everybody. the time? Do we have the time? Do we have the time? Good thing you're an android and you can Look, process man, it. Look, man, I don't think it matters. <laughs> and it literally doesn't like... matter. I'm sure. we're... I, I don't think it matters, man. <laughs> we're, we're literally surrounded on both sides right now. Yep. You I'm got shooting. face huggers ahead of you. More xenomorphs coming behind you. I'm shooting. <laughs> All right. Roll for it. It's just like <sighs> the forgiven all over. Really? No successes. I don't have any stress dice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Being an android. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're going to use your fast action to run. Yes, I'm running. Straight so you run ahead. Run. But this scout is pretty fast and is very readily able to catch up with you. I uh, thought it was close to the entrance. It's close oh. to the entrance. Yeah. But even so, this thing technically gets three turns Wait, in a is, round. Isn't it so, on fire, doesn't it? Oh, that's true. It is on fire from the grave. Uh, Hirsch, roll. Let's go. The blowtorch isn't technically a full. <laughs> it's not a full incinerator unit, so it won't be a lot. I will say just go ahead. I'll give it a fire intensity, like an explosion they recommend at eight. So I would say give it a fire intensity of three. So three D six. Mm-hmm. Let's From go. The grave. And w tough. with one last exhale, the thing lets out a screech as it reaches for Holroyd and collapses to the ground in a heap of fire. From, From the grave. The grave. It, it had <laughs> one health point left. Get right. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, this is just like. What's his name? Victor! Oh, <laughs> Except I'm not dead. <laughs> Yet. Well, what of you go. is. So, <laughs> you see a drone closing in from behind. You're still giving chase. Is Holroyd running? I'm running. Holroyd's running. running up to the top. Singleton, you uh, burst out the final exit heading out onto the rooftop and are met with Sig on the ground in the back of the shuttle and four more face huggers coming directly towards you whatever happened to the gun that i gave sig a while ago uh that's i think it dropped it yeah you know, remember oh. remember when remember when uh in the first con the first uh xenomorph uh fight it was like hey you could pick the gun back up and then you expended it all Oh, right. Well, it's got, it it <laughs> That's has one right. reload. <laughs> Did it have one reload? It has one reload. I just didn't remember if I still had it. Oh, it, oh if you oh, haven't dropped oh. it, then... Then you still have it. Yeah, then you do still have it. You have to reload it, though. Yeah, that'll be a slow action to reload it. So I, I, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> well... If you didn't, yeah, if you didn't mention that you reloaded it before, then you're reloading it now as you see these coming towards you. And Holroyd is hot on your tail. But uh, first, let me just roll the... This one will be uh, going for uh, McWeer. And this one, again, for wait, oh. uh, Singleton. So the one, Skittering Menace. The face hugger has chosen its host and they know it's coming for them. It skitters forward, single-minded and horrifyingly spider-like. Singleton, you get plus one stress level and must make an immediate panic roll. Comes a scream. Catatonic. <laughs> that yeah, that's would a good chance. <laughs> That is not catatonic, but that's also not very good. 14. That is the second worst. Berserk. 
You must immediately attack the nearest person or creature, friendly or not. You won't stop and until you or the target is broken, and every friendly character who witnesses your rampage must make an immediate panic roll. Thankfully, so wait a no minute, one left you're alive to yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, you're holding nobody. McWear. Yeah, you are holding McWear. That is true. Oh my goodness! Wow, <laughs> you just turn on McQueer like that. <laughs> so you drop McQueer as you see this thing coming towards you in a panic, and seeing it skittering forward with these spider-like legs, you reload your handgun, and that's all you're going to be able to do for this round before uh, the next couple come in. But starting next, you're going to have to attack whatever's closest. Somebody. Yeah, we'll see what's closest by the end of this. Uh, but you, there's a tail grapple coming towards McWeir as well as uh, Singleton. Facehugger leaps and catches its victim. Tail, tail whipping violently. I have to roll another d6 for McWeir. I mean, I'm, I'm catatonic. I can't avoid it. Yeah. Your arms get hopelessly tangled in the beast's tail. You cannot use any held items and must make a panic roll. But I don't know if that necessarily applies while you're still catatonic. <laughs> I don't know if you could panic any more than that. Uh, so your arms are bound. Uh, and for Singleton, the face hugger leaps at you, make an opposed roll against your close combat. So go ahead and roll for close combat for Singleton. This thing is going to roll three successes. Punch it. You should definitely target McGuire just because, you know, if she didn't go catatonic, <laughs> you wouldn't be in this position. So, Singleton. You're dead. <laughs> you fail the contest. And you suffer the final embrace as well. As it leaps and grabs hold, or attempts to grab hold of your face. It has to make another roll for that. What is going on with my scrolling? Wait, what about the stress? Oh, right, stress dice. Yeah, you didn't roll your stress dice on that one. That could actually change the outcome. Hello? Hello? I think she... Oh, okay. There it comes. Whoa. Four successes and no Whoa. no panic. So you actually beat its three successes with those five total successes. And you throw the beast to the floor, but it's not finished with you yet. It is still up and going, but you do not suffer the final embrace. And that was, I believe, the three. There's still one more that skitters past you and starts heading down as Holroyd is coming up the steps. Uh, this one is going to tail lash at you, Holroyd. Oh, quaint. Try, <laughs> try, try doing the embrace to an android. It's yeah, it work. has no luck. Uh, it just bounces off of you and clatters to the steps as you're coming up. So, Singleton, McWeir, Holroyd, you all have the chance to act. What is happening? Okay, so, uh, I'm tempted to just ignore that thing and just let it be. Mm hmm. In fact, I'm gonna head upstairs. Okay. Now, I'm trying to figure out if you don't retreat, does it just automatically get that attack on you yeah, if you try to move? Yeah, basically, so. Retreating allows you to try to uh, escape it. Okay. So, in that case. Leave. I don't, or, yeah, let's find out. Unless you do just want to retreat and attempt to get by unscathed. I'll do that, sure. Wait. Okay. Uh, retreat, retreat. Agility. Roll, roll for agility, then, yeah. Let's see. So meta knowledge. Yeah, mobility. Oh, you must retreat. You must retreat if they're if they're engaged with you. 
Does oh, a okay. face hugger want to hug a face of an android? That's a good question. <laughs> so, that's meta knowledge. That's why I said meta knowledge. I don't know. <laughs> Could still attack him though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you succeed and you are able to get by. So you can make it with where you are because you're currently inside air traffic as well. Uh, yeah, you can get all the way to the shuttle if you so choose with that retreat. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get to the shuttle and I'm going to, okay, do I see McWeir? You do see, you see everybody because you have to pass by McWeir and Singleton in the doorway. You see the two of them getting assailed by these, this series of face huggers. You see Sig out cold on the floor with one of them wrapped around his face. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot the one that is, that is next to, uh, next to, let's see, I have a choice here. Um, they did call you out earlier. Cause this whole stress situation to rise. <laughs> I'm going to shoot the one near. Uh... You'd probably be better off leaving me. I'm going to shoot the one trying to attack McWear. All right. Go ahead and roll for that it. Is... No successes. No stresses. <laughs> yeah. So you wow, shot weird. and your shot simply goes wide. As these little things are hissing and scurrying about. Dang it. At this point, another xenomorph is beginning to crest over the ledge of air traffic control as it has climbed its way up. Onto the top of the tower. So, that's Holroyd's turn, though. You can get into the shuttle then on your next round. But, uh, Singleton, you have reloaded, and you are berserk. So you're just going to start killing. Um, given that you are just attacked by, you know, that you've fully let go of McWeir at this point, and have just attacked, uh, been attacked by a facehugger, that would be the closest thing to you in this instance. So... You must go ahead and make a ranged attack at minus three because it's engaged with your pistol. That is a, a success. Oh, and stress dice. Here comes the stress. 20d6. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so two more successes. You deal and enough. Damage. Yeah, I was gonna say if you take that all in extra damage, then you deal enough damage to kill the thing. Uh, however, you must make a panic roll, and it must roll for acid. Catatonic. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Why? Oh, 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 oh. Holroyd doesn't like this. He's Everybody, the only and you it's take a, a point of acid damage. Ugh. As the How's you, the android gonna be the one that? Survives? As you pop this thing, it just it explodes into acid right in your face. It stains you. You're no longer berserk because you actually broke the thing, but uh, you are now catatonic and go completely blank as the searing pain of this acid pierces the deepest recesses of your psyche.
Polaroid. What are you doing? Okay. Um. Oh wait, was that the can, only? Like, is there any way I? Can oh wait, no. Yeah, the or... actually, yeah, that's right. The face huggers haven't acted since since yeah. you uh, la last went, so they're gonna go ahead and go. That xenomorph is just getting to the top during this round, so it won't be able to do anything. But the face huggers still need to act. Uh, but they're one one less now, two less if you count the one hugging Sig. Uh, so let's see what all they do. Yeah, they are desperate for hosts, and they do have a sense of what they can implant, so they are going to, most of them, prioritize going after uh, Singleton and McWeir. So first two against Singleton. Two and three. Yeah, so you would get one more stress level and an immediate panic roll. That doesn't really matter at this point. But the three... I mean, we're, we can't... Like, we're not even really moving. Yeah, exactly. So... And, yeah, so the three, it tail lashes you. Because you're unmoving, I'll say it auto-succeeds in that case. And you take two more base damage. I hope you're alive. Singleton's still alive. <laughs> I'm the one she who is has broken. To do all the work here. So I'm it comes one... by Ugh. and whacks you with your, its tail, sending your head plummeting down to the ground. With this concussive force, you are broken. And the one against McWeir to see what happens. That nah, just skitters toward you. Uh, let's see if it does anything that might affect the robot. Yeah, it is going to attempt to leap at you uh, with its face grapple. It won't be able to do anything with you if, if it final embraces you, but it's certainly going to try and grab hold. Which is contested by your close combat skill. Uh -huh. so, like, do you just operate with this thing in your face for the rest of your life? Oof. So, yeah, it grabs hold of the of of you. Has to make another roll to see if it gets a firm grip, which it actually fails. So, yeah, it manages to grip you, but does not manage to fully uh, secure its grip. You are able to simply move on and pull it from you if you so choose. That's, that's the plan. I'm just tossing it aside. Alright. And now, okay, so is that everything? Is it back to my turn? It is back to your turn. What is Holroyd oh. going to do? Okay, so The back yeah, of this shuttle aside. is open. Okay, I grab Hannah, I grab Singleton, and I... Can I just toss her in? Uh, I would say that would be a, a slow action, but you could do that to bring w a one person here with you. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd try to just toss oh. them both in. Well, somehow. for the for, for the sake of or for the sake of understanding here, since you are broken, we'll need you to roll two d sixes to see what your critical injury is. Because um, so, that might inform your decision. <laughs> If you have to, uh, gone at yeah, the me. moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lauren. Uh, go ahead and roll, roll that for her. Forty-one. Forty-one. Yeah, she's got a broken leg for a few days, Not but bad. nothing fatal. As she crashed to the ground, her leg got all bent out of shape, and you could see it <gasps> bending at an odd angle. So Singleton is there with a broken leg. McWeir is there with a acidically corroded leg. And actually technically still alive. <laughs> like Is McWeir. She, yeah, McWeir is not broken or anything. You're just catatonic, right? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, nothing has you grabbed hold of you. 
And then there's also Sig there on the ground, being face-hugged. Well, Sig's lost cause. Sorry, Sig. <laughs> I, we're all lost causes. We're all lost causes. Yeah, I was gonna causes. say. <laughs> I'm like, the hero of this story. What are you talking story. about? Let's go. <laughs> I have a choice here. I can save... I feel like I can only save one of three people, because if I stall, it's gonna give the the face huggers another chance to face hug the people I'm trying to save! Well, it's gonna go after one of them, regardless of what you do, so... I so want to channel my inner thoughts. And you I'm got dead. a drone that's right across <laughs> there, the yeah, area. Yeah, there is a drone that in. is about to Ooh. climb up onto the rooftop. No, I don't know. Oh, no, you but, said he was already there. Yeah, he got up to here on this turn. Yeah. So yeah. it's still effectively in the process of making that final step. But yeah, it is, it is up here. It'll be able to act once you're done. <laughs> like, regardless, <laughs> lost causes all over. I want to save everyone. Can't you save can it all. It. You could fight it. You could, yeah. I mean, these face huggers can basically do nothing against you except whoop you with their tail. But, <sighs> but what about the alien? The alien Killed might be a bigger threat. The Killed, one. Killed one before. So, but this one looks one. fully fresh. Great. And it is fresh, a pretty fresh, big so one. I want to so make a recommendation. <laughs> I, by the way, I'm still at full health. I haven't gotten hurt yet. Exactly. I've watched this entire time. Haven't gotten hurt. Not That's once. great. But guess what? It's coming for you. They all are. What are you bragging about? <laughs> what are you? You are surrounded. About? Also, sir, you didn't take any damage because I went in the way of the first face hunter. <laughs> and then I also delayed the other one. I saved Jazz. I appreciate Jazz. that. I you appreciate are welcome. That. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um. Uh... Okay, so first things first. Since McWeir is an officer, I'm going to prioritize that. I'm going to toss McWeir in the shuttle. It is... It's, it's, I wish closing the door was like an action that didn't cost anything. No, oh, yeah, it'll take your movement and your slow, uh, your fast and your slow action in order to do just that. To get this mm -hmm. thing fired up and the door closed will take another round longer. And actually, the vehicle is a fast action. actually, I'd I'd need a car to get back inside the shuttle, wouldn't I? Oh. <sighs> So, okay, first things first. Toss McWeir in and guard the door. All right. So you toss McWeir in and you're standing at the door. Next round, the facehuggers are all... Well, they're basically just going to descend on Singleton at this point. One of them's going to grab hold of her and embrace her. Uh, Is there anything I can do? Nothing? Something? You're by the door. Not at this point. Yeah, they're all downstairs. Like they're 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 not in front of the door for you to be able to like go forward. Yeah, unless you want to go back out onto the rooftop, but that will be for when your turn comes back around. Right now they're moving for the round. And this drone xenomorph that has just gotten up onto the rooftop, we're going to roll for what it's gonna, about to do. Nothing for all three of its actions. It is a hypnotizing gaze oh, where really? it stares deeply into your soul, but uh -huh. I don't have a soul. Yeah, you don't. So you don't <laughs> gain a stress <laughs> level cool. or make a panic roll. So that actually <laughs> buys you a moment of time of what are you going to do? Game over. Okay. <laughs> okay. But at this point, so... it has used its impressive amount of movement to saunter up to you. It is with you in the doorway. Oh. Can I just kick it and kick it aside, like kick it forward you and then shove it? Yeah, you want to try and shove it? Is, yeah, is there any way I could shove it and then close the door? 
Okay, with me how does the show shuttle? Shoving. As a fast action, you could try to shove an opponent and engage your range away from you. Close combat roll. And if you succeed, they are shoved to short range. So there you go, close combat roll. Oh, wait, if this if this is like the first alien movie logic, that thing's gonna be able to latch onto the ship anyway. Yeah, uh, then it's gotta get its way in. Yeah, you still, you can at least get it out. Okay, I'll shove it. Okay, what? Are, let's see. What? Are, okay, I have a. Okay, that's close combat. Mm-hmm. It's a plus. It was that a plus? This is the roll. <laughs> yeah, it is plus seven. Okay. Or 76, rather. Ooh, that's a pretty Ooh, good. two successes. You give it a good shove, and it's with your android strength, it gets sent flying back across the rooftop, rolling and skidding across. And you have the shuttle to yourself for a brief moment, but that was a fast action, so you can still fire this thing up. So, you head to the cockpit, rushing there and powering up the shuttle, hastily throwing the sequence of switches and buttons like you've never before. Your android reflexes swiftly moving from one control to the next. The shuttle engines hum to life as you hit the switch to close the hatch behind you. You flick a few more switches, setting the craft ready to operate, then pull on the joystick, lifting the shuttle from the landing pad. Uh, okay. McWeir being is the one that's inside the shuttle, right? That you threw inside? Yeah, McWeir. Yeah, McWeir, you rock as this happens, and... Were you more cognizant, would feel your stomach churn from the sudden upward moment momentum. Before Holroyd, you throttle the engine, and a pair of thrusters blast intense white energy from the back, rocketing the ship into the up upper atmosphere as you scorch what remains of that rooftop. <sighs> So, oh, what thing? <laughs> I'm Scorching. sorry. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. It's over. You have escaped the nightmare of Hadley's hope. However, the fate of these two aboard the shuttle does remain unknown, as no record of their whereabouts exists beyond their departure from LV-426. Damn, Android? So, I suppose... Just kidnap me? McWeir would eventually calm down. Eventually, at some point. So either one of the two of you can read the sign-off. Here's, here's my question, though, real fast. Did we ever fully treat her leg? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I must have missed that part. Okay. So, who's going to read the sign-off? You want to do it before uh, you wake me up, or <laughs> I'll uh, I'll read the sign off. Where where's the sign off? It's in uh, in character. <clears throat> this is the final report from Hadley's Hope. Uh, Holroy reporting: the colony has been overrun by monsters. Of the 158 souls residing there, only. Two one. have survived. Well, technically one, but... <laughs> the rest? Well, I dread to think what has happened to the rest. I can only hope they were given the mercy of a quick death. But I doubt it. If you receive this message, do not attempt to rescue. Stay far away and inform the Colonial Marines as soon as you can. Only they can handle those monsters. This is Holroyd signing off. And that's where we end Hadley's or Hope's last day. In this little one shot. Huh. 
I had well, so much freaking fun. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I love, I'm so I sorry. literally love how, I literally love how it was like, ah, oh, yeah, here's the final stretch. Here are all these things. You're at the shuttle. Oh, by the way, just so you know, uh, the eggs are open. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I Whoa. thought that, I the thought that was a rather cruel surprise when i got to that point in looking at the scenario and reading it over i was like oh man because i thought what came up to that was bad enough but i was like this pretty much guarantees that not every everyone is gonna make it out like even if you could get to that point then you could just get straight face hugged for that one round of attacks as soon as they come what? out like, I was just looking at that, like, ah, yes, plot convenience, because they're gonna be open right now. Let's go. Mm. Oh. That, is, that, was, that was brutal. But in proper alien okay. fashion, the minimal number of survivors. I can't believe actually more than one person got out, considering the scenario there at well, the end. Like, I like how McWeir died two hours ago. And survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that so, was like some cube stuff. <laughs> so quick I need quick meta knowledge. All what right. is your command what is your command skill, Troy? My command skill? My skill itself. Yeah, the whole thing, like skill and empathy. My empathy is a D three. Okay. Or rather just three points. D3. Yeah. And, and your your command? My command is a zero. Okay, so you still could have gave it a chance to wake somebody up. Like I did. Could have. <laughs> well, the thing is, these face huggers were there. Like, <laughs> but I mean, like, like an hour ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. Did. It's true. During when we were all safe, you during a Calmer moment. Catatonic. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And then we could have relaxed for a minute and I could have told some more jokes. And got us all de stressed. It would have been good. No, I think people only start going catatonic after the screams happen. And after yeah. that point, the yeah. aliens started closing in on yeah. that med lab. Literally? That place was not safe anymore. Well, because it was. Uh, people started going catatonic because that was the, um, the chest burster. Yeah, See, the chest burster scene. Li okay, literally one event. And yeah. mechanics led to this final portion. I know this. I, 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 I love first or onward. Yeah, I love the horror of this system. I feel like it. it it's a, it's a little it's a little crunchy. It's a little heavy on rolls, so it takes a little bit of time. But I love the Once result. Out, yeah, I love the what it what it creates. You know, <laughs> of. It really emulates that horror genre and puts you into the spirit of Alien with that panic the mechanic. Only, the only thing the only thing that I feel that I'm not too much of a fan of is that there are just certain things you can't block. Like if I see something jumping at my face, I'm going to react. And if well, I can well, react because that was just enough, the right? that was on the six, right? Because you could block it on the five. But the six is what happened to John Hurt in episode in uh, Alien. Yeah, well, the, uh, so, let's see, the, yeah, so the contested roll is, yeah, is when it jumps at you and attempts to grapple. Um, so, well, because there's a lot, there's a lot of barriers to getting that final embrace, I realized at the end there. Uh, because even if it gets, if you, if you roll for it to do the final embrace immediately, it still has to roll for an attack. So, it could still be stopped there. Um, obviously, if you... It feels like it's a bit lacking in agency just because you don't have to make any rolls on that part, but technically that is like something that's a result of your character defending themselves. And then, but if it rolls against the face grapple, then you get a contested roll. And if it has to succeed that contest and then roll that attack. So it's ultimately not too easy for it to go straight to that final embrace. The but that was just yeah it could have it could have rolled and failed the roll like it rolls what attack it's gonna do and then it has yeah. to do it and if you count the roll that it has to make to make that attack then there's technically one more barrier after that so the final brace is pretty hard to get to that was just an example of getting really unlucky of the shortest possible route to get there 
Oh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Android. You don't feel shit. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're an android, bro. I think I think my my favorite part though, hands down, was the the med med lab. Oh or yeah, the whole that was, of everybody. I, uh, was I vividly good. I vividly <laughs> saw that scene from like from choking uh, uh, Kamiski down to like her chest bursting, and then everyone just like just scattering and running. Yeah. Ah! Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. And then you're just standing there. While everybody's freaking out, and you just, <sighs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I just sigh. The clearest, the clearest image outside of that one too was just Hirsch uh, body slamming that. <laughs> yeah, when he, <laughs> I just imagine him just savagely grasping for that little chest burster and just squeezing it out. <laughs> Just, I, I, what I what I imagined was what like left hand grab it, squeeze it so it opens its little mouth at me, and then I'm blow torching in its face like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trembling the whole time because I'm shaking from the last panic. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh and man, just splatted on the ground. Like, ah, 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 oh. <laughs> like, dude's already confused as hell, and this thing just happened. Like, wait, what? Yeah, what did I just do? That was... I just can't believe I dropped every item. <laughs> <laughs> I know you rolled oh, that so much. I think you dropped more stuff than anybody. <laughs> I'm just running, dropping shit. <laughs> and also, I did. I what I thought was is if like before we even, I died, I thought I, I mentally prepared myself to, if we made it to the shuttle, and I survived, I would then reach to go grab my necklace and realize that it was gone, mm -hmm. and then. Mm -hmm. End it. <laughs> She's like, ah! <laughs> I can't, and well, but that's the thing, is just the number of permutations in this system. I feel like everybody got a really unique end that was all dictated by the system, pretty much. You know what I mean? Like, McGuire was just leaving in a catat catatonic stupor. Uh, single dragged. Yeah, singleton well, just drowned in face huggers, essentially. Uh, Hirsch got the classic uh, dagger tongue death. Yeah. And uh, of course, Sig got the classic final embrace Thanks, death. Man. Yeah. As but well, it was uh, just like immediately final, in that like, ambush. Final, that scene, that final embrace at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Just opening the door and then. Yeah, and then a flood of them coming out like a wave and one immediately latching onto your face. It was the only one that went for you, too. And that was some... Oh, oh they're all leaving me alone. Oh, no! Uh, yeah, er, like, <laughs> like everybody... That was the first one that came out. I was like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it just tackled you to the ground from the face. <laughs> yeah, everybody I, I, ended I up really with a... Enjoyed it. With a really unique end, just completely dictated by mechanics, almost, and that's that's really interesting. Yeah, there. Th this is a fascinating system. I want to play it some more. Yeah, it and definitely. The permutations lead to all sorts of chaos. And like for sure, like now that I've oh man, seeing the kinds of games that are that these different systems are uh, capable of running, I I I for sure feel like i know what kind of stories i want to tell in these different kinds of systems oh yeah because, yeah like forgiven this is what forgiven should have been yeah <laughs> is just constant stress and fear and panic <laughs> and fear and panic and and everybody dies at the end yeah pretty much so more meta knowledge who liked who and who dis <laughs> like because i like i'm i'm wondering who sig is because if holdroy really liked hirsch Yet I had no knowledge of Holder in my, my sheet. <laughs> Wait, what? I liked Sig and I disliked you. <laughs> yeah. But Holdroy was kept saying, you know, I'm I'm the buddy, but also disliked you. So what's Sig's like and dislike? Oh, Sig's so Hirsch uh Hirsch is his buddy. He disliked McWeir, which is why I was like, like me. really me. which is which is why I was like hinting at the whole thing where it was like at the doorway, like getting that command 
just narrowed his eyes, but was like, you know what? You're right. Fine. We'll go through. And then the other thing where the where was like, you know what? Write this. I'm going to write this on the report. You're you might, you might look for a promotion, <laughs> which is why he was like, why are you? Okay, See, like, cool. Like, Sig wasn't on my sheet. I dislike Hirsch, obviously. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. Sig I was just well, not. I got well because I got Hirsch was the mechanical rival, but Hirsch and Holroyd I didn't like. Oh, you didn't like, like two you, of us. You were you were both on there, but like the mechanical. Uh, yeah, one of them was just was listed Hirsch. in the description of the character. Yeah, one in the description was like, but you would sack Hirsch and Holroyd if you could. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just like, I sure. wonder why it, di- it didn't mention anything about Holroyd. Like, I, I vibed with Holroyd, don't get me wrong. It was just like, but like, I, I, I think I the idea was... Narratively... Yeah, because nobody really had any connections to him if you look at the other, the other uh-huh. characters' briefings. So I think the idea is he's just off somewhere as, yeah the mysterious Hirsch. android technician off in the corner that nobody really pays much mind to so it's, nobody it's knows Eagleton, he was a robot <laughs> is actually, Eagleton's rival holroyd huh is singleton's rival holroyd oh, uh, i don't know her rival is hirsch apparently everybody huh. hates hirsch and mcweir <laughs> <laughs> that's the next either like sitcom him or special him. <laughs> <laughs> mcweir Everybody hates Hirsch and McWeir. <laughs> I uh, felt like this yeah, was, I was a game say, of, like... Good. Uh, does anybody want to reveal their personal agendas? I see Rose already has. Oh, wait. When was hers? I've already revealed mine. What is she talking? I've already told yeah. you mine. Yeah, I think she's muted, but... You're a Wayland yutani oh. sleeper agent? Yeah, Singleton was a Wayland yutani sleeper agent. She knew Holroyd was a company android, but he doesn't know... That she works for uh, for works for the company, and he's suspected of disobeying company orders, which he is. So, so oh. she was sent here to keep an eye on him. And also, news of this outbreak cannot be allowed to leak, even if it means putting an end to any of your friends, quote unquote, that tried to escape. Too bad it leaked. <laughs> oh, so you were supposed to ditch McWeir as well? Yeah, yeah. Her her directive was basically to to leave you all behind. Oh, missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, that would have been. Uh, I was That's gonna say so... that would have been a pretty severe twist if she went all the way with that. So absolutely, everybody didn't care anything about McWeir. Everybody hated it. <laughs> I, my, my job was to save everyone, but I died halfway through. Wait, what was yours? Oh. What was what was Mick Weir's? Mick Weir's agenda was to save everybody. Oh. Well, to save everybody from Hadley's hope, and um, and basically uh, sabotage everything that the other two were doing. The company they were just basically uh, ultimately pro colonists, anti. If I got a, if I was awake, or conscious for that last bit. Basically, the way I was going to play her was, um, unless she she found out about Singleton, um, the she would have tried to save everybody and then would have tried to stop Polroid from getting on the, the ship. Oh, you would have stopped Holroyd? Yeah, because Holroyd was company, and so her her thing was to just save everybody on Hadley's Hope, who was like. A worker, and then try to destroy everything to do with the company. I mean, to be honest, Holroyd would have been cool with that. Yeah, because <laughs> Holroyd's personal that. agenda is that like, he's willing to sacrifice himself for everybody else to survive. <laughs> that was his personal that, agenda. Like, oh, yeah, that, you failed. If, you failed, Troy. You survived. I succeeded at my personal agenda. If Singleton. At the very end, with like, like you know, like it starts getting uh, betrayally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, McWeir would have uh, would have tried to fail an empathy roll. Mm. Oh, you would have tried to coup de grace her. Uh, or at least somehow stop her. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, if you got to the ship by yourself and opened that door, you would have absolutely died. That is true. But wouldn't that have been such poetic justice, though? Like, I think that was, I think yeah. that was the so thing the they idea. were trying yeah. to set up was that Singleton's thing was that it was to survive by any means necessary. And so it it, I think they were trying to set up in the design of this adventure an epic, like, justice moment of the person who gets there first to leave everyone behind immediately dies. Like, I think that trap is there specifically to kill off Singleton. <laughs> <laughs> But there is a chance to survive. There it technically is a chance. It's mathematically yeah. slim, but I mean, they pretty much, problem. yeah, if, guarantee that Singleton's gonna if, get got. If I was running, uh, just because this, she's so darn evil, <laughs> I was gonna say if I was running this, and that happened where Singleton gets there at the end, like no rules, that just she gets face hugged. <laughs> yeah. Because like that's the like oh yeah that would be so good that like narratively like that's how it that's how it works yeah I'm not gonna so, leave it up to five d six rolling like nope nah right. I would I would have wrote so, it as you got into the ship seen the eggs still frozen fired up the ship and something malfunctioned causing it to defrost and then they face hug you while you're flying away <laughs> you do the you do the final outro and then it's like and then as you are. Like uh, drifting off into space, you hear a whole shit ton of face huggers. <laughs> so, Sig's Sig's whole thing. Oh yeah, well, your personal um, agenda. Sig's whole personal agenda was getting a live specimen and bringing it back. Yeah. To uh, the company for that eventual for that pay raise or uh, getting up. Yeah. Getting up there, which is why. I was asking about the the container with the face hugger. Yeah. Um, but then when we heard, well, there's others on the ship. That's what he was like. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, you it's got like, you right. got your specimen. <laughs> I did. <laughs> got a specimen right to the face. <laughs> I was also I was also debating on. Uh, when when uh, Kamitsky was like, I want to go with y'all and everything. His idea of a live specimen on the way back in his mind would have been her in containment. Yeah. Mm. Because that would have been the purest. Oh, yeah. Just put her mm. on ice. Mm hmm. <laughs> Like if there were any like cryo like cryo uh, chambers or whatever on the ship, like mm -hmm. or on the shuttle or whatever, would have immediately been like, "Yep, you're going in here." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the question: What was Hirsch's personal agenda? Some people fight inner demons. You've been sent these creatures to test your faith in God. Light them up and show the devil who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> just I kill them all? I succeeded. <laughs> yeah, you fought to your last breath. You even <laughs> killed the last one that killed you from the grave. <laughs> With a light. <laughs> Burning out. So, like, so, like, what I noticed was, like, obviously, I, I started to read, um, like, the character traits more in depth into the rule book as we were playing because like whenever we first went into that room and I, I acquired that gun I was like yeah I'll use it and then it was ranged combat I'm like I'm not as effective at ranged combat as I am close combat what can I use it says blood torch I was like well I got those <laughs> <laughs> so guns gun, like I'm, I'm effective with them but I was like this is misleading I'm more effective with tools the only way to fight a xenomorph up close is to have an incinerator or blowtorch. Yeah, yeah, pretty I much. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like, should have no kept the incinerator, guns. but I, oh, for some reason I was thinking, oh, this has got to be like a scientist's weapon. That's why I ended up giving it off to you. Or no, I gave it to uh, Ilo. Was just because the the fact that I was like, this is like, you know, someone else's weapon, not mine, and it was mine. <laughs> like, like, what, what? <laughs> I was completely confused. I was like, this is a Chauncey weapon. This is somebody else's mm -hmm. weapon. Yeah, there was, a, there was a lot in here, too. Yeah, you guys didn't see... 
like half of the content that is within the whole facility. I don't know how they expect this to be done in two hours. Because <laughs> even, you know, fast tracking it, it was still it still took us a five hour session. But yeah, there was a there was a lot. Yeah, a lot I, like, more. There I was more opportunities to, to get the, samples for SIG stuff. too. Yeah. But effectively, we as a group made a whole scene of a medical area that didn't need to happen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the that's the beauty of it is like where different groups coming through will emphasize different parts because that scene that was definitely the central intense set piece of this whole, of our whole version of the story that was yeah. that was awesome how that worked out and i was just picturing yeah how holroyd walks up with that android coldness ready to choke her out like i was thinking of the android for the first movie who just snaps like that was that was him in that moment, and everyone starts freaking out, and then Singleton outs him. <laughs> like, the, the right before Singleton, or right before, yeah, Singleton outs him as an android, I was so prepared to have McWeary just go, like, like, if, like, you know, because, like, with her, with her whole thing, um, he said he would get her, I was like, I can't control other, like, I, I can't control everybody else. I said I would consider it, and would, and wanted to walk out and just have him kill her. <laughs> just because that, that was part of her. That was part of everything. But then, but it was like as an android, I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta kill you too." See, I was I was doing the whole like roll in the middle, like the idiot guy who just noted, like just found this out, and I was like, I was trying to play the role that like, I was going to pull out the magnum and blast that chick. Right before the the chest burster come out, because I was waiting for it to, like lunge at mm -hmm. uh, Troy, and like I just I was like, oh no, here's our moment, and then the, the knife clangs on the floor. Wow! Uh, <laughs> I will wow. say, I will say that knife clanging on the floor, breaking the silence before oh, everything occurred. Was yeah, because right before was, everything that kicked perfect. off, that was like cinematically perfect. It's just like silence, and then. Cling, cling, cling. And then ah, she chest bursts, and then everybody just goes into a tailspin until it was until like, the end. But like that moment just doesn't it was stop. Like, because it, 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 it literally, climbing. it literally felt like it literally <laughs> felt like in that moment when Sig was when Sig was eyeing her and just keeping close, like keeping a close eye. <laughs> it's like that panic came in. I, I, it almost felt like that panic came in because he noticed something terrible was happening. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's like so like like you see her start to squirm, and that's when you drop. <laughs> yeah, the knife drop. <laughs> like no, no, it's happening right now. And that and then just everybody runs. reverb this is kicking off on the knife Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And how about a, the wasted action of going and reaching down for two people and then getting frozen solid because I, I feared <laughs> instead of trying to just pick one up with shitty health items, I was like, oh, I'll just drag them. <laughs> They're still, they still have acid on them. I, I was like, I thought they were in a pool of acid. I was like, oh, get them out of the pool of acid, but I'm just stuck there. Like, oh, no. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> yeah. Well, and now knowing that you're supposed to gain stress every time you take damage. So yeah. there was, it's quickly becoming have... clear that stress is supposed to compound really fast. And you yeah. guys, unless you take have moments in safe rooms, will basically get, or get to full utter insanity in a hurry. So I think it's either meant. Yeah, right, Troy? Yeah, you all right there? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, like there's there's a there's a lot there's a lot to make you gain stress, and also it's worth noting. Yeah, Bell, you're right. Like one of the things that lists as one of the things that can give you stress is a person nearby is revealed to be an android, so that will just instantly give everyone stress if somebody is revealed to be an android.
Especially if they're from Wayland Yutani. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wayland Yutani's making all the androids. I still think that even if it's a stressful situation, if I'm bantering, you should be dropping this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there talking about this pregnant lady and everybody's stressing out about it. <laughs> Come on, she's just pregnant. What are we gonna do? Oh, bud, hands off her neck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's freaking I'm an idiot. I am. <laughs> Golden. That's Private Hudson from freaking Aliens, though, right? It's just like, when it's a yep. stressful situation and he's trying to banter, nobody's calming down from that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have effectively still been calm because I would have found myself funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that was an exciting and fun little escapade into a new system. Thank you all oh, very much absolutely. for watching. And yeah, I think we all had a had a fun time you know, with this horrific descent into the world of the of Alien. So we're gonna be heading off for the night. It's super late, and we're gonna draw this to a close. Until next time, peace. Squared. Have a good night. God bless. Commence your dreams, all the good things.